if you have a teenager that you are responsible for, whether it's a female or it's a male, you need to get them to listen to the story. Now, I'm going to tell you all two stories. That's right. Two stories today. One about a female and one about a male. Now, we're going to talk about the female story first. So you get this 15 year old girl. And she hangs out with these other two 15-year-old girls. Now, what they like to do, they like to go into these clubs where they know dang well you got to be 18 or 21 years old and up. But somehow, some way, they be getting up in these clubs and flirting with these dudes. Now, listen, these girls are virgins, okay? So they not they not being intimate with, with men at all. They just going in the club. They dancing. They flirting. And they drinking. So we're going to say a Saturday night comes around and they get up in. I'm not going to name the club. I'm not going to name the city. But they end up getting up in this club and they just chilling. So this dude come in there. And I'm talking about when I say he iced out, he iced out, he dripped out, right? So they look at him like, who the heck is that? Now, I can't tell y'all who it is, but... I'm going to say this. This dude got a lot of money, a lot of money, and he liked to spend. So they looking at him, and he peeped them out. So he looking at him, he's like, God dang, who who was that? So he tells his man to go, he's like, yo, tell him come over here. Just tell him come over to the VIP. So his man come over there, he's like, hey, listen, my homie wants y'all to come over there and chill with him. So they like, all right, come on, let's go. So they get over there. And he tell two of his homeboys, like, y'all, watch out. Let them sit down next to me. So he looking at them. I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to be real. Now, I know a lot of you cats are going to disagree with me in the comment section, but it is what it is. Now, I don't want to hear that, oh, a lot of these girls be looking grown. Man, let's just keep it a buck. Let's just keep it a bean. Let's just keep it a hundred. Yeah, a lot of these young girls do be looking grown, but as soon as they open their mouth, you can tell that this is a, a dang teenager. Am I right or am I wrong? Let me know in the comment section because we ain't about to play no military mind games. You know dang well that as soon as she opened her mouth, you could tell this girl was very immature and that she sounded like a child. So let's not play the games. So he listening to him. He like, where y'all from? And you know what, what y'all doing after the club? And they like, we we just going home. We we chilling. And he like, here here here, drink this, drink this. So he got bottles already at the table. Now the bottles that he got at the table, he got two bottles over here to the right, and he got five bottles over here to the left. He gives them the bottle over here to the left, right with the two bottles at. So they drinking and they drinking it. And they like, yo, I'm feeling lightheaded. I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling good. I'm, they all three of them. They, they feeling woozy, dizzy. The room spinning, right? So he tell his homeboy like, yeah, hey, hey, go get the car, go get the car, right? So it's him, the homeboy, the two other dudes that he two said to watch out, and another cat. So it's five of these dudes, and it's three of these girls. Oh, so they end up getting the girls out of the club and they end up taking them to a hotel. Now, when they take them to a hotel, this is where I'm going to have to stop the story because it, it get graphic and I want this video to get out there. Now, you teenagers that's listening to this video, y'all can use y'all imagination. I'm just going to put it. I'm just going to say this. When them girls woke up they virginity was gone okay and when i say it was gone y'all know what i mean these girls they virginity was taken not only that these dudes filmed it they filmed it they violated these girls on camera and they put it out there they they put it out there on facebook instagram and adult websites they put it out there one of the girls, now, y'all know in high school, you know, dudes be all on these websites, so they see these things. One of the girls could not take the pressure at all, so she ended up unaliving herself. 
She wrote a letter to her mama and said, I can't deal with this no more. I'm tired of the bullying, this and that, whoop de woo And she ended up taking herself out of this earth, right? The other two girls end up moving out of state. Now, that's their story right there. So, you young girls out there, listen. Number one, let me give y'all some advice. Per it, women, period. When you go to the club, all right, do not let nobody buy you a drink. Okay, if they buy you a drink, you better be right there when the bartender is making that drink. You better have eyes on at all times. When that bartender making that drink and they get that drink to the guy to give to you, you better make, don't you take your eyes off of them at all. And I'm not saying that all men does put things in girls' drinks. I'm not saying that at all. At all, I'm not saying that, okay? So, but the whole thing is make sure that you just not accept and drink from any and everybody because you could end up like these chicks that this happened to. All right. And I, I just really want to stress that. I know I'm supposed to be telling y'all the story, but this right here is real. This is real life. I really need for y'all to pay attention. When you go to the club, go with a couple of your friends and with your friends, y'all come together, y'all leave together. It ain't no, oh, I just met this dude and we man, him about to dip off. No, you don't know this dude. You don't know what his what his intentions are. There's guys out here that's out here being predators and doing girls bad, doing girls dirty. We hear all the stories all the time. You know, this is a side story right here. Last year, I was coming from the club. It was like four o'clock in the morning, and where I was at, I was at a four way. It was this, S, this white SUV right there in the middle of the street. And I'm like, man, what the heck? Because I'm coming from, I, I guess this person is southbound and I'm coming northbound. So I see him and I'm like, man, what the what the heck going on? Why this person that's right here ain't moving? So I had this bad feeling. So I pull up and then I get behind him and put my hazard lights on and I get out the car. Yo. Why when I get up at the window on the driver's side window, there's a girl. She she couldn't be nothing, maybe 17, 18, 19, maybe even 20. I'm not sure. But she looked it so young because she was passed out drunk. So I, I'm knocking on the window. She ain't moving. So I open the door. Now, when I open the door, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I open the door with my shirt because, you know, sometimes being a good Samaritan, good, being a good Samaritan can backfire. So I open the door with my shirt and I tapped her. I'm like, hey, wake up. And she looked at me and went back to see. I said, hey, what is you doing? And she was like, move, move. She, this girl was drunk out of her mind. So I'm like, man, this girl, wow. So. I see her iPhone was right here. So I got her iPhone and I put it to her face to unlock her face. So I'm going through her phone right there in the middle of the intersection and I get to her mama. So I'm calling her mama, call, call, call. Like the third time I call her mama, answer the phone like, hello. I'm like, hey, listen, my name is so-and-so. Your daughter is right here at this intersection. She passed out drunk. And I'm just letting you know that I'm about to pull her car right over here to this gas station this, on this street right here. Y'all need to come get her. And she's like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I told her to stop doing this. She always doing this. I told her to stop doing this. I said, that's okay, man, but I'm about to go, but I'm about to pull over here and I'm about to lock the keys right here and blah, 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 blah. She said, okay, thank you. So I end up getting her to move to the side, y'all, and I pull over there, lock the car up, whatever. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine if that wasn't me that did that imagine if that was a creep and i know some of y'all like no that can't never happen y'all just don't know we y'all just do not know man it's all you would think you would think even after after the jeffrey dahmer showed up came out how jeffrey dahmer was kidnapping dudes you would think that people would not be that dang careless this girl was passed out drunk imagine if i was a creep she could be somewhere in somebody's basement, in my basement right now, tied up with a missing person case and her parents 
all on the 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 11 o'clock news in the morning news talking about please just bring my baby home and prayers hey y'all you young girls you women period y'all got to tighten up this world is not rainbows and, and cherries it's real monsters and demons out here and that that story i'm gonna keep telling that story too i hope the girl just here i hope the girl that this happened to that i found in the middle of that intersection hear this story too because girl you you could have you could have been just another case a missing person case if if, if, it, if it wasn't me it could have been a it could have been somebody else that had bad intentions and well you would you would have just been another victim so again young girls women y'all heard what i said now let's get to the fellas now this is a story where you got a couple of homies and the reason why this story make me real angry is because when you come from poverty and you come from being poor and broke and, and y'all is a crew and y'all grow up like that. And when y'all get older, y'all start doing things that y'all don't supposed to do to make money in the hood, which is selling them drugs. Now, everybody supposed to be equal. You got these five cats that grew up together in poverty and they end up getting a hold of that bag and they moving it. They moving the dog food. I'm not going to say what it is, but for the, for the people out there that know what I'm talking about, y'all know what dog food is. So they moving dog food and now they getting money. Well, just so happens one of them is getting way more money than everybody. When I say he out there hustling, he out there hustling. Some of these dudes, so, some of these dudes in this crew, they they don't want they don't want change. Y'all know when these dope things come around, they they hey listen, let me let me get a fifty, let me get a fifty, let me get a fifty, but it only got forty four dollars. Or they come with a big jar of change that they done broken to grandma's crib and stole all grandma. Y'all know how grandma got all that money on them coins and them jars. You know, dope fiend and went in there and broken grandma's crib and stole all the change. And these dope fiends. You know, they coming to these cats and they turn them away like, no, man, give me dollars, man. Give me money, man. I want no change. Yo, one of these cats, we just going to name him Toothpick. Toothpick is a hustler. He don't care if you got change. He don't care if you got electronics. He get he he accepting it all, right? So he getting the most money out. He getting the most money out here in these streets. Now, y'all know that there's always a Judas. And if y'all don't know who Judas is, Judas is the cat that betrayed Jesus. And, you know, the crazy thing about the Judas situation is that this man watched. He watched Jesus walk on water. He watched Jesus feed 5,000 men and women with five loaves and seven pieces of bread. Man, five loaves of bread and seven pieces of fish. Right. He seen it. He seen Jesus heal the blind, heal the sick, cast out demons. Right. And what he do, he betrayed him. So, like I said, you got toothpick, the cat that's out here that's really getting that bread out of the whole five. And you got the Judas that's watching him. This is where this story gets crazy. It's some guys out there that you that that might even be in your family. That I'm been in the struggle with you. That slept on the that slept on the same floors as you. Done, done done did that got STDs with you from running trains on nasty chicks out here. Y'all done been to that clinic getting them pills and all that, right? Together, going through it, right? Sharing meals together. Now that y'all making money, and he just getting a little bit more money than you. And he know you like to blow trees, right? You're always blowing trees. So you know what he do? He put a little extra. When I say extra, he put extras in your blunt now. And now you done inhaled that and, and done did something to your mind. You have just been laced. Now you tripping. Now your mind gone. Now, tch. fellas, I need for y'all to pay attention, man. I'm not saying blowing cannabis is bad, but there's cats out there, man. There are dudes out there that's envious, that's spiteful, 
that's hateful, that's vengeful because you got just a little bit more than them. So they put something in your cannabis and mess your mind all the way up. Got you out here bad. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Y'all know the stories. We hear about these stories every day with somebody done put something to somebody drink or somebody to put something to somebody cannabis and mess them up. It's like, I be wondering like sometimes like the people that this happened to, does it like, do they know that they messed up? Are they trapped in the living hell? You know what I mean? Are they aware of what's going on? And like, I just can't get right. Or I'm trying to get right. You know, y'all feel what I'm saying? So again, Fellas out there, just just watch who around you, man. When when you when you give when you get dap to people and handshakes to your so-called partners, m make sure because sometimes that smile ain't matching that handshake. So let me say that again. So I want y'all to write that down. Sometimes when you when you embrace your homie, make sure that smile is matching that handshake. Because some of these cats out here, man, they just tolerate you. They just tolerate you. And all the while, they, they, they want you gone. They want you up out of there. So I'm going to give a real quick recap. Ladies, when you go to the club, make sure you bring some friends with you. Don't be, don't be up there accepting drinks from any and everybody. And if somebody do buy you a drink, you better make sure you watching the bartender from the bartender to the hand to you. Because don't get caught up like them chicks did that I told y'all about in the beginning. And then for the fellas out there. Yo. You better watch. Be, be careful. Be careful of your circle. Be careful of the people that's around you. Because some of them cats is a Judas that's, that's waiting to betray you. And sometimes that betrayal come in the form of putting something in your drink or putting something in your cannabis and mess you all the way up. I hope y'all learned something today from this video because there's somebody out there. Just, it's going to happen. It's going it's to happen because King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. But there's somebody that's going to listen to this story today or whatever day, and get to really thinking, whether you a female that's about to go out and be chilling, like, you know what, nah, I I'm going to fall back and just keep accepting drinks from everybody. I'm going to fall back from if I'm a teenage girl, be sneaking in the club with these girls. You got, listen, you got time. You ain't got nothing but time. You'll be 18, 21 in a couple years. You got time. So like I said, let's chill. Be a teenager. Stay out them dang clubs. And with that, y'all, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So it was this girl, we gonna call her Keisha, and she had her baby daddy, we gonna call him Mike. So Keisha and Mike been rocking for a long time. They Started off in high school, got out of high school, still dating, got an apartment together, living together. You know the story. Rocking for a long time, eventually have kids, but never got engaged, never got married. It's just, it was just Keisha and Mike. She felt like she was entitled to him. They got years invested. They got kids. This is mine. This is my man. Well, Mike, although him and Keisha been rocking for so long, Mike was still doing him. He was with Keisha at home with the kids, but out in the world with his homeboys, his families by himself, he was still taking numbers, still flirting, basically walking around like he a single dude. And one particular time he met this girl, we gonna call her Sydney. Sydney was like a woman he ain't never seen before. It wasn't all about her looks, it was just how she carried herself. She was like the epitome of class. 
not saying that Keisha wasn't classy, classy or whatever. She was just familiar. You know what I'm saying? Somebody he got comfortable with. He loved her, but he wasn't in love with her. But with Sydney, she was just, I mean, how she dressed, how she talked, everything just screamed lady, classy, wife, like he wanted to be with her. But he didn't know how to tell her that he still stayed with his baby mama, still was messing with his baby mama. Basically, they were still a relationship without a title, but he wanted Sydney. So he courted Sydney. He went after Sydney and he eventually got with Sydney. Sydney, she's with Mike. They're having this good relationship. And she started hearing that Mike had a baby mama that he was still with. Now, she knew Mike had kids. She wasn't going to interfere with that. She wanted him to be in his kid's life and be a good daddy. But at the same time, you could be a good daddy and not be messing with your baby mama. She was not okay with that, wasn't going to be okay with that. And she let him know that. And he was lying to her within their relationship. Like, no, it ain't even that. We just co-parenting or whatever. But over time, she kept hearing that he was messing with her. And she addressed it. Like, I hear what you're saying. But I'm hearing all these noise about you still with your baby mama. I'm going to just let you know right now. If that's the case, you need to dead that, end that. Because I'm not about to be with no dude that got a whole nother lady on this side. You're not about to have me out here looking like the side piece, the sneaky link, none of that. So you either with me or leave me alone because there's somebody out here that appreciate all this and he ain't trying to two time me, have me his cake and eat it too. No, I'm not dealing with that. So he like, no, nah, baby, you know what? I don't know it. Whatever you hearing, it might be mixed signals out here. People lying on me, but I'm going to let my baby mama know, especially if she's spreading a lie, that this ain't what it is. We just co-parenting. Whole time, he is in a relationship with his baby mama. So he just... Out of nowhere, like, tell Sydney, I'm about to text her right now. Like, I don't know what's going on in the street. So now he's sitting there talking to Sydney while he's texting. But this is just over with. We ain't we ain't doing nothing. We ain't going to be together no more. It's just strictly the kids. I don't know why people saying we still together. You know what it is. Lying. Trying to please Sydney. And that's just what it is. He's saying, saying, Sydney's, that was enough for her because he did it in her face. But now Keisha's blowing up his phone, texting, blowing up the phone. She mad because she, she don't know what's going on. And it just seemed like from that time to fast forward, now he's really just strictly trying to keep it about the kids. But every time he go over there to get the kids, Keisha going off. Because she, she feel betrayed. She like, how dare you? I've been holding you down. We've been together. All of a sudden, now you meet this chick and... You know what I'm saying? I'm not good enough no more. What What is this? What did I do to cause this? And he like, well, you know what it is. It ain't been right for a long time. We just been comfortable. We just been convenient for each other and all this, that. And she like, you wasn't saying that when you were sleeping with me. You wasn't saying that when we have been together this long. I let you go out. I let you have your friend fun with your boys. I let you do you. But now all of a sudden you meet this girl and I ain't good enough. And he like, oh, whatever, whatever, where are my kids? And she like, and you bet not ever come pick your kids up with her in the car. I wish you would because, yeah, you go find out how real mad I am. Now, she ain't even trying to take her anger out on him no more. She feel like she's the cause of messing up their relationship. When in reality, Sydney was just knowing her self-worth. And she was just letting him know, I'm not being with a dude who got a female. I'm not a home wrecker. I'm not breaking up none of that stuff. And... That's really how she felt. He was lying to her the whole time, making it seem like it wasn't what it was. You know what I'm saying? But Keisha ain't care about none of that. Keisha see Sydney as a threat. Keisha see Sydney as somebody that broke up her happy home. So now when she hears Sydney name, think about Sydney, it's on site. She don't care. So this one particular day, Mike just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Just get over it. You know, we've been done a long time ago. We should have been moved on. And he was just taking Keisha as a joke. He goes over to the house with Keisha, I mean, with Sydney in the car to go pick up his kids. Keisha comes to the door. She like, oh, hell no. Oh, so you thought I was playing, ready to run out 
to run up on Sydney and he hurry up and jump out the car like, no, this ain't this ain't even what it's about to be. You need to go in the house, take your way in the house, trying to hold her back and stuff. No, it's this B four. She the reason why we ain't together. She the reason why all this stuff and she just making herself look crazy. The neighbors starting to come out seeing all this yelling and stuff and they wondering what's going on. And he like, just go get my kids, just go get my kids. She like, no, no. Since you want to be like that, you want to play with me. You ain't seeing your kids. You might as well drive off and take that B with you. No, they ain't coming outside. I don't know her. You ain't introduced me to her. I ain't having her around my kids whole time. She, you know, her friends of friends of friends and people know Sydney. They know she carries herself like a lady. They know she ain't gonna do nothing to the kids. But she don't care. She don't know her and have the audacity to show up at her house and with her man. No, nah, heads no. Nah. So from that day on up, anytime she seen her at Walmart, it don't matter where it's at. They could have been at church. Her mindset is it's, it's on site. It's on site. So now, Sydney, being the person she is, now she, she's like, this is my man. It's the principal now. I'm not about to keep letting this girl threaten me and talk junk and run up on me. You know what I'm saying? So now she's doing little stuff. She's sitting there posting pictures with him because it's her man. She feel like she can. And she can, you know, but she's doing it to be petty. You know what I'm saying? Like, aha, man, nana, boo, boo. So she posting pictures. She doing stuff. She posting pictures. Um tagging people that may know the girl she she just doing stuff she ain't got no business doing and this one particular time it caught up with her because she should have just left the girl alone had the relationship with mike or just left mike alone with all the baggage and the drama that comes with him because now she's out with her girls she's having a good time she she decides to go on live and she she's at the gas station she's on live and she like yeah we out here we and my girls this was a well needed thing we finna gas the car up and we finna head out to blah 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 telling her location and the whole time Keisha is already watching her page and got people watching her page so she 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 sees that she's online and she like oh so she's at that gas station oh she so mad in her feelings out of her mind just upset about the whole relationship she ends up grabbing her gun and getting it ready. Her mind is to fight the girl, but whatever pop off, hell, if I got to get rid of her, she just got to go. But I'm going to continue. So she gets in her car. She heads to the gas station. Sydney is still on live. Her and her girls having a good time. Gassing up, talking junk. Yeah, we finna, we out, you know, we finna have fun. We out here or whatever. And here come Keisha pulling up. She pulls up to the pump right next to Sydney. Like, yeah, B, I finally caught you. Yo, you know, my baby daddy ain't here to stop me. Your family ain't here to stop me. Nobody here to stop me. And Sydney still being a woman, but she like, no, it's the principle. I'm, I'm tired of this. We finna just fight, get it out of our system so we can move on. So you can see, you can stop it. So when Sydney is about to run up on Keisha, Keisha just hurry up and grab her gun and shoot her in the head. Wow. All this is on live. All the friends and everybody going crazy. Keisha hurry up and jumps in her car and she drives off. They got her license plate in the live video. Everybody screaming, oh my God, oh my God, not Sydney. Oh my God, I can't believe she just did that. It wasn't that deep. It wasn't that deep. Well, yeah, it's all there. Everybody saw it. They sent it to the police. Keisha's in jail. Sydney is dead. Mike's still out doing him. The moral of the story is baby mamas, mothers of children, it is not worth it to end your life over, your freedom over, your peace of mind. If he don't want to be with you, let it go. Baby daddies, Daddies of children. If the woman does no longer want you, she doesn't want to be with you for whatever reason, let her go. Find somebody that wants to be with you, wants your time. Because your peace, your freedom, or your life is not worth it. And with that, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, so this story is about this married couple. 
the husband, he was a mechanic and he's been doing that job for years while the wife was a secretary for a Fortune 500 company. They made their money, they raised their children, everybody in the community knew them. It was a small community, but it was a nice community. So any kind of rumors that came about, any kind of emergencies, everybody knew everybody. So they know who to tell, who to reach out to. So in this particular story, the wife, she's been the secretary for this CEO um, man for years. They had a good relationship. They always went to, um, what is it, cocktail parties and work-related events. And eventually, over time, the wife started to get jealous of that lifestyle because even though she had a nice home and she had, you know, wonderful children and a nice husband, faithful husband that would just go to work and come home. And he just, he didn't leave the house. He didn't have much friends. He was a homebody. It was getting boring to her. But she was used to it and she had her escape from work because when she went to work, all she seen was these high society people with these business suits and these nice cars. And eventually she wanted that life. She didn't entertain it because she knew that that wasn't good for her to be jealous. She should be grateful for the stuff she had, but eventually it wasn't enough. So on this particular day, they had a party for the job. It was like a fundraiser for a hospital or whatever. And everybody's supposed to get dressed and dressed nice. It was very formal. So she, she went to the party. She did her thing, what she's supposed to do. All the employees had to go. And she started noticing that the CEO was watching her. She seen it over time. Cause you know, when somebody watches you because nine times out of 10, you watching them too. But she, you know, that seed was already planted. She like, hmm, maybe he interested in, you know, in me. But I don't want to, I don't want to go over there and try to see what it is because I want to be faithful for my husband. We have a really good marriage. I just wish I had more. You know, I voiced it to my husband. He has his mechanic job and it pays well. He's been with that for a long time, but we ain't got cars like them. You know, I can't dress like them. I can't just shop when I want to. And at first that was fine, you know, but after seeing this all day, you know, all week, these parties these events and i'm coming in my homely attire and they dressing to impress i want this so she looking at the ceo more so now she's ready to dive into the possibility of maybe he ain't just looking at me like impressed with his secretary maybe he may want more so she goes over there and she's like hey how you doing mr so-and-so are you enjoying your night He's like, yes, I am now because you came over here to speak to me. I've been trying to get your attention for a while. And she's like, what you mean? Because she's trying to keep it professional. She don't want to assume it is something that it ain't. But it definitely was something. He like, I mean, you've been working for me for a long time. And you've been taking care of business. You've been keeping it strictly business. But I was wondering, and I'm not trying to be so forward. But have you ever thought about something more? And she's like, what do you mean something more, um, Mr. You say so-and-so, you know I'm married. Oh, no, no, no disrespect to your husband. I'm just saying we work closely, long hours, day and night. Your husband never complains. You're always here. When do you really have time to be home with your husband? And he's saying it, trying to sound polite, but he got a little cocky edge to him because, I mean, he the CEO. Women always throwing themselves at him. He he walk like money. He talk like money. And then how he dress in his cars and his persona is money. So he knows if he want a woman, nine times out of ten, he's going to get her. So he's testing his luck with his secretary, who he's been working with for years, because that's the only female who hasn't thrown herself at him or show interest in him or even tried to flirt with him. She's been strictly professional up until this point. So they talking and he's like, would you like me to get you a drink? And she's like, well, I, you know, my glass is already kind of full, but I mean, why not? One more won't hurt. Well, that was her mistake because one turned to two and two turned to I don't know how many because she's sloppy drunk at this point. So they laughing and she touching his shoulder. Oh, gosh, Mr. So-and-so, you're so crazy. I'm just really enjoying myself. I hope this night don't have to end. And he like, well, you know, I am the CEO. I can keep this party going. Or if it's okay with you, we can leave and take a nightcap. And she's like, a nightcap? What do you have in mind? He like, well, I mean, 
my car is right outside. We could go get a room. It's it's nothing. That's whatever you would like to do because I know you're married. I'm not. So whatever you say is okay is okay with me. And she was like, well, okay, then let me go to the coat check and go get my stuff and I'll follow your lead. So they eventually ended up leaving and that was when the affair started. At first, it was just a simple little thing where they would just meet up on, you know, lunch breaks because they still had to be professional at work. But he would take his lunch break. She would look at her watch, wait five minutes and check out with him. They had little, little quickies here and there, go around the corner, get a room because he had money. He could get a room whenever he wanted to. They'll have a little quickie in the room. She will tell her husband while she cooking dinner, oh, baby, I got to run out. I forgot to get milk. I forgot to get eggs. When really she's meeting him around the corner to have some car sex you know whatever she could to get it in and she was so addictive to the CEO she was something like he never had before it was like a drug so he just had to have her to the point where she he's like you got to leave your husband and she like what do you mean what do you mean I thought this was just a friendly affair we understood each other you know I really love my husband I stay in a small community I cannot let this get out. That's the whole point of the, you know, discreetness. I cannot let this get out. He's like, no, I'm over that. We're grown. You clearly want me. I clearly want you. I'm not messing with nobody else. I'm only sleeping with you and I can have anybody. I am. I'm CEO of the blah, 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 yada, yada, talking his game because he like letting her know I'm choosing you. But where he messed up at is he's choosing a married woman. So he put her in a dilemma. She's like, I really like you and I love what we have, but I'm married. I have children. I stay in this community. Everybody know each other. This cannot get out. He's like, well, why don't you get a divorce? And she's like, why would I get a divorce? I have no reason to divorce my husband. He ha he doesn't do anything wrong to me. He doesn't cheat on me. He doesn't abuse me. He goes to work. He takes care of his business. He's great with the kids. He's great at home. He doesn't have friends really, so I know where he's at at all times. Why would I leave him? He's like, because I love you. What if I, what if I give you a half a million dollars to leave your husband? She got to thinking like half a million dollars ain't bad. And that will change my lifestyle. I mean, I could be dressing and looking and being like, y'all, I'll fit right in. He's like, I'll take it even a step further. How about I sit you at the table with all the other partners, let them know how great you've been and try to get you a promotion. So you're no longer my secretary. You are in the business like fully. You may not be a CEO, but you wanted to chair women. I can get you that position. What do you say? How does that sound? And the more he talked, it was like how the devil was trying to tempt Jesus. It just, it was getting real y'all. And she just couldn't take it. She like, I don't know, but I can't divorce him. I can't divorce him. He's he like, well, you got to figure something out because I'm not letting you go. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And he was serious. His tone was he wanted her. So she's like, I just, we might have to just get rid of him. And he looked at her like, are you sure? Are you sure about that? Yes. I mean, I really, I, I want to be with you just as much as you want to be with me. And I'm ready for this life. I deserve this life. I should have had this life and I settled for less. And he's like, well, I know a guy who know a guy. And I know a guy who know a guy. I can make some calls. And she's like, yeah, set that up. And then you just give them my information. He's like, wait, I'm not going to give him your information because I don't want it to come back to you. We're going to go get a throwaway phone. We'll connect through there. We ain't going to do no texting. We're just going to do some calling. I'm going to set this up real quick. Give me about a week. She's like, okay, I'm on your time. You just handle everything. And I let him know my husband's schedule, where he's at, where he's going to be. So this can get taken care of because I'm ready for you. He's like, all right. So over the week span, they're swapping stories, schedules, locations, and everything. Letting the dude know what's up and all this stuff. So here we are. The husband is leaving work. It's late. He just got done fixing on a car. It's been taking a little longer than he expected. So now he's going down the street where he normally goes home. Next thing he knows, he hears, oh, excuse me, he hears a shot, pow, and it hits him right on the neck. Now he is frantic because adrenaline is kicking in because all he heard was the shot. He didn't even realize he was shot until he started losing consciousness and the car just started to swerve over into a ditch. Now the husband is in the ditch bleeding out and he's dead. 
the wife is acting like she's waiting on him to come home because she noticed he's he has a schedule he comes home at the same time whereas my husband so she planned it off she's trying to geek herself up because she got to call the cops because you know it's a whole act so she let an hour go by two hours three hours okay now she's like it's time she calls the police oh my god i need to i need to make a missing persons report something is not right and like ma'am calm down what is the problem my husband he's normally here every time he normally calls me he's when he's leaving work and going somewhere else to pick up something or whatever the case may be but he's not here three hours in past they like ma'am 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 it is too soon to file a missing persons report. Are you sure your husband, you know, is he missing? He could have just stopped and grabbed a drink. Well, my husband doesn't drink. Well, I mean, ma'am, normally policy is it has to be missing for at least 24 to 48 hours. Well, I just need somebody to just go look around and from his job to the street he takes home to make sure he's good. I just, I, I just know something's not right. And she's doing the crying and just acting a whole fool because... She got to put on the act. She know they recording her. She got to make herself look not guilty and as a worried wife. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, okay, ma'am, I'll send, I'll call dispatch and have a, um, you know, patrol car hit that street you just told us about to make sure your husband's good. Okay. 25, 30 minutes later, she gets a knock at the door. Boom, boom, boom. Miss so-and-so. Yes, yes, have you found my husband? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm so sorry to have to inform you, but oh my God, oh my God, please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. She got the crocodile tears. She acted a whole fool, y'all. Oh my Lord Jesus, what is going on? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm so sorry to have to inform you, but your husband has been found on route, yada, yada. He is no longer um, with us, ma'am. Your husband is deceased. Oh my God, was he in a car accident? What happened? No, ma'am, he was not in a car accident. Your husband's been shot. Oh God, she's acting crazy, grabbing her stuff. I gotta go see him. I gotta go see him. It might not be him. Are you sure? And all this stuff. And so she getting her stuff. She goes down to where they take the bodies and she go verify that it is him. And now she has to look like, because she's in a small town, like the wife that's in mourning and so sad and oh my God, and all of this. Fast forward. They do their investigation. They looking into the case. They picking up evidence. The person that the CEO called, the friend of the friend, was so sloppy. It was so much evidence that went back to the dude who shot her husband. So they eventually got him within two weeks span. They got him. He's singing like a canary. I was hired from the CEO of this company to kill the secretary's husband because they were having an affair. He's talking. The cops is from the same community. So they going home and telling their wives. The wives is telling everybody in the community. So everybody knows now that the mechanic wife was having an affair with the CEO. So now she getting looked at because they wondering like, hmm, maybe she set it up. It was so much evidence against the dude and just so much was adding up that it just didn't look right that the, the wife had something to do with it so the cops and the, all the investigators and everything went back to the dude who shot the husband and said how about you do something for us i want you to call the wife we're going to record you and i want you to catch her on tape admitting that she had something to do with it make her talk about money make her talk about the phone call make her talk about anything that can incriminate her so she can get you know brought up to charges about this and you ain't about to just take this by yourself make her talk about the ceo whatever you got to do get this woman he like i'm down if it helps get my time off or me some cut time or whatever point me whatever direction you need me to be at because yeah i ain't do this alone so he you know they doing all their little wiring and setting stuff up and next thing you know he calls he like hey She's like, hey, why are you calling me? Every, the deed was done. I mean, don't you call this phone no more. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm calling you because I was supposed to get my money, but I didn't get it all. And she's like, what you mean you didn't get it all? You know, so-and-so made sure that he paid you. She like, he like, well, somebody's lying because I didn't get all my money. I got half of it. Half upon taking the request and I'm supposed to get the half when it was done. She's like, no, 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 the whole thing was paid. You know what, I'm finna just call him. Give me a second, I'm calling him on three-way. So she calls the CEO, the person she having an affair with. Blah, 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 blah. She talk, um, yeah, the guy is on the phone. He's like, so why are you calling me for? Because this is your guy. 
your guy of a guy who's supposed to set this all up. We trying to get this taken care of. Don't you want me? This is what you've been saying. Yes, but we, we supposed to end it this when I paid him. Dude on the phone like, I didn't get all my money. He's like, what do you mean you didn't get all your money? I paid you in full when the job was done. Well, after I killed her husband, you only paid me half. No, I didn't. I paid you the whole thing. Right then and there, they had enough. They was able to indict the person who did the crime, the CEO, and the wife. So the moral of the story is, y'all, don't be trying to keep up with the Joneses. Be grateful and content with what you already got. And with that, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are not a gang member and you get locked up in Fullerton County, do not, I repeat, do not become a gang member or you're going to get your head cracked to the white meat. Let's get to this story. Ah, shit. Here we go again. So you got Tarty being a crip and you got my homeboy Homicide being a blood. Now, I told y'all at the beginning that homicide was already in there with me. Now, I got to give a full disclaimer for the people that do not know who I am and just now tuning into my stories. I am not a gang banger. I never was in no gang at all. I just had a whole bunch of associates that was gang members, okay? Whether they was Crips or Bloods or GDs, okay? But Dante ain't never gang bang. I just knew cats from the streets. And when I got locked up, naturally, me being who I was, I just gravitated, or should I say, gang members gravitated to me for my wisdom and knowledge, okay? So, Homicide was actually a guy that I knew from the streets. Like, I really knew him from Atlanta. I told y'all the story about Homicide already, so y'all just gonna have to go find the video about how I knew Homicide from the streets. So, me and Homicide in there kicking it, and he come to my cell, he like, hey man, Dante, man, what's up with your cousin Rosalie? Now, Rosalie is from Atlanta. Matter of fact, all this is happening in Atlanta. So, so basically, when we was in Atlanta, it was me, Tarty, Homicide, my cousin Derek, my sister, Pig, Dominique, Al, who else? Kia, and I think that I think Man Man was there too. I'm not sure. But we all was at Pig House in Covington, Georgia. We were just all chilling. And my cousin Rosa Lee, she pulled up and Tarty was like, man, she is bad. And Homicide, and I'm, I'm going to be real with y'all. I think Homicide didn't like Tarty off the strip that he was a crip. But it could have been some other things going, some underlining things going on that I see. For y'all to get the beef between Homicide and Tarty, we have to go all the way to the beginning. And I don't think y'all really want me to go all the way to the beginning. Like I said, y'all got to go find the videos about Tarty and Homicide. But, so, Tarty like, yeah, man, Charlie's so fine, man. She's so fine and all this and that. And Homicide like, man, she ain't going to want you, man. She ain't going to want you. And he was like, man, there you go with all that hate. And, there you go with that hate and stuff. Long story short, the next morning, I get woke up. Man, Dante, Homicide and Tarty about to fight upstairs. They about to fight. And I had to get up there because I was the mutual friend between the two. And I had to basically break that up. So anyway, we back in jail. So Homicide, like, man, hey, man, I want to like your cousin, man. I want to like your cousin. I was like, all right, well, shoot, when I get a visit, cause she visited me once a week while I was locked up. So I was like, all right, I'm going to holler at her when, you know, when I, when I see her after visiting. So he like, all right, bet. So then, remember y'all, every Tuesday we get new inmates. Like, that's, that was the rotation in the jail. They didn't want everybody, you know, getting comfortable. So 
if you were in a a problem inmate, you will usually stay in your dormitory. But nine times out of ten, out of maybe three months, you gonna get moved. So they pop the doors and dudes start falling in, right? And guess who coming there? Tar T. So he he be like right over there to us, you know, the Atlanta crew, and. You know, we like, what's up, what's up? And Homicide just look him up and down like, yeah, whatever. So me saying that is to say, now that I think about it, y'all, yeah, I, I wonder that they really, like, before I came to Atlanta, I wonder that they, like, that they gangs ever get into it. But they never told me anything about them, like, physically fighting or beefed out. But you can just tell it was just always animosity. So... We over there chilling, we over there talking, and Homicide was like, hey man, he, he just he just brought it up out of nowhere. He like, yeah, I can't wait to see Rosalie, I can't wait to see her. And remember y'all, I told y'all him and Homicide, him and Tar T already had words and was about to fight when we was out there in the streets in the house about Rosalie, because Homicide was hating on him. So he was like... Man, bro, there you go again with that, bro. Man, why why you sitting up there bringing up my girl name? Now, up until this point, yeah, this is what Tar T says. Why you bring up my girl name? And Homicide, man, that ain't your girl. I'm like, and I, this is a shock to me because I'm thinking like, I think Rosalie would have told me like if she was talking to Tar T, so I'm just quiet. And they argue back and forth. He like, man, that ain't your girl, bro. That ain't your girl. He like, man, that is my girl. That is my girl. And he like, well, you need to keep 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 her name out your mouth and all this and that. So this all new to me. I'm like, man, y'all chill out, man. Don't don't start doing that. Now remember, y'all, Tar T is a crip and homicide is a blood. So as this as they lightweight arguing, they gang members start coming up. Like, what's going on? What, what's going on? And as they now, me being the mutual guy, and like I said, y'all, I want to give a, a, a quick disclaimer. Now, if you are not a gang member, right, on the streets, don't go in here trying to be a gang member because it always turn out bad. It would turn, these cats will put you on a dummy mission and get you jammed up. That's all I'm saying. Just go in there, be you. Hopefully, you ain't a piece of crap, and hopefully, you stand up for yourself. And that's all you got to really do to survive the county jail, but, um, oh, oh, particularly this, oh, people wonder like, what, what, what county jail are you talking about? This Fullerton County, this Fullerton County. So, so he, so they like, they like, man, what's up? What, what's up? And they saying they little gang stuff. And I'm like, man, it's all good. It's all good. And then one of the crips like, no, nah, you don't speak. You don't speak for him. You don't speak for him. Tarty like, hey, man, chill out, man. This is my homie Dante, man. Chill out. So at this point now, I'm getting upset because I just got disrespected by one of these crip dudes. So Tarty like, nah, man, this is my homeboy Dante. It ain't nothing. We just talking. We just talking. So they tell the Tarty like, look, man. You can't be over there mixing with them because it's bloods over there. We ain't really rock with the bloods right now. So he like, all right, man, Dante, I'll holler at you in a minute, right? And that was rightfully so. Tarty supposed to go with his people, okay? I'm just a, I'm a neutron. I'm, I'm neutral. So he can kick it with me or whatever. But when the bloods start coming around, it can get, you know, it can get a little sketchy. So he has to go over there with his people. So I'm talking to Homicide like, man, why you always doing that? He like... Nah, man, uh, he, he talking about he talking to Rosalie. Man, look, when you go on the vision flow, man, ask her. Is she coming today? I was like, yeah, he was like, man, ask her. Is, is she talking to this clown, man? Because that, that dude always trying to claim people. I'm like, all right. So my name get called. I go to the vision, bro. Rosalie right there with my mama. So we talk, we talk. I'm like, hey, Rose, you, uh, you, you talking to Tall T? She like. I mean, something like that, but I mean, he ain't my man or nothing. I said, oh, but like y'all talking, like this, like he one of your dudes. He was like, you know how I do it. I'm using these niggas for money. I'm like, oh, okay. I was just wondering. She was like, why? I said, well, he, he in here. She was like, oh, oh, that's why he ain't been calling, blowing my phone up. I'm like, okay. So it ain't nothing official. It's just, he just one of your dudes, right? She like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, homicide one of 
he, he wanted, he said he wanted to holler at you, whatever. She like, I mean, what do you want to holler at me for? I don't like him. I said, oh, you don't. She was like, hey, no, he, he too aggressive. And I was like, oh, all right, all right. So I said, all right, all right, all right. That, that, that's what it is there, right? So we ain't really talk about nothing after that. So we let's get back to the dormitory. So we get back to the dorm. And homicide right there at the door, like, hey Dante, what what happened? Did, did she come? Did she come? What happened? I said, look, bro, she ain't messing with you. What you mean she ain't messing with me? She ain't messing with you. She said you too aggressive. He like, man, I'm gonna holler at her when I get out, man. She's talking about I'm too aggressive. I said, actually, you are aggressive. You remember that time when we was at Stone Crest Mall and when we were trying to get up on the white chicks? It was like, no, nah, that wasn't my fault. I was drunk. Let me tell y'all what this dude do. So it was me, Homicide, and Al, right? We was at Stonecrest Mall, and we see these white chicks. Now, at them times, you know, we we had tried to pull up on some white chicks that got money, you know. if it, It'd be a Friday evening, right? And we ain't got nothing to do for the weekend. We don't feel like partying. We, you know, want to get treated. And what's treated, you know, get taken care of by some white chicks, right? So... We we end up saying four white chicks and you know you know uh I went up on them I'm like what's up ladies and they was like we we okay we okay I'm like what y'all doing they like we we going shopping and this and that so I'm like uh well it's four y'all and it's three of us you know me and my two homies y'all want to um, kick it this weekend. Uh, they like, we got boyfriends and all this now. I'm like, I know, I know. I said, look, man, I'm, y'all are that dang gorgeous. So I know y'all got boyfriends, but you know what they say? Once you go black, you don't go back, right? And they got to laugh. They like, you funny and all this. And I said, yeah. So they like, all right. So it was just one. T- oh, I just thought about something, y'all. I should, I should tell y'all this story next. Yeah, because this right here is wow. Well, okay, let me change the name. So I'm going to say Kathy. Okay, so Kathy is the one that was filling me, right? So I'm, I'm, so after, I guess, okay, so they was hanging back. And once they see Dante, like, really engaging the girls, then my other two homeboys just pull up and you know, they, they start talking to the chicks, right? So Al ended up getting two chicks. Like, two of the chicks was really filling him. They were saying Al... Look like the dude from um Drew Hill, not Cisco, but the other one, like the other the other skinny guy. Al kind of favored that dude, so they was like, "Oh, you look." I forgot dude name, but they was like, "Oh, you look just like blah 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 blah." So I'm like, "So what's up, y'all? Tomorrow about to close soon, so we we, we with y'all or what up?" They like, "All right, y'all can come with us. Y'all can come with us." So listen, y'all. When I say they was branded up, I'm talking about they would it all the way up. They stayed like in this. I for, I forgot the. It was off of Old National Highway in a mansion. They had like a baby mansion. So her daddy, what Catherine, the girl I was talking to, we went to her house. Her daddy was like a a sports lawyer or something like that. I know he was a lawyer and he was dealing with sports or entertainment or something like that. But he was on a cruise right now. So they had to, they had to clear wide open. So man, we went in there. Man, this house was nice. So, well, I, I yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to tell a separate story about this because I can't really. Uh, this is a prison story right here that I'm telling y'all. But yeah, this story right here is crazy. Anyway, so. That's how we. That's how we are, man. Wait, I forgot. Even, why was we even talking about this? Huh? I don't forgot about the day. Pre- oh, 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 oh. Okay, it was the beef between homicide and Tarty. My fault, y'all. I don't got y'all know Dante get carried away. I don't went into a whole different story. Anyway, so let's get back. To, and, and, and I'm sorry. I, I know y'all going to rip me apart in the comment section. I know y'all like, dang man, this story was getting so good, man. Why you did switch like that? I'm sorry, y'all. Dante apologized. I get carried away sometimes, but I promise y'all, I'm gonna give y'all that story. I promise y'all. So anyway, let's get back to the pod, right? So 
homicide right there. He and I tell him like, yeah, she. Oh, oh, that's why I said that because the chicks be said that he too aggressive, right? So that's why he was being aggressive with one of the chicks at the, with one of the white chicks. Okay, she wouldn't give him none, so he was being aggressive with her, and they she ended up hitting him, and we had to go in the room and pull him out of that room before something happened. That's what I. That's what I say. Him being aggressive, so. That's why I was telling that story. So let's go right. Let's go right back to the pot. So I tell him, she like, no, you too aggressive and all this and that. He like, man, I'm not aggressive. And I was like, you is aggressive. Remember what happened with the white girls? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that is right. But no, that wasn't my fault. She was playing. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all know any cats out there that be over aggressive with the females? You know what I'm saying? Be trying to bully it out of them. They be like real aggressive. And even though the the girl might be afraid to say no to him, let, let me know in the comments section if y'all know somebody like that. Matter of fact, I know two cats like that. One dude from Flint and Homicide. So anyway, you got it where he like, all right, man, whatever. So Tar T come over there. He like, hey, uh, you you seen, uh, somebody told me you be talking to Rose, like Rose just came and visited you. I was like, yeah. And Tar T was like, I, I mean, Homicide was like, man, she ain't thinking about you, man. She she probably out here sitting another dude. He was like, look, I done told you already, man. Stop, stop beating up my girl, man. He like, man, that ain't your girl, man. Dante just visited right now. He he said that she ain't even feeling you, man. I never, t I never said that to Homicide at all. So he like, man, get out of here, man. You always trying to get in my business, man. Stop getting my business. So here they go arguing. I, I'm going to be real with y'all. In the streets, every time we got, when us three was around each other and other people, it was always an argument, man. They always was getting into it for petty stuff. And yes, it was homicide always starting the stuff between them two. So they arguing, they arguing, and here, here come the bloods, and here come the crips again. And they they like on the standoff, and then this one dude named J-Rock from the crips was like, hey man, we all over, y'all arguing over a B? Y'all arguing over a B? Now remember y'all, Rosalie is my cousin. So when he said the B word, I'm like, hey man, you need to fall back on that B word. And he like, what you mean fall back? Hey, y'all ain't finna be arguing over no B, man. Y'all keep arguing over B. I said, hey, J-Rock, you need to chill out saying the B word. That's my family who you talking about. He like, man, like I said, I'm like, no, it ain't like what you said. Now, at this time, Homicide and Tar T stopped kind of arguing. And now it's just me and J-Rock. Tar T, Crip homeboy, that's really going at it now because he keep throwing that B word around. He like, man, like I said, bro, like I said, bro, y'all need to, they need to stop arguing over this chick and all this and that. So, um, I'm like, all right, boy, like you need to watch your mouth. He like, I ain't got to watch. Nigga, we, we can, we can go back in the shower and we can fight. So I'm like, man, that ain't, it ain't nothing. So then talk, he like, no, nah, no, nah, y'all ain't about to fight. Y'all ain't about to fight. I'm like, no, nah, he keep disrespecting. I'm going to have to teach him. So he like, so talk, he like, no, nah, I can't let you do that because they going to try to jump you. And homicide, like, ain't nobody jumping my partner. Ain't nobody jumping my partner. So the other dude now, Jay Rock, I think he was scared of me because he like, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't going to be no one on one. It ain't going to be no one on one. We ain't doing that. No, I don't know how they play it, but no, nah, Chris, we all, we all stick together. And Tall T, man, you better pick a side, man. You better tip, pick a side, bro. So he did. He didn't want that one on one with me because he could give him every excuse. He bringing other cats in it, talking about oh we we uh, uh we we a crew and in one fight we all fight. No, Dante and Neutron. I'm not no blood. I'm not no gang member. Let's go back in it. You called me out. You came with the disrespect, right? So we are arguing back and forth, and somebody done tipped off a guard. The guard come through, walking through there. Everybody disperse. And about five minutes later, Homicide, like, hey, man, we finna just go ahead and get these crips up out of here, man. So I'm like, what you mean? He said, well, we finna bang out on them. I'm like, no, nah, man. See, and that's why I said, man, when, when it comes to this gang stuff and you got homeboys on both sides, it's like I'm always caught in the middle of something. So I'm like, Tar T, my man, and Homicide is too. So it's like, 
what what can I do? What can I do? So I'm like, you know what? L let me go over here and talk. L let me go talk. He like, no, nah, man, we finna. I'm I'm getting tired of these. But, but what what it really is, y'all? I don't like. I said I don't really know the beef between homicide and Tarty. Honestly, like I said, when I first moved into the neighborhood in Settlers Grove. I met Tar T first, and then I met Homicide. And when we all met, when we all was together for the first time, we was at this party called the, it was at a warehouse or whatever. And all the hoods and Covington and Conyers, like, was all there. And um, they just, it just seemed like they just had animosity. Like, they, they knew each other post me, but I don't know. Maybe because they was from different gangs. I don't know. But... <clears throat> I know one thing. Hold on, I need to drink some water. <coughs> Hold on. Mm. Oh, what the heck is this? Tastes like vitamins in this dang water. Anyway, I, I just I don't know, man. I I I don't know what they beef was all about. But anyway, I'm like, no, nah, man. Just this, but we just leave it alone. He like, no, nah, man. We finna ride on. As soon as he said that. He go Tarty and four Crips. It was like five of them. And Homicide, it was like Homicide and maybe like eight blood. So it was like five against nine. They end up just coming out of nowhere, just punching on Homicide, right? I got the punching on J Rock and the hick on the bloods coming this way, right? Now, I wasn't hitting Tarty. I was only hitting J Rock and what other other crip that was in my way. Cause once, once it's on, it's on, right? So at this point now, it's just a full out brawl. It's the Bloods versus the Crips and Dante right in the middle of it all. But it looked like that I'm helping the Bloods. So it was really like 10 on five, right? Um, it got real crazy. It got real crazy. There was one dude. What was it? this dude named Poo Poo? This dude hit so hard, and he was a crip, man. I ain't gonna lie. I had J-Rock. Okay, so J-Rock, he was like trying to boof me, trying to pick me up off my feet, but I locked down. I got the elbow on him in his back, like, boom, boom, boom. Poo Poo came out of nowhere. After he like slammed two bloods, right? Then he come out of nowhere, like, boom. This dude hit me so hard, y'all. I, I didn't get knocked out. But I was in the days he like knocked me into tomorrow. Like I was, I was like, what the? Have you ever got hit so hard that everything got so quiet and you hear like you hear that ringing noise in your in your ear? It was like that, man. <laughs> hey, shout out to Poo Poo, man. Oh, wherever you at, man. If you listening to this video, man, shout out to you. Matter of fact, hey. I need everybody to put your area code in the comment section. Right now, I'm going to represent Flint, Michigan, so I'm going to put 810 in the comment section. But y'all, let me know where y'all are from and put your area code in the comment section. But Poo Poo hit me so hard, y'all. I'm like, I'm knocked out, but I'm standing. And I'm still holding um, J-Rock. So... Um, I, all I'm thinking like, what the heck just happened? And then J Rock just come up out of it. And then I don't know, was it homicide or one of the bloods pulled out that sword of justice that got the poke? It. And one of the crips was like, oh, it's like that, it's like that. All right, all right, all right. Come on, y'all, fall back, fall back, fall back. Right. For the sake of time, I got to end this video. I'm gonna give y'all another story, but I'm not gonna forget. To give y'all about that story when we all went with the white girls. But with that, y'all, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, 
email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Before we start this story time, I want to give a special shout out to all the big, beautiful women out there. Okay. Now, back in 2010, me and my cousin C. Jones was out there in Flint, Michigan. And C. Jones was like, yo, that, so let me give y'all a quick refresh. So basically, I just came from Tennessee. Okay. And my cousin C. Jones, that's, that's my road dog. He'd be in some of my skits in the summertime that I'm dropping. So he he called me, he like, hey Dante, you back? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm back. He like, man, where you at? I'm at my mama house. He like, all right, I'm about to pull up. So he pull up on me and we just talking. I'm just letting him know what was going on in Tennessee and you know, this locker room talk. So he was like, Hey man, I got this chick that been asking about you. I'm like, who? He was like, her name Kiki. And I'm like, Kiki? He like, yeah. I'm like, man, listen. That name alone sound kind of ratchet, and I ain't trying to really deal with no ratchet chicks right now. He like, no, man, she real cool. She cool. And I was like, well, how you know she even like me? He was like, dude, I've been showing her your pictures and stuff. And she was like, she really want to mess with you. I'm like, all right, bet. So he gave me her address because I guess her phone was off. Now, me, now in hindsight, thinking about it, never mind, I ain't even going to bring that up. So... I'm like, all right, cool. So he gave me her address, and I'm like, should I just pop up over there? Like, what if she got a dude? And he like, man, trust me, she ain't got no dude. Trust me, she ain't got no dude. And I'm like, so you just want me to go pop up? He like, man, come on, I'll take you over there right now. So I'm like, all right. So I get in the car, we just riding. So we pull up to these projects, and I'm like, oh, man, all right, here you go. So, I mean, and listen, shout out to all the key keys out there, right? But in my line of work, in my experience in life, all girls that's named Kiki is ratchet. So we pull up to the projects. I'm like, man, come on, man. He like, what? I said, dude, I told you I ain't trying to talk to no ratchet chick, man. He like, man, she cool. I'm telling you, she cool. So I'm like, all right, man. So when we get to her house, she answered the door. Now, again, like I said, shout out to all the big, beautiful, big women out there, okay? So she answered the door, and Kiki is now big Kiki. Kiki is like six foot, maybe pushing 320, right? But she, okay, so she's not sloppy looking. She look in shape, though, but... She just big. And, you know, she got makeup, her hair done. You know, she, she like a boss chick, a, a boss big chick, right? So, oh, and I forgot to tell y'all, she got a gold tooth in, like, gold tooth in the front of her mouth, too, like on the right side. So she like, oh, boo, oh, man, oh, this your cousin, ain't it? So when she opened the door, she kind of, like, grabbed me a little bit. And now, you remember, y'all, I'm like, what, 5'11"? maybe one, 170 at this time. So when she grabbed me, she like grabbed me and like hugged me, like brought me into her bosom. So I'm like, I kind of pushed back because I'm, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real with y'all. I ain't never been with a big girl. I, it, it ain't, it's not that I was discriminating. It's just a big girl ain't never came across my path. So, you know, I just never had that experience, and, you know, it, it is what it is. So, like I said again, before y'all start trying to come for me, talking about, oh, Dante, shaming. No, no, trust me. Dante ain't shaming at all. I got, number one, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we even go any further, number one, this was about, what, 10, 11, 12 years ago? Maybe, no, no, not even that. This was like, Maybe 15 years ago, now that I think about it. But Dante is married. 
So it ain't me relishing in the past, thinking like, oh, I am I want this type of woman and that. No, no, no. I'm just giving y'all the story. Y'all here for the story time. So let's get to it. So I kind of pushed back on it like, yo, hold up. The cab was like, yo, I'm going to leave y'all to it. And he walked out. So she's like, man, I've been thinking about you all, like all the time. So I'm like, hold on. I said, so what's your name? She was like, man, my name Kiki. And listen, y'all, Kiki was real freaky, R really freaky, like over, over aggressively. So it's like she kept touching on me. And I'm like, I, I start getting uncomfortable. Let me tell y'all something. I never thought, I never thought I could say that a woman could violate me in that way, but I was in, she was in total violation. She kept trying to touch me and stuff. I'm like, yo, hold on, man, chill. So I get up, and and, and this is no cap, y'all. It's like Tom and Jerry in that house. I'm trying to, like, literally get away from her, and she keep, like, chasing me and, like, trying to grab on me and hug me and stuff. And I'm like, yo, chill out. So I, I'm like, yo, let, let's talk or whatever, because she trying to get down to business. And I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to do that, you know. And I'm sitting on the couch. And I said, just sit right there. Let's slow down. Let's just talk. So she like, yeah, your cousin C. Jones was telling me that you single and and we, he think that we should be together. All in my head, I'm thinking like, yo, when I get, as soon as I get back around C. Jones, I'm putting hands on him. I don't know what this dude was sitting up here telling this girl or whatever. But, yo, she got me all the way bent. I'm not trying to be in no relationship. And especially with somebody that I just met, man, that's out. So I'm talking to her. I'm like, okay, okay. Now, at this point in time, y'all, Big Kiki is getting way close to me. She getting really close to me. And I'm like, you know what? This ain't going to work. I, I just felt like, I just felt violated. So I, I, I felt pressured and. And I'm not trying to sound like a victim, but, you know, I just felt, I, I just felt, let me ask the fellas out there a question right quick. This is for the fellas, right? Have y'all ever been in a predicament where a woman was real aggressive on you and you just didn't want to do anything and you really felt like you could be a victim? Let me know in the comment section. And this is not me being soft or nothing, but I really felt victimized, right? So, I was like, hey, hold on, let, let, let me, let me, I know what you want to do, but I like to practice safe, safe intimacy. And she like, dude, I got condoms upstairs. So I was like, oh man, because at this point, yo, I'm trying to get away. I'm trying to get away at this time. So she like, I'm finna go get some right now. You stay right there. As soon as she went up them stairs, y'all, I bolted throughout the door. I opened that door and I got up out of there. Right. So I'm walking down the street and I call my cousin. I'm like, yo, Jones, man, where's you at? He he got the bus and I started laughing. I'm like, man, that man, get over here right now. He like, man, I'm down the street. Here I come. So as I'm walking down the street, like towards the entrance to the left, here she go. Hey, baby, where you going? Where you <sighs> listen? This is in the summertime, y'all. This is in the projects, right? Everybody outside. And this is the projects that, you know, I frequent in. You know, people know me out there. So they like, oh, oh, Dante. Oh, Dante was messing with Big Kiki. Oh, oh, Dante a freak. He was in there freaking on Big Kiki. No, that ain't true. I was getting out of there, right? So I'm walking, cats come up to me like, oh, you just knocked Big Kiki down and all this. So now this is where rumors start, right? Oh. So my cousin pull up and he get out the car laughing at me like, ah, and all this and that. He like, you, you not been kinky down? I'm like, man, dude, heck. So I'm like, man, take me back to my mama house, man. So we get in the car. I'm like, dude, man, why you, you play too much, man? He like, he like, man, big kinky a freak, man. I lost my virginity to big kinky. I'm like, dude, y'all. I'm like, dude, that that ain't that ain't even my type, man. I don't I don't get down like that. He like, man, dude, she she be out. She a real freak though. Like, if you wanted to go over there and slide in there one night, big Kiki would do it. All I'm thinking is like, this girl probably got every STD in the world. She out here in the projects. And listen, this ain't no 
shot at nobody in the projects because they are good people and they are good wholesome women that's in the projects okay but big kiki she was every bit of that stereotype that i'm talking about right now man hey i'm dante if you enjoyed this story time make sure you hit that like button share the video and if you are not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe if you want me to promote your business or your social media channels email me at the dante show 88 at yahoo.com i charge 50 dollars per video don't forget y'all i go live every monday tuesday and wednesday at 6 p.m eastern time If you catch your man cheating on you, do not get even. Just break up with him or you're going to be in this situation. Let's get to it. Hey, y'all. So today's story is about a girl who, instead of just leaving the guy alone, she decided she needed to get her lick back. So this girl, she was dating this guy for I don't know how long or whatever, but they were in a relationship. And she felt like she was doing everything right to this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't cheating on him. She was trying to... Um, please him, satisfy him, be everything that he needed in a girlfriend. But eventually she started to realize that maybe that wasn't enough. So she had a friend. It's always a friend who want to tell you about your relationship, tell you about your man, got you thinking and overanalyzing everything. But in this case, home girl was right. Her friend was saying like, how's your relationship going? You seem real happy. And the girl like, yeah, I mean, everything seems fine and dandy. And her friend, she was like, well, I, I ain't know how to come to you with this, but I was looking at my friend birthday party pictures and I noticed your dude was in the background with another female and they looked real close. And girl, she like, I mean, I knew he was going to a birthday party you sure like how close is you talking about because you could just be overthinking things you could just be assuming and she like no nah. they was real close like it looked like he was kissing her on her neck and the girl like well can you show me the pictures or whatever and so she showed her the pictures and yeah i mean there was no debate in that there was no like you could not deny that it looked like he was sitting there kissing her or licking her or something on her neck. They looked intimate in that picture. So girl, she mad. She like, oh man, I need to confront him. I need to confront him because he, no, nah, he doing me wrong and I'm doing everything right. I've been swerving dudes. People been in my inbox trying to get with me. And here he go out here. I don't even know if this is a girl he cheating with or he just happened to be hooking up at the birthday party. But regardless of what it is, you're not finna do me like that. So friend, like, what you, what you got in mind? Girl, she like, well, a lot of people been already in my inbox and one person specifically was his cousin. I've been trying to ignore his cousin because I'm like, dude, you filed. This is your cousin I'm dating, but here you go in my inbox every other day. How you doing, big head? Hi, beautiful. Um, when you go give me a chance? My cousin ain't worth it. All this, all that. So she felt like, in her mind, since he wanted to be out here doing him, maybe I should start doing me. Now, audience, this is where I, when I'm hearing the story, I'm like, girl, out of all the people you could think about messing with, if this is the route you choose to go, I personally would have left dude alone because he ain't worth the headache if he out here entertaining other females. But her, she felt like it'll affect him worse if she decides to dip off and mess with the cousin bad mistake on her end however we'll continue with the story so she noticed it just so happens he just wrote her a couple hours ago so she she looked at it left him all red but she went back into the message and she wrote him like hey how you doing i see that you've been interested in me sometime now and um i mean what you what you have in mind like why are you so invested in taking your time out your day to write me and play a cuz and make him look bad like what's up and he like, no, I just been feeling you. You seem like a good woman. And I just want to show you how a real man treat a woman. And my cousin, he ain't the man for you. He ain't right. He be playing you out here. He be making you look bad. I think you should just give me a chance. And she like, but that's your cousin though. Man, forget him. All this, all that. Just straight up negativity when it comes to the cousin. And she like thinking in her mind, like, yeah, this is the perfect opportunity to, you know, give him a taste of his own medicine so she like okay so 
um when you're trying to get together i'm on whatever time you on because now she's not even trying to talk to the cousin for real she really just trying to get revenge on you know her boyfriend he don't even know that you know she knows about the picture from the birthday party that the friend put her on or whatever so yeah so he like yeah we can um you mind going out to eat or to the movies we you know we can even drive out the city and do something so we ain't got to be seen or nobody can see us let me pause it there audience he was already on some mess because he know first off he shouldn't have been trying to court his cousin's girlfriend and now he even taking it a step further to do some sneaky link stuff as the world call it and take her out of town so they won't be seen i mean if you are okay with going in her inbox why you got to take her out of town but you know what it's all right whatever continue with the story so she she's down with that because she's mad she's not even thinking rationally she just want to give him a dose of his own medicine make him feel how he making her feel but with the cousin not no random dude not somebody out here with the cousin i don't know what time she was on but yeah so anyway so yeah so they um they start in dating secretly or whatever she eventually sleeps with the guy and then she finds out she's pregnant now this is where it gets bad because she don't know if she's pregnant by the boyfriend or the cousin and so she's telling the boyfriend like yeah i'm i'm pregnant but i'm gonna just keep it real with you i don't even know if it's yours and he like what you mean by that and that's when she spilled the beans about yeah i've been seeing stuff and hearing stuff and i really know that you ain't up to no good because i saw a picture with you in the background of um one of my friends cousins or friend birthday party with you all up in some girl face all on her neck and stuff and he like what you mean i don't know what you talking about she already had the screenshot ready to show him him on a picture kissing and licking some girl face like are you gonna deny this so you so this ain't you this ain't you oh baby no it ain't even i had to be drunk i don't even no you was a little too comfortable being in that female face trying to make me look stupid knowing you got a girlfriend but that's okay because i'm on what you on i'm pregnant and it might be your cousins and, she, and he like what my cousin which cousin you know which cousin the one that's always complimenting me when y'all together the same one that always be smiling in my face trying to say slick stuff like you don't know what you got cuz if she was mine i i know how to treat her i treat her like the one that be silently and sneaky sneak dissing oh oh man when i see that yeah it's on it's on site it's on site. i can't believe it and she like what you mad for you ain't appreciate what you had uh, clearly you out here doing you so i'm gonna do me and he like you know what well, we good i'm straight on you whatever yep yep i'll holler at you when the baby born so we can see whose it is and take the paternity test and blah 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 so they they over with now she's sitting here trying to contact the cousin they didn't date he got what he wanted out of her he just wanted to sleep with her anyway and now he ain't even responding he leaving her on red he not even paying no attention to her she like texting him writing him on facebook i just need to really get in contact with you because i gotta let you know something i'm pregnant i believe it's yours i'm not for sure because you know i was with your cousin and he's just not he's not paying her no attention but she knows where he work at so she comes up to his job and um she just sit in the parking lot she wait or whatever and he gets out she walks up to his car when he walking out and he goes to his car and she pull up on him and she like um dang so what's up like i you've been trying to court me all this time trying to get with me and then finally i give you some time you taking me out you wine and dining you slept with me now that's all it is uh i don't i don't know what to tell you you know i'm not I, I mean you was with my cousin and she like what that's supposed to mean what's that supposed to mean i mean you was with my cousin and i mean if it was so easy for you to sleep with me who else you out here sleeping with i seen the messages you pregnant that might not be mine i mean it's, it's between me and my cousin and it could be homeboy down the street i don't know who sleep with cousins so now he's trying to make her look bad he like listen you just holler at me when um you get that paternity test say it on the same stuff that cousin saying so she goes through her little pregnancy um appointments and uh, all the testing and stuff and she finds out that she has herpes so now she like oh man why did i go this route why did i go this route i should have left him alone now i got herpes now i gotta set up um situations on how to have my baby with a, with a c-section or take all this medicine and stuff but you know what that's okay because if they want to play me i'm about to play it in them and so she writing them and she like yeah i just want you to know make sure you get yourself checked because you got you got that package you can't get rid of no it ain't the three letters but you might as well say it ain't nothing good so now 
now she mad so she just she don't care she don't care at this point so she letting them know, like, since you wanted to get, you wanted to do me like this, just know, huh, be happy with this package you finna spread around that I might have gave you. Because one of y'all gave it to me, so y'all got it. But just in case it was from you or your cousin, and I didn't slept back with you after I slept with your cousin, you probably got it too. So you probably don't want to pay attention to me because I got this baby that's by one of y'all, but I gave y'all something too. The moral of the story is... If a dude is out here making you look bad or a female is out here making you look bad, you got proof that they cheat and they making you feel like you got to get your leg back. Give them a dose of their own medicine. Make them feel how you feel. Don't. Because first off, it ain't worth it. It's too many STDs out here. It's too many dudes and females out here that is waiting on you to treat you right, to make you feel worth it, to keep you, your self-esteem up and not have this toxic mindset that you got to go out here and make them feel how they're making you feel it ain't worth it it is not worth it just leave them alone let them go let them do them and that's it and i'm out hey i'm dante if you enjoy my story time y'all gonna love my movie that's coming out in october but i need y'all help i need y'all help to help me finance this movie so if you can put something in the paypal or put something in the cash app and with that y'all let's get back to the story hey i'm dante if you enjoyed this story time make sure you hit that like button share the video and if you are not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe if you want me to promote your business or your social media channels email me at the dante show 88 at yahoo.com i charge 50 dollars per video don't forget y'all i go live every monday tuesday and wednesday at 6 p.m eastern time Today's story is about a dude who pressed his luck and a female who took it too far. So it was this dude, he was real known as being a ladies man. He had all these females he was sleeping with. All his friends thought, man, he could just have any girl he want. And it was a girl in the neighborhood that she was real pretty and everybody want her. But dude did not know that she had that three letter package. She ain't broadcast it. She ain't tell nobody that was just her little secret. And she like... Shoot, somebody gave it to me. So if a dude want to play, I'm going to let him play. If he end up with it, he end up with it. So dude see the girl and he like telling his homeboys, yeah, y'all know so-and-so, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. And his friend's like, no, nah, you ain't going to get her. She out of your league. She bad. You ain't going to, no, nah, you you got females. You got you a nice little setup, but you can't get her. So they, they bet it on it. Dude, like how much you want to bet I can pull her? They like, shoot, I got 20, friend. Like, I got 40, I got 100. All right, all right, you about to see what it is real quick. They are out, they playing basketball. And girl, she just happened to, I should call her a woman because she's grown. She just happened to be walking past the park where the basketball hoop is at when they playing basketball. And they like, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. There she go right there. And he go over there and he like, hey, Miss Lady, how you doing today? And she like, I'm good. I'm just trying to enjoy the scenery take in this fresh air, how about yourself? Oh, I'm just, you know, chilling with my homies, playing basketball, you know, we just doing our thing. So, you know, how was your day? My day is going good and yours? She trying to keep it short because she wasn't trying to talk to nobody. She was just trying to walk around the park or whatever. You talking to anybody? You got a dude or whatever? Cause I be seeing you around and I, I find you to be very attractive. I want to explore more of that. And she like, what you mean by that? No, no, not like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I want to get to know you a little better. And she like, what is it that you want to get to know exactly? He like, I just want to pick your mind, see what your interest is. See if you like to go out to eat. If you like crab legs or you like steak, I'm talking about that. I'm trying to get to know you. And she liked it. It was different because most of the times when dudes try to hit on her, they was all about, you know, wanting to sleep with her and then move along. But he seemed like he really wanted to get to know her. Fast forward, they start talking. It started off slow because she was like, I want to see what he really about. Is he really trying to get to know me or is he trying to get in my pants? So they on the phone and she like, you know, telling him about her day, what her plans is, what she got going on. And he just acting so interested the whole time. When he back with his friends, he like, y'all, I got her. They always say, if you could get the woman mine, you got her. I'm not even about to rush this, but I'm about to make that money, though. And they all high-fiving and dapping it up because 
they like, dude, you think you got her. She ain't about to, she ain't giving in. She ain't, she know what you about. She heard about your reputation. But he like, yeah, you about to find out. You gonna find out. So he talked to her more and they start going on a date. And then she just, just looked at him as he was so different. She like, oh, he, he a different dude. She talking to her friends and her sisters. And she like, I'm really liking this guy. But they telling her like, girl, do you know who he is? Is we talking about the same dude, the same dude that could pull a female, got plenty females, sleeping with half of the city? You sure you want to rock that boat? And she like, but I'm not getting that side of him. I think he changed. I think he trying to grow up and mature. And they looking at her like she crazy, like, girl, whatever. He's spitting some good game if you really think that you, not saying you couldn't, but just saying if you really think you changed him. All of a sudden, he decided to change because you walked past the basketball court. And they laughing and, ha, ha, girl, you crazy. And she like, whatever, because you don't be on the phone when we be on the phone. And they like, all right, and you know, if this is what you want to do, go for it. I'm just telling you, dude got a reputation. You, you probably is getting a good side of him and so many other girls that he's trying to sleep with. They didn't seem that same side, but you grown, do what you going to do. So fast forward, she ignoring her friends and she's still like feeling him. She really feeling him to where she thinking, you know what? I'm going to just, I think I'm going to sleep with him. I know it's foul because I got the, you know, package or whatever. But if we, if we use a condom, you know, I ain't got to tell him. And she debating, is it right? Is it wrong? She like, shoot, he probably got something anyway. How they say, saying his reputation is, I mean, my little stuff won't even be noticeable. You know, whatever. But see, thing is, okay, so they get together, they go out to eat, it was perfect. He like, you know, you feeling a, a nightcap? And she like, yeah, I mean, I think it's time. You know, we've been getting to know each other long enough. We didn't pass the phase of just playing around. If this is what you wanna do, I'm down. And she like, you got a condom? And he like, baby, do I got a condom? I keep a condom, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, you know, you know, eat that. You know, she like, boy, you crazy. You really trying to do that? He like, yeah, that's what I'm on. And I don't know if she just didn't care for him, even though she was acting like she did. She let him do that and some. The whole condom got thrown out the roof. The only thing she could live on is a prayer because she hoping that he ain't get it. So... He go, you know, he sleep with her. They do their thing. He go back to his friends and he like, oh, guess what I did? Hey, so they like, you did. You did. I got her. I told you I was going to get her. And they, yeah, yeah, run me that money. They all, oh, you know how boys get when they together. Locker room talk, all that stupid stuff. And they high five and they, oh, yeah, let's give him his paper. He the man. He the goat. He the real one out here. Blah, blah, blah. All this. But see, they didn't realize that he... He was really feeling her. Like, she put it on him. He like, I mean, it was a bit. I'm going to take that money, though. But I really like her. I might just make her my main one, my main squeeze, you know, my bottom be and all this stupid stuff. And so, he still had his side girls or whatever. But he will always go back to her, sleep with her. She was feeding him, doing little stuff for him. And then she happened to hear about the bit. She was, oh at one of her friends' house, and one of the friend's brothers happened to be one of the dude that she messing with, friend. And he on the phone, like, can you believe he got her? Yeah, my sister friend. Yeah, he really got her. Yeah, I had to pay that $10. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to get her, though. You know, she out of his league, but he must got some good game. I'm about to start taking notes. And she like, the more she listening to the conversation, she realized he talking about her. And she like, oh, okay. So he got me out here. All right. So I was a bit. I got something for him. I was a I was a bit. So what she started to do, y'all, little did he know, a lot of times that she kept to herself, she had a lot of stuff going on. She was into witchcraft. She was into voodoo, all this stuff that she didn't heard about, tarot cards and stuff. She like, he think he want me now? I'm about to make sure this dude really want me. She started putting her menstruation stuff in his food. You know, everybody that heard about the spaghetti, she didn't already made them spaghetti, but she started putting it in, you know, while she cooking tacos. Put a little bit in this taco meat. The whole time she got that package, y'all. She putting it in everything, little by little. 
little by little. Like, oh, you want to play me? <laughs> now he ain't going to be able to get rid of me spiritually because she trying to put a, you know, put some voodoo on him. But then she like, when he find out he going to get it, he going to want to be with me because we both got it. This is what she thinking. So dude started feeling kind of sick over time. It was just real, you know, subtle at first, you know, stomach hurting and got diarrhea and headaches. And he, he talking to his friends like, man, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's the weather change or I've been eating something wrong or I don't know. I got to see, I got to go to the doctor. And his friends like, dude, you be with a lot of chicks. You sure you ain't got no STDs or something? And he like, I mean, I ain't burning or nothing. I, when I, you know, I ain't itching or nothing. But I am going to have to make a doctor's appointment because something is just not right. So he make the doctor appointment and he go in and he explain it to his doctor, um, you know, his history sexually, all the stuff he into, all the girls he got. And, you know, he ain't itching. He ain't got no kind of symptoms that, you know, no nasty stuff going on down there. He just ain't been feeling right. He ain't been feeling like himself. And she like, just for the sake of it, let's just. Let's just do some urine tests. Let's do some blood work. Let's just get that out of there just to make sure you good. He like, well, we can do all that, but I'm telling you, I'm good. I get a checkup every time I'm with somebody. I, you know, I, I'm I'm good on my my chart. You can check my my chart. And she like, no, no, no. I'm not saying that it is a STD, but I just want to make sure all your levels, your blood work is good. You got enough vitamins and everything is showing up good on your chart. And he like, well, we could do that because I know everybody I mess with and. Sure. They all been checked. They good. We good. And she's like, so everybody you been with, you use a condom? I mean, I use them with all my other girls. I got a main girl. I don't, but she, you know, she ain't burning. We ain't, she ain't said she got nothing. She like, but do you know her history though? He like, I ain't feel a need to. She ain't out here. Like she a good girl. I got a good girl. I mean, I was the hoe, you know, I was the one out here in the streets with all these ladies. I ain't never heard nothing about her. As far as I know, I'm the only dude she's sleeping with. I mean, she she my main chick. She ain't my only chick, but she my main chick. She's like, but you don't know. No, you know what? We ain't even got to talk about this because I know what it is. She good. Just take that test, run that test, and everything going to be fine. I just probably got a stomach bug or a virus or something, you know. So he take the test. He leave. He go back and he, you know, he go home. He call his homeboy. Like, I just went to the doctor because, like I said, I ain't feeling right. Something ain't right. And he like, dude, you sure she ain't poisoning you or something? And he like, why would you think she poisoning me? Why would she have a reason to poison me? I mean, streets talk. How you know that she don't know that you out here having other females? You whispering all these sweet nothings in her ear. She might have heard through the grapevine that you got other chicks out here and said, Sure, I'm finna get one back over. Two can play that game. You no, know, she ain't crazy. She ain't crazy. But you sure you don't want to just put some like cameras up or something? He like, why do I gotta go that extreme, dude? You ain't yourself. You you ain't got no energy. I mean, we on a basketball court. You running up and down the court like you about 300, 400 pounds. You healthy, dude. What is going on? Something ain't right. I just might have a stomach bug, man. Chill out. I got blood work done. Let me see how the blood work come back. So it's about a good two weeks later. He just keep feeling just awful. And he's starting to think like, man, maybe she is poisoning me. You know, I be with my other chicks, but she she the only one I let really feed me. She the one I just like laying it down morning, afternoon, night. Something, something ain't right. So the test come back. Y'all, that test positive. He got that package, that three-letter word. And he like, what the thing going on? I know this ain't get this to me. I know this ain't get this to me. Oh, hell no. So he go over there and he banging on the door. <clears throat> open this door. Open this door right now, right now. And she like, oh, my God, what's going on? But in the back of her mind, she know what it is because she know what she been doing. And she opened the door. She she trying to stay calm. She like, hey, how you doing, baby? And he like, no, I don't how you do, don't, don't, how you doing, baby me? Like, you, you know what you did. And she like, what, what did I do? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And he like, you know what you did? You gave me that package. You gave me that package. She like, is you sure it was me? 
And he like, what you mean? I'm not sure you. I know who I've been messing with. She said, that there, right there. You know who you've been messing with. Have you just been messing with me? Uh, I mean, I had my people. No, am I the only female you're messing with? Well, I, no, you the only female that I've been with lately. You the only one I've been with. And the other chicks that I was messing with, they ain't got nothing. They ain't got, they showed me they my chart. You the only one that ain't showed me nothing. Well, since we on that subject, yes. Yes, I do have that package. I have it. And I had it for a long time. And I wasn't even trying to talk to you, but you just kept coming on. And I was going to tell you until I overheard your friend at my friend's house talking about how I was a bet. So you, you want to play with me? You want to play with people's emotions? So I start playing with you. So you deliberately gave me the package? Yes, I did. <laughs> he going crazy. Next thing you know, he picked up the closest vase next to the TV and just bashed her in the head. And he just didn't realize. He just couldn't stop. Bitch, <laughs> you just gave me an early death sentence, but now you got to... <laughs> and he just hitting her and going crazy. And it's just blood splattering everywhere. And then he just he just stopped like, yeah, you got, you can't be playing with people like that. You shouldn't have. And then he just uh, uh, calming down. He looked around. It's just blood everywhere. And he just realized... He just killed this girl. The moral of the story is, y'all, don't play with people. Don't waste their time. Females, don't try to get even. Don't try to one-up nobody. Let it all go. And with that, I'm out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Before we start this video, I want to give a full disclaimer, okay? Back when I was in prison, I was grimy and I was a slime ball and I had to do what I had to do to survive in prison. And I know, I know a lot of people gonna be like, oh, Dante, you was all cold. No, please understand the things that goes on in prison will not make sense on what goes on out here in the real world. When the two worlds collide, it just will not make no sense. Either you're going to be a predator or you're going to be prey. And before we start this video, I just want y'all to know I was not, okay? I was not going to be prey. Let's get to it. Ah, shit. Here we go again. So Al come over there. He like, Dante, we got another one. I'm like, got another what? He like, you know, we got a white boy. I'm like, white boy? He like, yeah. So for the people that don't know what's going on, Everybody was wondering what was Dante prison hustle. Well, my prison hustle was extortion. So what what we would do is that Al will get word from a guard if we get in like a chomo or somebody that violated a woman or a child in a pot. And how we would do it is once that dude get in his cell, either I'll run up in his cell and break it down to him like, listen. I know what you went here for. Don't nobody else know what you went here for. But the word will get out real quick. And somebody going to run up in here and try to do something to you bad. And, I'll be, and then I'll be like, listen, but I can protect you. Now, as I'm breaking this down to this chomo or whatever, Al and Homicide or Al and Tar T will run up in the cell as we talking with that thing out, with that sword of justice out. And then I'll pull out my sword of justice and I'll bag them down out the cell. So now I'm looking like a superhero to this dang chomo. So he looking at me like I'm God. So I tell him to bag up like, move, move, get back, get back. Go toward the edge of the, at, at the um, end of the cell. Go over there towards the end of the cell. Go over there by the toilet. So... It'll look like that, you know, I'm tussling with these two cats and protecting him. All along, we all in on this, right? This is the extortion tactic right here. This is the this is military mind games grade A being displayed right here. So I'll be like, man, watch out, y'all. Watch out. You, this is my white boy. Y'all ain't going to do nothing to him. They like, no, we going to get him. We going to get him. We going to kill him. We going to kill him. So he over there 
terrified. He don't know what's going on. All he know is three black dudes in the cell, one black dude trying to protect them, and the other two trying to get at them. So I eventually chased him out the cell, right? So I give him about 30 seconds to cool off, and then I come right back in there, right? And be like, listen, I, I can't be doing this for free, man. I told you, this is the wild, wild west. This is the jungle. Cats are here. They're going to try to get at you, man. As you just seen, I protected you. He would here be like, yo, thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Uh, psh, thank you, brother. Thank you. I'm, 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 if it, I'm, what, what can I, I'm like, listen, take this out. Just calm down. Listen, do you got anybody out there? Like you got a wife, um, a son, a daughter, an auntie, an uncle, a mom and daddy out there that uh, put money on your books or whatever. He like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I got a wife. I'm like, well, check this out. Do she got cash app? Yeah, yeah, she got cash app. All right, check this out, man. Because you ain't going to make it in here. You're not going to make it. If you go tell the guards what's going on, the guards is dirty in there trying to take your life, too. So I'm telling you, they in on all of this. So he be like, oh, thank you for looking out. I'm like, well, check this out. This is how this going to go. I need for you to call your wife. I'm about to go get my phone. I'm about to go. You call your wife and let her know to send $300 to this cash app right here, all right? And I'm going to need that, like, every week, like, every Friday. Like, clockwork, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that. And he like, oh, well, uh, well she, she's on disability, but um, I, I'm going to call my mama, too, because she got money. I'm like, oh, she do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then I walk off, and I go to my cell, and I go get that phone. So then I go back in the cell when I'm like, listen, all right, call your mama. And well, my mama don't really got cash up. She's kind of old. I'm like, well, listen, you gonna have to, you gonna have to figure it out. Get on the phone, call your wife, call whoever you need to call, and you need to make this happen right here. Here go my cash up right here. Now listen, if it if it ain't done by by the count when we about to get locked down, I can't help you. I can't save you. So he's like, all right, all right, okay, let, let me get on it, let me get on it. So then I leave out the cell, and I'm like, hey, I'm about to go talk to some of my homeboys to make sure don't nobody mess with you, all right? So then I leave out. Then you got Allen Homicide, a tall T down there. And I'm like, yeah, man, he, he spooked, he spooked. Now, this is, now listen, I know before y'all try to say, oh, Dante, you was a, man, listen, it's just, it is survival of the fittest survival of the fittest man it's uh, the prey the, the weak get rolled on the strong only the strong survive and you know i didn't really have nobody looking out for me and a hey, prison is prison see people that ain't been locked up before y'all wouldn't get it y'all wouldn't understand that there's things that you have to do in there that you might not do out here in the real world, man. The rules is different. You know, penitentiary rules are in full effect. And well, they was in full effect on the Chomo. So, you know, I go to them. I'm like, all right, y'all, check this out. He going to do it. He he getting on the phone. I don't, they're like, how much he going to get? How much he going to send? I don't know yet. He said he might can get about 300. So, you know, we're going to split that three ways. No 100 for you, 100 for me, 100 for you. Right? All right, bet. So, that's how we was programming. So, I gave him about 10 minutes. And I peeked my head back in the cell like, hey, you uh, we, we, you straight? He like, yeah, I um, I got about 200. I'm like, okay, you got 200? All right. Um, see who else you can talk to because I need at least three. I need at least three. He like, okay, just um, g g give me a couple more minutes, man. I'm, I'm going to see what I can do. Then as I was walking off, he said, hey. I said, what's up? He like, th th thanks, man, for having my back. Now, let me tell y'all something. I looked at him and gave him a nod. What he don't understand is that, yo, this is a hustle. Now, I said that I can protect you. But what I really meant was that I'm not you're paying me not for me to put hands on you which he is definitely going to figure out real soon because i can't stop you remember when i tell y'all i can't tell another man how to program see the penitentiary rules goes as forward if you somebody that got bad charges and the charges that he got well 
his charges well i i can't really say because i want this video to get flagged but his charges was let's just say he ended up taking advantage of somebody that was under the age of hmm let's say eight years old that's all i'm gonna say about that and he was convicted they found dna evidence and all that okay so he was dead to rights. So, and, and and before you penitentiary cats get out here talking about, oh, Dante, you was protecting. Now listen to the dang story. This was, this was my prison hustle, right? So he had confirmed it. So he, I went back in. I'm like, so you got, he like, yeah, okay. I got you $400. I got you $400. I'm like, all right, cool. Okay, bet. So I'm like, all right, check this out. Don't talk to nobody. It matter of fact, you going to be around me and my homeboys, all right? And he like, oh, okay, what you mean? Oh, oh, I forgot to tell y'all. Al and Tar T ran in there with bandanas on. Like they had like they white tees covering their face. So he didn't really take a good look at their face at all. But, you know, Tar T is really tall, so he kind of stand out with dread. So remember that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm about to walk you around and, you know, let people know who you is and that you with me. And he like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So then I was like, hold on. Let me give me the phone right quick. So I'm checking my cash app and it's on there. The $400 on there, right? Now, listen, usually, and I'm going to say usually, usually, I can keep this scam going on for about two or three weeks before other cats end up getting wind of it. And then, it's, well, there's when the beat downs come in, right? And they want to get in on the plate. But then, the, but the problem is, you know, you mess with my money. You know, I can't let you, you know, if you get a cat that feel like he want to punch on them, which rightfully so, because what dude is in there for, but you can't punch on them too bad because now you mess with my money now. You know what I'm saying? Dude already got his time. And, you know, I, I need me. I Now, when the time that he stop producing, then y'all can have him. Which does happen when I'm applying pressure too hard on the cap. And, you know, he sending his people sending me a thousand dollars a week and. You know, it start coming up shorts and cats that really want to put them vice grips on them. You, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm i like, hey, if you can't pay, I can't protect you. It's just, just what it is. So, I he walking around with me and I'm introducing him to cats. And, you know, they like, oh, I, I say, this is my white boy right here. Y'all, he good on you know, he, he good. Now, everybody that I'm talking to, they already know what's going on. They already know how I program. So that just giving them the thought like, okay, when he get done with him, we going to take him. So we walking around the day room. I'm showing him who, who and what is what, telling him what he can and what he can't do. Don't be telling nobody your name and where you're from and what you went here for and this and that. Then, you know, I got him locked down. I got him in my Charlotte's web. So now I'm going to say maybe three days ago by after this situation took place. So you got this dude named Frog, right? Frog was this dude from Flint, Michigan. And he was the type of dude, like, he didn't respect the program. Matter of fact, one of his sisters was violated some years ago. And while he was locked up, he just, he couldn't do nothing about it. And that's one of the treacherous things of being locked up. If something happened to one of your family members out there in the real world, and then you hear about it, and you can't do nothing about it because you locked up, that's one of them big tra tragedies. And, you know, Frog sister got violated. So Frog, every time we get like a chomo inside of the pod, you know, he want to get at him. And he don't really respect that, you know, that we extorting him and he just want to put hands on him. I guess he he, he want to put vengeance on I guess he just want to get revenge for what his sister on any chomo. And that was conflict between, you know, me and my people and him. But, you know, it is what it is. You suppo you're never supposed to protect a chomo. But, like I said, 
when you out there making money off of them, it is what it is, right? So a couple days ago by and fraud got wind of, you know, about dual charges. So he come to me and he like, hey, D, look, I already know what y'all got going on, but you know, you know what I got going on. And this is what I do. And I'm like, look, check this out. This is what we going to do. How about I break you off maybe $30 just to, just, to, just to hold off till I get everything I can possibly get up out of this dude. He like, all right, man, look, you, you got a couple days, bro. I'm like, all right, look, give me three days. I'm going to break you off. At the store day, you got them, right? He like, all right. So he walk off. So I go to the cell. I'm like, hey, listen, man, here's a list because I have to go to work, y'all. I said, here's a list right here that I'm going to need when you go to the store. I need this, this, that, that, that. He like, but I already gave you, you know, um, money and stuff. I said, yeah, I know, but I still need stuff. And I can only get a certain amount of stuff. I, I think we can only get like $200 worth of items around that time. So, you know, I had to get some items from him off of his slip too. So I gave him this list. You know, it wasn't really nothing. It was a couple of honey buns, a couple of Pepsis, a couple of summer sausages, you know, a six pack of them shrimp ramen noodles, you know, a little light stuff. So I gave him the list. He was like, man, I don't know if I can get all this because I got to get stuff for myself. I'm, I'm like, hey, man, hold up. First, hold on. Come here, man. Let, let's talk over here right quick. He's like, yeah, I'm like, hey, let, let me tell you something, dog. Didn't I stop them two dudes from coming in there and taking your life on your first day here? He like, yeah, I, I understand that. And I'm real grateful. I'm like, man, listen, man, you know what type of charges you got, man. And if word get out there, you that's the last thing you got to worry about is some goddamn cookies and ice cream, dog. He like, man, uh, uh, all right, bro. Uh, uh, all right. So I'm like, me, I'm like, you know what? Matter of fact, you know what? Stay tuned for part two, y'all. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all going to love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the cash app. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Fellas, please pay attention. Do not get on these dating websites and try to use these women or you're going to end up like me. Let's get into this crazy story. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Fellas, I need for y'all to listen up, especially you young cats that might be out here on these dating websites trying to meet these older women to live off of. Well, this is what my story is all about. So... I got on this website called POF. That's plenty of fish, right? So, actually, my homeboy Al, y'all already know who Al is. That's my ride or die. That's my right hand man, right? He come to me one day and he like, hey, Dante, you ever heard of this thing called plenty of fish? I'm thinking this is a club or something because at this time we was living in Pontiac, Michigan and like a week before that, he was like, hey, let's go to this club called Tonic. Man, I got some Tonic stories for y'all, man. When I say Tonic was that, anybody from that area of Pontiac and them outskirts, y'all know exactly what was going on up in Tonic. It had three floors. You had, never mind, we getting, we, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, so I'm like, no, what what is this? He like, it's a dating website. And I'm like, 
Man, come on, man. You already know how I get down. What? I don't need to get on no dang internet to meet nobody. He like, no, no, it's not like that. It's like, I know you ain't afraid to talk to no chick. I mean, we all know that, you know. But he, he like, it's more easier. You know, all you got to do is create a profile, say some good things about yourself, you know, put one of your pictures up, and, you know, you can just browse. And, man, look at this. So he showed me his phone, and uh, he showed me the whole get down. So I'm looking at it and I said, oh, so you can just really like just talk to chicks? And he like, well, they gotta you can you gotta write them and then they'll write you back. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm looking, I said, oh, God dang, so I can literally be at my crib just writing chicks all day and just meet up with them. He like, yeah, basically. I'm like, oh man, that's that's easy. That's light. Right? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna check it out. So about two or three days ago by and I'm laying on my couch. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and check this thing out. So I download the app. And I put my profile in there. And then I'm looking at it. I'm scrolling through girls' pics. And I'm like, man, this is dope. I'm like, okay, okay. She killed. She killed. So I write this one. Shit. I was like, yo, my name Dante. And then I said, wait a minute. No, I don't want these chicks know my real name. So I went back and changed my name to Travis. So I'm like, all right. I said, okay, cool. So I wrote this chick, right? And I said, yo, my name is Travis. And, you know, I think that you cute and would you want to go on a date or something? I didn't get no reply back. So I'm, so I'm sitting there like, God dang, I thought this was like an instant message. But I guess if the person not on the app or they don't got their notifications on, they ain't gonna get it or whatever unless they go into the app or whatever so i'm like all right whatever so because I, I waited for like five minutes to that person to respond but they didn't so i said all right whatever so i just start writing this anybody that looked at attracted to me right so then i came across this cougar this woman was like 41 42 years old but she was cute so i'm like let me reach out to her. Let me let me see what's up with this, right? So I put the regular spell. I'm like, hey, my name is Travis, and you know, I think that you are gorgeous, and I would like to take you out on a date and this and that, y'all. So after I sent the message, like 30 seconds will go, and I get a reply. And this is my first reply off this app. So it's her, and she say, how you doing, sweetie? I might be a little bit too old for you. So then I'm like, man, that ain't nothing. So all right. I'm like, no, nah, it ain't about the age. It's about the experience. So then she wrote me back, and she was like, oh, are you funny? You seem like you a baby. And I'm like, man, I'm not no baby. So then she was like, hey, give me a call. So she left her number. So I instantly wrote the number down. Then I called. I'm like, hello? She was like, is this Travis? I said, yeah, this is Travis. She was like, oh, okay, this blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to put her name out there because y'all know Dante never kiss and tell. And for you cats out there that might be talking about, oh, you kissing and telling right now. No, I'm not because I'm not giving her name out. All right. So anyway, so she like, so how old are you? And I'm like, I lie. I told her I was 25. Knowing I wasn't 20, I think I was like 20 or Maybe even 19 to come to think of. No, no, I'm lying. Yo, I was 21, 20 or 21. So, but I told her I was 25 though. So she was like, man, I got kids older than you and all this and that. I'm like, listen, man, listen, I, I, and back then y'all Dante had a little game. So I said, listen, I, I'm going to be real. I know that man, you probably would not be together, but I mean, you can have friends, right? She was like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, it's good to have friends. So I'm like, matter of fact, what you doing today? She was like, well, I'm actually about to get off of work and I don't got nothing to do. And I said, well, uh, you want to come pick me up? She was like, pick you up? I'm like, yeah. She was like, you ain't got no car? I'm like, nah, I'm saving up for a car. She was like, uh, see, that's you already starting off wrong. I'm like, man, listen, 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 listen. Sometimes, you know, things happen. And she's like, and that's what she's like, hold on. You 25 years old and you ain't got no car. I said, wait, wait, hold on. I never said I ain't got no car. My car is in the shop. So let me, I'm sorry, fellas, but I got to do this. I'm sorry. I know y'all going to kill me in the comment section. But if you got your stuff together now, y'all going to appreciate what I'm talking about. But, fellas, have y'all ever used this line on a chick? My, my, 
when when she asks you, do you got a car or whatever, and you hit her with, oh, my car in the shop. Y'all ever did that? Let me know in the comment section. Because I know I ain't the only one, all right? So I tell her, she like, oh, it's in the shop. I'm like, yes, yeah, in the shop. I said, come on, man, I'm 25. What you mean I ain't got no wheels? She was like, okay, okay, that's cool. So I was like, I gave her my address. Yo, she pulled up in an affinity right now. When I say this woman looked at every bit of what her profile picture looked, this woman was banging. So now that I'm super grown and I'm in my mid-30s, I'm kind of thinking back to see why was this woman even single? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm Now that I'm, I'm really thinking about that. So when she pulled up, right, she told me she was outside. She pulled up and she like got out the car and was standing like in front of her car. Man, this woman was Bad. I'm talking about out cold, right? She was like five, six. That's whew. anyway. So I go out there and I'm looking at. Her. I'm like, man, and, and check this out, y'all. All when I seen her, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. The only, the only thing that came across my mind is us, you know, going to a place and get intimate, like me picking the roof off her feet and, you know, doing it frog style, right? Y'all hit that like button and stop playing military mind games. This one, I was 19, 20 years old, so y'all chill out. So she, I, so I walk up to her, she was like, Travis? I said, yeah. So I, she reached out for a hug and I instantly got, see, she tried to give me one of them church hugs, but nah, Dante don't play like that. I turned directly into her and grabbed her. Right. So she was like, OK. So I was like, she was like, so where are we going? I'm like, wherever you want to go. So she was like, you got some money. I said, yeah, I got some money. I think I had like two hundred dollars on me or something. So she was like, all right, where you want to go? So I was like, anywhere you want to go. So she was like, well, let's just go for a ride right quick. So she hand me her keys and I'm like, OK, OK. So she got on the passenger side. I was like, you want me to drive? She was like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, this, okay, see, check this out. This woman wanted to be led. She wanted to be controlled. So, you know, Dante, I got on that driver's side, and I told, we was in an affinity too, y'all. So we drive, well, I'm driving, and, you know, she just looking at me. She was like, oh, my God, you just so young. And you not no 25, is you? I'm like, man, I am 25. She like, you, man, you are a baby. I, I was like, listen. It ain't nothing babyish about me at all. So she was like, okay, okay. So she was telling me, like, what you like to do, what you like to eat, and you know, the regular stuff. What's your favorite color and all this and that. You know, we just, we just casually talking. So I'm like, where you live at? Now, I ain't going to say where she live at, y'all, but she, in a, she had a condo down there in West Bloomfield. And anybody knows West Bloomfield, you got that cake, right? So... She was like, how we finna go to my house? I'm like, you ain't got no kids. She said, listen, my kids is fully grown and I don't, don't nobody live with me. Yo, so we end up going to her house, right? Where condo, man, this woman, man, she, she, she had that bread. So I'm asking, I'm like, what do you do? She was like, well, I'm an artist. I'm like, like you a singer or something? She was like, no, like I paint. I said, oh, okay. So she, like this real successful artist, and she was like, you know, I asked her, I was just asking a question, like money questions. I'm like, how, you own this? She was like, well, I spent 3500 a month. I said, what, 3500 on this? It, it, it was well worth it. It looked really good, but, you know, 3500 I, shoot, I was making a month at that time, maybe 2500 after taxes. And you paying 3500 a month? I'm like, God dang. So she was like, yeah, you know, I just sell art and this and that. And, you know, I'm an artist and this and that. So she was like, um, do you drink? I was like, no, nah, not really. So she was like, oh, okay. So she's sitting on the couch. I'm sitting on the couch. And we just, just staring at each other. And I was like, listen, I'm going to be real. I... I really like you. And she was like, okay, that's cute. So then I was like, can I get another hug? And she was like, boy, you know what you really want. And I'm like, what? And so she grabbed me. Now, 
due to YouTube policies and, you know, what I can say and what I can't say, you know, we end up, well, let's put it this way. You remember when I said, when I first seen her in real life, I was thinking about frog style. So, well, we gon' do y'all remember on, on Baby Boy when Melvin picked up Jody Mama and they was doing what they was doing? Well, that's what we was doing, all right? So I ended up getting into the bedroom, right? And I put on a bed and straight spread eagle style. Y'all know how I do it. So after about maybe about 15 minutes of us going at it like battle cats, you know, I'm tired now. I'm tired. But she want to keep going. And I'm like, man, I ain't like, can I rest? But she just anyway. So at this point, y'all, I don't know what it was. Oh, oh, I do know what it was. I didn't know this about myself, but whenever I would meet a chick that I think that I like or might like, and, and if I would be intimate with that person, I wouldn't, it wasn't on no dog and stuff, me and being no, me, me being a dog or nothing. But I guess it's one of them things that I have to build a connection with you before we get intimate because then I feel like, ah, eh, I'm not really interested no more. And I say this again, and I was not being a dog, but fellas out there, this might be one of them things that y'all need to think about that when you be, when you meet a woman that you want to be with or interested in, do not try to be intimate with her like on the first day, on the first night. Cause I was one of them type of brothers that, you know, it, it just happened. I was out there looking forward to like, okay, I got to get me some on the first date. No, it wasn't nothing like that. 99% of the time it just happened that way. And now that I figured that out about myself years later, like when I met my wife, we didn't mess around for like four months. So, and that was off the, off the strength of me knowing like, I really want to be at this person but I need to remain celibate because I know if I mess with her, there's a huge chance that I might lose interest. So keep that in mind. So I'm laying there and I'm like, you know what? She just kept messing with me. Then it got back up. So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and put her in bed, right? So I just locked in, missionary style. And, you know, I, I put her to bed, had a hollering, screaming, trying to run from it the whole nine, right? So I end up, putting her to i ended up putting her to bed right so while she was sleep, i'm talking about she was knocked out so i get up and i go jump in the shower you know the crazy thing about it though i didn't come with no change of clothes so i done got in the shower put on back dirty clothes ain't this crazy so she knocked out when i say she like comatose so i end up you know being a young thief that i was back then y'all already know my history back then i was a i was a criminal so i said shoot she got all this man let me i start going through her dressing drawers her her room was huge and like her 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 drawers and stuff like on the other side of the bedroom like around a curve and she had a walk-in closet man this woman had jewelry diamonds there's rings all type of stuff but i didn't totally clear i took like a, a couple diamond earrings here and there, maybe a bracelet. You know, I seen like $300 right there. I don't put that in the pocket. Then I left. I just left, right? So I'm walking and I end up catching, getting the taxi cab or whatever. And this is how stupid, this is how stupid i was okay now this is part one y'all now we about to get into the crazy stuff of part two so when i got home i'm thinking like okay yeah i just hit a lick i know i can get about five ten thousand off this jewelry that i just got off this chick right so now i'm, I'm just chilling and i call al i'm like hey al hey i need for you to take me to the pawn shop he like all right i'm on my way so Al had to come from Flint. So it took him about maybe about 40 minutes to get there. So he like, man, what's going on? I'm like, man, I just hit this lick on this older chick that I met off that website. He was like, man, that's crazy. I said, yeah. So we had to the bottom. He like, so like, what happened? I was like, man, I put her to bed and I just, you know, I took 
took her stuff. And he like, oh, man, that's crazy. He was like, man, you should have just kept her, man. You know how much money you could have got out of her if you would have just kept her? I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't even think about that. So we get to the pawn shop. They end up shortchanging me, of course, this stuff. You know, back then, I didn't know the value of, of diamonds and stuff like that. They end up giving me 1500 for all of it. So... Man, him go to Great Lakes Crossing Mall, and we up there chilling. We up there buying shoes, clothes, cologne, and all that, right? So we at the food court. Now, she writing me, and I'm looking at my, I'm like, man, what the heck? She, she was like, where you at? And you need to bring me back my stuff and this and that. And she calling me and calling me. I was like, who is that? I said, this her right here. So... Al got the phone. He like, hey, man, stop calling my phone. He hugged the phone up. She just kept calling, kept calling. Then she uh, left a message talking about, I'm going to call the police and this and that. You stupid. You done forgot that I know where you live at and all this and that. And I'm like, oh, dang. She do know where I stay at. See, let me tell you all. This when I was young and super dumb. Like, dude, you going to hit a lick on this chick and she picked you up from your apartment but then i thought about it she don't know exactly the apartment that i came out of but she know the area like she was right there in the parking lot so it wouldn't be too hard for her to you know if she laid on me she could figure out where where i came out of where i live at so i thought about it i'm like dang that is right so i'm like oh man what how i'm gonna play this out so Al was like, shoot, man, just come to Flint for a couple of days. Just lay low for about a week. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I'm like, all right, take me to the crib. So I had Al park around the corner from the apartment complex. So then I I get going and, you know, I, I'm looking like every car that passed by, I'm thinking it might be an undercover cop or I'm thinking it might be her people or her, right? So I'm, I'm just, man, my anxiety was out the roof. So I ended up getting inside my apartment, man. So I'm packing up some clothes and stuff, pack my video game up. And as soon as I open the door, man, guess who's standing there? She's standing right there. She was like, oh, you, th you thought I wasn't going to find out where you stayed at? You thought I wasn't going to find out? I said, man, what you doing? So she kind of like pushed me in the house, in my own house, because I'm, I'm walking out and she coming in. And I'm like, man, what you doing? She's like, where is my S? Where is my S? I'm like, man, what you talking about? She like, listen, listen, just give me my back and I will just leave. Just give me my back and I'll just leave. And I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. She was like, I'm not playing with you. I will call the police on your, give me my sh back. And I'm like, listen, man, I don't got your stuff. She was like, so you just really going to F me and just take my stuff? I'm like, listen, I don't know what you're talking about, but I got to go. So she was like, you ain't going nowhere. So I'm like, oh, yes, I am. So I kind of, now listen, y'all, I, I tell y'all all the time, never put your hands on a woman. Y'all know your big Partner Dante, don't play that. But I had to get this woman out of my house. So I grabbed her right by her shoulders. You know, she was way shorter than me. I grabbed her, kind of picked her up gently, and I set her outside the door here and closed my door and locked it as she's punching on me, right? So I ended up just, I'm talking like, man, watch out, watch out, move. So she was like, no, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. I need my money. I need my money. So at this time, you know, people coming out, because she's yelling at this time. And people coming out, looking out the window, like, oh, man, what's going on down there? Right? So now, this wasn't the age of when people put out the cell phones recording, okay? So I ain't have to worry about that. Dante probably would be on World Star or something like that. So she hitting me, talking about, no, you ain't going nowhere. And I had my book bag, you know, the... I had my book bag with me with my stuff in it. So she was like, I'm taking it. So she got to grab that. And I grabbed it back from her. I just kind of shoved her a little bit. And I just took off running. Now, this woman is like in her mid-40s. So she tried to run after me. But she couldn't keep up with me. And then she ended up falling or something like that. And I just took all the way off. So I hurry up and jumped in the car like, Al, go, go, go. So he took off. So here we going up Telegraph Road, about to bust that left off, um, what's the street? I forgot the name of that main street. Then we end up jumping on 
I-75 north to go into Flint, right? So he like, man, what the heck? I said, man, she popped up on me, dude. She she ran up on me in the crib. So she calling me, talking about, oh, I'm going to get you, and this ain't over with. You need to bring me my stuff back and all this and that. I'm going to call the police. And so I'm like, man, this chick is tripping, right? So I'm in Flint, and I go to my sister's house, and I'm crashing over there for about three or four days. So, this chick that's calling me nonstop, threatening me, talking about she going to get her sons to do this and do that to me, and she going to call the police and all this and that, right? So, I end up calling Al and telling him, like, all right, I'm ready to go back to the crib. So, he picked me up, gave him some gas money, we head back down to Pontiac, y'all. Why, when I get there to my apartment, why my front window, living room window is busted out? Oh, yeah. This woman done threw a whole brick through my window. So I'm like, oh, man. And, yeah, I deserved it. I deserved it. I, I, hey, let me ask the fellas a question in the comment section. Have you ever did something so out cold to a woman that she done busted out your windows or put your car on flat or even keyed that car? Let me know in the comment section if that ever happened to you. Now listen, there's one thing of putting my tires on flat cool, but the living room window? Come on, bruh. So, <laughs> so I ended up calling her instantly. I'm like, I called her. She didn't pick up. And I caught her again. She was like, yeah, yeah, we even now. We even now. I'm like, man, come on, man. You ain't have to bust my window. She was like, well, all you have to do is bring me my S back. All you have to do is bring me my S back. And I'm like, man, come on, man. So she was like, well, like I said, we even now. I hope you enjoyed. Um, you you could have got more out of me. But and this and that. And I'm like, listen, I'm, I, I apologize for doing that to you. But my window, she was like, listen, like I said, we even. All right, y'all. That's the end of the story. Now, I want to let y'all know something right quick. It's not cool to use women for money. OK, even when you young. OK, when I was in this one, I was young. And dumb and stupid, okay? I just want to put that disclaimer out there, man. Never use a woman for money. Never use a woman for intimacy. Never you just, just don't use a woman. Always, uh, it, it's cool to get out there and date or whatever, but never go out there with the intentions of, you know, using somebody for their resources because that is not cool. All right, now, I tell y'all all the time, Dante can never tell another man how to program. Or I can't tell a woman how to program because some of you women be out there using men for their money, too. We ain't going to act like that just as an isolated incident between men, right? But anyway, if y'all enjoyed this story, make sure y'all hit that like button and share the video. And with that, I am out. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoy my story time, y'all gonna love my movie that's coming out in October. But I need y'all help. I need y'all help to help me finance this movie. So if you can, put something in the PayPal or put something in the Cash App. And with that, y'all, let's get back to the story. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video, and if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all, I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I just did four years in a penitentiary for you, and you over here sleeping with my pops? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So, dude, come over there. He like, hey, D, man, I need to holler at you for a minute. I'm like, all right, what's up? He like, no, come, come in my cell, bro. I'm like, all right, man. So I go on there. I'm like, what's up, man? He like, listen, bro, I ain't want to say nothing, but I'm, I'm going home. 
I'm like, that's good. He likes, no, but I'm coming back, bro. I'm like, what you mean you coming back? He like, man, dude, man, hold on. So he get up and he go look to his left and he look to his right. And he, I guess he looking to make sure ain't nobody listening. So he come back and he said, down. I'm like, man, what's up, man? He like, man, bro, man. So like I said, I, I'm coming back, bro. I'm like, dude, you trip. I mean, like, what is it? Why why you keep saying you're coming back? I mean, you got parole, man. So many people here want that. He's like, man, bro, take a seat, man. I'm about to tell you something. And this is why I'm coming back. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, so my dad, dude, he, he been sleeping with my girl, man. I'm like, man, get out of here. How you know that? He like, man, bro, trust me. Trust me. He been sleeping with her. I'm like, well, I mean, like, did somebody write you and tell you that? He said, bro, no. I heard it with my own two ears. Like, I heard it. I'm like, okay, like, what's going on? He was like, you remember the other night when you let me use your cell phone? I'm like, yeah. He said, yeah, I was talking to her all night, and I heard another, I heard a man voice in the background talking. I'm like, so, I mean, what you mean? He like, yeah, it was my pops. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what's the issue? He like, dude, why is my pops there for the last three nights at 11, 12 o'clock at night? Like, what what are you doing? Like, why are you over there? Right? So I'm like, well, that, ain't, that don't mean they sleeping together. He like, no, bro. Every time I ask her, like, who was that? And she had played dumb, like, she don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm tripping. I clearly heard his dang voice, man. I know my pop's voice. I said, well, maybe it was the TV, uh, or, you know, or somebody that sound like it. He's like, bro, it's not, because when I called my stepmama, she said he wasn't there. So when I would talk to my stepmama, she was like, yeah, he'd be leaving around, like, 10 o'clock at night, and he'd come home around 1 o'clock. And, you know, I just know my pop's. So, you know, they got to be messing around, bro. I'm like, well, I mean, he like, come on, Dante. Like, be real with me, man. Come on, man. I trust your word, man. So you mean to tell me, like, come on. I'm like, man, I'm really trying to get him the benefit out of the doubt. But, I mean, let me ask you all a question, right? Do y'all think Pops laying wood to... His girl, let me know in the comment section, all right? But y'all got to let me know now in the comment section before we finish this story, right? Oh, by the way, y'all, let me know where y'all are from, okay? Right now, y'all, I'm in Detroit, the great 313. So y'all let me know where y'all are from and let me know it's Pops Lady Wood to do, girl. So I'm like, all right, look, look, check this out. I'm going to let you use the phone again tonight. Right, but you know, just this straight acts are like, yo, is is you and my pops doing something or what? He like, man, if she like my girl, she she ain't gonna tell me. Yeah, that's a stupid question, man, because she was already denying that he was there in the first place. So why would she tell me the truth? I'm like, yeah, you got a good point. So I'm like, all right, so what are you gonna do when you get out? He like, bro. I'm, I'm putting it, I'm putting him in the dirt. I said, you going to take your pops out. He like, yeah, bro. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. When you say you putting him in the dirt, what you going to knock him out? No, man. Like I said, I'm coming back here. I'm about to do life. I'm like, over a woman? He like, no, bro, it's the principle behind it. I said, listen, bro. Man, forget all that principle talk, man. That I mean, so many of the women out there, obviously, if she really doing this, she ain't the one for you, man. You don't want to come back up in here with us, man. So you got parole. You know how many dudes in here that get a couple fingers? I would give my, my, let's see, I would give my pinky toe to get up out of here, man. Don't, man, there's too many women out there, man. Don't sweat that. And he like, yeah, but I'm just saying, man, this my pops, though. Why would he do this to me, man? I'm like, I don't know, bro, but you asked for my advice. He said, actually, I didn't ask for your advice, D. I, I just wanted to vent and, you know, let you know, like, 
when I get up out of here next week, I'm going to give you all my property because I know I'm coming back. I'm like, well, my advice to you, even though you say you don't want it, is don't do it, bro. Don't do not do it. It ain't, it ain't worth it, man. He like, all right, man, whatever. So I get up. I'm like, so ain't nothing I can tell you. He like, ain't nothing you can tell me, bro. So I said, all right. So I'll leave out the cell. We're going to fast forward to a week and a couple days later. He get paroled. So I end up calling him two days after he get paroled, right? Because I honestly done forgot about, you know, what he told me. But I end up calling him. And I he picked up the phone. I'm like, what's up, bro? What, what What's going on with you? How you enjoying that freedom? He like, man, I ain't going to lie. I'm in this hotel, and um, I got a couple strippers in here with me. But, man, hey, I'm I'm still coming back, bro. I'm like, man, you still on that? He like, yeah, bro, man. It's I, I ain't even been home. I ain't, I ain't even going home. Cause I'm so fired up, man. I'm so fired up. I, I ain't even been home, bro. I'm like, listen, man. Just, just, just chill, bro. You like, come on, man. You, come on, you, come on. Just, nah, I don't do that, man. He like, man, D. I, I'm gonna call you back, bro. I'm like, no, nah, don't, don't call back. You know, you. I'm gonna call you. But listen, don't, don't, don't go over there and be on nothing. He like, all right, bro. All right, I'll holler. I said, yo, enjoy them girls for me. Matter of fact, take a couple of pictures of some of them chicks for me. Send me a couple of pictures. He's like, all right, I got you. So I'm like, all right. So I go back to sleep. Now, two days go by, and this is what happened. So apparently, he done went over there to his girl house, right? Around 11 o'clock at night, two days later. Two days after I just talked to this dude. So he go over there, and I guess he come. So I guess uh, his girl live in a on a in a flat, you know, like a one story house. And I guess he got to looking through the windows, and he ain't see nobody. So right when he about to go knock on the front door, you know, to come in, a car coming down the street, and he recognized that it, it's his pop's truck. So he hurry up and duck off on the side of the house right quick. So his pops get out the car, then he go knock on the door, and the girl opened the door. Now, when she opened the door, you know, they like hug each other, and he sees this, so I guess they go to the bedroom. Now, he just looking around, like looking through the windows. Hold on. He looking through the windows, and he see, you know, like, they hit the bedroom. And, well, yeah, his suspicions was all the way right. They was, she was basically on top of him, you know, riding him. So he punched the window. Now, when he punched the window, he broke the window. His fist went in there, and he cut himself, Right. And Pop's like, what the F? And she screamed like, man, what, who, who was that? What's that? And he like, P, you up there F for my Pops? You F for my Pops? And they both getting dressed real fast. His Pop's like, hold on. It ain't like that. It ain't like that. So my homeboy run around the front door and kick the door in. And he go in. Now, he ain't got nothing on him now. He ain't got no gun. He ain't got no knife. He ain't got nothing. So he busts up in there. He Bust up in the room while they putting their clothes on. And he's like, so this how you going to do me, Pops? This how you going to do me? And his mom's like, wait, hold on, hold on, man. This It ain't like that. It, it, it This ain't this ain't that, bro. This ain't this ain't that. He's like, what you mean this ain't that? You ain't fucking my girl, man. Well, like, what you mean this ain't that? She like, come on, man. This is, is, is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. So his pops like, listen, listen, son, I, I just came over here, you know, to, to make sure she was safe. He was like, make her, keeping her safe by effing her, God. That's what you mean, keeping her safe by effing her. He like, son, son, come on, j- just chill out. So he like, you know what, man, I'm not trying to, you know what, I'm not trying to hear that. So he got, he took off on his pops. He got the 
punching on him, right? His dad at first was blocking the punch, and his dad just, I guess, was like, man, forget this. It got to fight back, right? So the girl was like, no, y'all stop. Y'all stop. Please stop. Y'all stop fighting. They fighting hard. Now, Pops is kind of getting the best of them. He done got on, he done put, knocked them down and done, like, pinned them to the ground and got the punching them, like punching them in his face, right? So now my homeboy trying to block the punches, but, you know, Pops landed on him. So the girl ended up jumping on Pops' back and, like, started hitting him, like, get off of him, get off of him. So at this time, Pops ended up throwing the girl off, and I guess when he did that, uh, my homeboy seen the opportunity, and he grabbed his boss because he didn't you know pops still was kind of like he was he was putting on his shorts but his pants was halfway down when my home when my homeboy got the punching on so he ended up grabbing his balls he like oh 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 man hey man let me go let me go so son ended up getting up from off under him still clutching his balls he like oh man let me go I swear to God man you better let me go you better let me go I swear to God man you better let me go and so after all so he ended up like like really really like clutching him so he ended up letting him go and he like you know what I'm out, man. I'm out. I'm 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 done with this. I'm I'm through. I'm done with both of y'all, man. F both of y'all. So he leave out, right? So three days ago by, and I end up calling him. I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? How, how you doing? He like, man. So now he tell me the story of what happened. Okay, I'm like, dang. So I mean, y'all through? I mean, you good or whatever? He like, man, bro. I'm gonna be real, man. I got something and um uh, I'm about to I'm about to go over to his house and I'm about to um I gotta be careful y'all what I'm about to say because I don't want this video getting flagged, but he said I'ma go knock on the door and as soon as he comes to the door, I'm just letting off. I said, come on, bro, don't, don't do that, man. Don't, man, listen, you already got yours off, man. Just leave, just leave that be. He like, man, bro, no, nah, man, I, I can't, bro. I just can't, man. I done seen it with my own two eyes, bro. I said, listen, you already got yours off, man. Just let that be, man. Don't, do not come back here. He like, nah, bro, I'm, I gotta do it. I'm, I'm doing it, bro. I said, listen, man, come on, man. Just think it over for a couple more days, man. He like, nah, man, hey, I'll be back there, bro. I'm, I'm out. So he hang up the phone, and I call him back. He don't pick up. I call him right back again. He don't pick up. I call again. He blocked me. I'm like, well, can't tell a grown man what to do. Got, I guess he got his mindset on what he going to do. So let me tell you all what this man did. So he wait for another couple of days and he go over there. It's about 9 a.m. in the morning. He got his hammer out. He go knocking on the door. Now, the type of door that they got, the front door that they got, it's like a window pane thing. You know, the type of, it's like a glass, but you really can't see out of it. Like the middle part, you can't see it. Like you can't see out of it, but... You can see the silhouette of somebody if they come to the door, right? Why, when assuming to be his dad, and that's right, y'all, I said assuming. When that, when his so-called dad came to the door, he just let off three shots. Pow, pow, pow. And he took off running. Now here's the thing, y'all. See my homeboy, he didn't know that they that he thought that doorbell right there was just a regular doorbell. It was a door cat a door cam. Caught it all on camera. Bare face everything. But no nah, for the sake of time, y'all, I gotta get I gotta get ready to wrap this story up. But for the sake of time, it wasn't his pops that got hit. Nah. It was his stepmama. Yeah. His stepmama. 
He, when he let them shot, shots off, he thought it was his pops. No, nah, it was his stepmom. He couldn't see. All he just seen was a silhouette. And he was blinded by rage. And he just let them shots off. Now, thank God that stepmama didn't die. She didn't die, y'all. Mm -mm. But stepmama, right till this day, have to wear a colostomy, a colostomy bag. And guess what his dirty, dirty dog Pops done did? He left her. See, Pops was real vain, and he didn't want to be with his wife no more because she was because she had to use a colostomy bag that your son ended up putting her in that predicament that you was the direct cause of. It's a dirty game out there, y'all. Hey, check this out, y'all. My movie coming out in October. We need to raise this money up so we can pay for these permits and some of these locations. All right. If you can, bless the Cash App or the PayPal. If you can't, at least at minimum, hit that like button. All right. And with that, y'all, y'all know what to do. Hey, I'm Dante. If you enjoyed this story time, make sure you hit that like button, share the video. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you want me to promote your business or your social media channels, email me at the Dante show 88 at yahoo.com. I charge $50 per video. Don't forget y'all. I go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. This story right here come from the Bronx, New York again. I repeat, this story right here, my bad, come from the abyss. So, you got this cat by the name of Gennardo. He get this job at an office building and he find this young lady attractive. The lady is a white female. She about 23, 24 years old. The problem is that, well, this shouldn't be a problem with the age, but Gennardo is 42 years old. Gennardo is an older black dude. So, well, this is one of them stories when if a female is not paying you attention or giving you the attention that you think that you deserve and you, how can I put this? you are lusting after her and she don't want you to lust after her, just leave her alone. Leave her alone. Because how this story about to turn out, y'all, is going to be so shocking. Wait until it's, just wait all throughout the story. It get darker and crazier as it goes on. So let's get to it. So Gennardo, he in his late 40s, he show up at this office. He put his job application in and everything. He's going there to become a janitor. Now, when he get in there, the receptionist is this younger white female. She about 22, 23 years old. You know, she look like she got it going on. She cute. So he is lightweight flirting with her at the front desk. You know, he's sitting there. He got his oversized suit on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them cats that go to like to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army and they get them big suits and they, you know, they don't have them suits tailor made. Y'all know the type with them big old suits, them heavy suits, right? So he's sitting there, he's lightweight talking to her, flirting, showing all his teeth and all that. And she like, you know, being courteous and friendly with this dude. So she like, oh, okay, thank you. And yeah, it, it's it's a, we it, we like a family here. And, you know, everybody look out for each other and stuff like that. In his mind, he think that she back flirting with him, but she really not y'all at all. So they call his name to go in there to get interviewed. He get the job. So when he come out of there, he like, oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, yeah, I'm, I'm about to get back on my feet. Thank you, Jesus. So he, she like, oh, you got the job? He like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be seeing you a lot more around here. I'm going to be seeing you a lot more around here. So she like, okay, all right. So he leave. He go down the stairs. He exit the building. 
Now, he's so happy. Oh, I forgot to give y'all the backstory of this dude. This dude just got out of, he just got out of the penitentiary for doing 15 years for armed robbery. All right. So now he on a, per, he released on parole right now. He still got, I believe, two more years hanging over his head right now. So y'all know he got to get a job. Y'all know that his parole officer can pop in and out. Now, a part of his conditions while being free, we're on parole. You know, he can't do no drugs. He can't be out here drinking. Um, he can't be associated with known felons. You know, you just got to keep your nose clean. You, you have to gain employment, right? So now he got the employment. The problem is, y'all, when he was up in... When he was up in the MBOC correction department, he was in there drinking a whole lot of that jungle juice. If y'all know what I, for you inmates and all you felons out there, y'all know what jungle juice is. And I'm going to give y'all a secret about something too. Now, when I was locked up, Dante did not indulge in jungle juice. And I'm going to tell y'all why. One of my partners, he sold the best jungle juice in there. And this should be a story. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell y'all this story in a future date about the jungle juice. Well, one of my partners, one of his special, special ingredients was after he make the jungle juice and it ferment and they get it just right, he a piss in it. Yeah, that's right. You know that extra tangy taste that you cats be tasting? Like, man, this, man, you put your whole foot in it. No, he put his whole you-know-what in it. I, I, it is what it is. And some cats around it, and I know, I know, as soon as I said that, I know some of you cats like, man, I would have did this to him. I would have did that to him. Hey, y'all don't know what y'all drinking. Y'all don't know what y'all drinking. But like I said, we going we to say that story for another time. Let's get back to this dude, Gennardo. So, Gennardo, you know, he was he was always in there drinking. So, he done developed a drinking habit. He became an alcoholic. So, the first thing he do, knowing that he have no business doing this, he go into the liquor store. So, when he get to the liquor store, he, he like, oh, man, I, I want to celebrate, but I... I I don't really want to drink, drink. So he like, you know what, man? Forget it. It it is what it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna cop me a fifth of henny. So he go up there. He tell the clerk like, yo, let me get a fifth of henny. You know, he give him the money, get the money. So he pop he popped the top off. He can't even wait. Now dude is catching the city bus. So he popped the top off, you know, he take a squig and, you know, he closed the bottle up, put it in his coat, right? So he he at the bus stop, he like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, I got a job. Thank you, Jesus, right? So he get on the bus. He just so excited. He bust the top open again. He take another squig of it, right? He do this all the way till he get home to the point when he finally get home and he lay down on his couch. He only got like, uh, I'm just going to say a little corner left. So he hurry up and down that. So he feeling good at this point, y'all. Now he, he laying on his couch. I believe he was watching Good Times with JJ. So he laying there and he like, he his mind tell him that, to set his alarm for six o'clock because the job actually starts at seven thirty, right? His mind tell him that, but he don't do that. So he ended up falling asleep. He passed out for drinking all that Hennessy. Wake up like about six fifteen, and he wet. And he like, man, what the? Why is I'm? What the heck going on? Oh man! So he get up. Guess what, y'all? This dude unpeed on himself. Hey, let me ask y'all a question right quick. And y'all keep it real. Y'all, listen, ain't nobody going to know who y'all really is. But let's just keep it a buck. Have any of y'all done got so wasted, done got so drunk that you done peed on yourself? Let me know in the comment section. Because I know it's a lot of y'all cats be getting real saucy and, and Post it like that. So I want to know that. Let me know in the comment section. Have you ever got so drunk that you done messed around and pissed on yourself? 
All right, let's get back to it. So he wake up, he like, oh man, oh God dang. So he jump in the shower, he like, oh man, I don't know I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna be late. So he jump in the shower, he, he put on his uniform that they gave him, and he head out the door. Now he like, okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna miss the bus, so I'm gonna have to, I gotta get here. I'm gonna tell you how dirty this dude is. The penitentiary uh, way of thinking uh, kicked in. So he know he ain't gonna be able to catch the bus. So he on the prowl, he walking, he walking. Why he see a kid's bike, right? He see a kid's bike. And he like, man, listen, listen, God, if you want me to get there, I'm, I'm gonna get there. If you, you gonna make a way. And I guess he, he listened to Satan and he took that child's bike. And well, I guess Satan made a way for him to get to work. So he done took this kid bike and he hauling all tail down the street riding this kid bike. He done got to work on time. When he got to the building, he done put the bike behind a dumpster. So he go in there and the lady say, hey, hey, how you doing, man? I see you made it. He like, yeah, man, I, I really, you know, I really need this job. But, you know, me seeing your beautiful face, that really motivated me to get here. <laughs> and she said, okay, okay. So he like, oh, so where I go? She's like, well, you have to go down into the basement. Matter of fact, hold on, I'll show you. So they get in the elevator, y'all. Now, this is where the story takes a crazy turn. So when they get in the elevator... She like, okay, so she they get in the elevator and she pressed the basement. Now she is closer to the door and he is closer to like the left side of the back of the elevator. So when she closed the door, he like get up on her, like like up, up on her from the back. And she like and like like damn near breathing on her neck. And she like, um, can I help you? He like yeah, um, was was you, like, flirting with me? She was like, no. He was like, well, so why would you smiling and all this and that? So she turned completely around like, hey, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if you're playing or not, but I I wasn't flirting with you. And he like, oh, you like to play hard to get and stuff. She was like, what? I'm not playing hard. No, uh-uh, I got a boyfriend. No, I wasn't playing. He like, yeah, okay, okay. So what, what, can I ask you a question? She like, what? You, you're starting to really creep me out. He like, oh, so you like to play hard to get. It's okay, well, let me just ask you this. Can I get a hug? She like, hey, listen. What you doing is very inappropriate and I'm very uncomfortable. So now at this, at this time, y'all, anybody that got sense, anybody that got, uh, anybody got sense would see this woman face and see how discomfort this woman is, right? And bag off. He didn't. He like, Man, just let me give me a hug. Can I just get a hug? Let me get a hug. And when he's smiling, showing all his teeth. So I guess out of fear, she gave him a hug. Like, you know, a church hug. He said, yeah, see, I know you liked it, that. So when they get off the elevator, y'all, she, she get to walk. And she's like, okay, so this is where your cleaning equipment and stuff is at and this and that. He like, hey, uh, now... He not even really listening to listening to what she's saying. He he just so fascinated, just gawking at her, looking her up and down. So he just looking at her and she talking, making her really uncomfortable. She like, okay, so you're cleaning the supplies here, here, here. You have to go to start at the tenth floor on down and just clean all the bathrooms, whatever. So he like, hey, uh, I know this might be kind of out of the way. But you, you want to do something down here? She was like, "Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm I'm so serious with you. I will call the police on you, and I will I will report you to HR. Do not do that. I just told you I got a boyfriend, and I'm not interested." Now she said this with firmness and boldness, ladies out there. I know sometimes 
a, a lot of women are real feminine and they just want to not be in altercations when these dudes try to press up on you and you don't want them to press up on you. You have to be firm with these cats. You got to let these dudes know like off top, like you ain't going for it, man. Cause these dudes like to play hard to get. They, they think yes mean no. And no matter of fact, they think yes mean no means no, no. They think no means yes. And yes means yes. So you got to let these cats know that no means exactly what it is. No. So she got firm with him. She like, listen, I got a boyfriend. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in you. And you, I will report you to HR and I will call the police on you. He like, God dang, baby, you ain't got to do all that. No, she had to do all that because you little, never mind. So he like, okay, okay, man, whatever. I really need this job, man. You, you ain't got to do all that. Right, so they get back in the elevator. He like, man, what time? Now he got now he got an attitude. He like, man, what time is 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 lunch time? She like, it's lunch time is at twelve o'clock. Everybody go on lunch at twelve, and everybody be back at one o'clock. He like, all right, cool. So I start off at the the, the tenth floor, right? They work my way down. Yes, all right. Now, y'all, this is where. Again, that the story get really disturbing. Hold on, y'all. I got a cough. <clears throat> y'all, it's 4 o'clock. No, it's almost 5 o'clock in the morning that I'm telling y'all this story. So, this is why my voice is cracking. But anyway, so he start off at the 10th floor. Worked his way down to the 5th floor. Now, the 5th floor is where the break room at. The 5th floor is where the... um where you can put your lunches at in the refrigerator in the freezer. Why when he get there, y'all? Oh, it's gonna get real dark. When he get there, he go in the refrigerator. He going through people lunches. He eating some people food. Why when he get to hers, right? And I know this gonna be out cold, and I hate to tell y'all this, but hey, this is what the story all about. So she got a nice, let, let, me, let me tell y'all how her sandwich is made. She got some nice wheat bread with some Miracle Whip with about four or five pieces of honey ham on that thing. And she got lettuce and she got tomatoes on it, y'all. Then she got mustard lightly on it, y'all. And then she got some more mayo, well, Miracle Whip on, on the last piece of bread. And she got it cut, right? Why this dude open the top of the bread, right? And he spit on this woman's sandwich and close it back up. Yeah, yeah, I get this B. Yeah, I definitely get this B. Yeah, he put it back in there, y'all. Trifling. Let me ask y'all a question right quick. If somebody violates somebody's food, how much time do you think they should get? Me on the real I think somebody. I think if you violate somebody fool like that, man, they need fifty years. That's that's off the gate. Let me know if I'm if if Dante being too harsh with that, with with fifty years. I don't think so. I think dudes should get fifty years. Anybody that spit in somebody food or do something diabolical to somebody fool like that, I think they need to get fifty years, man. Because that's disgusting. Nobody wants your body fluids on my food, man. So he he do the unthinkable. So he get the clean in and all. Now he's smiling. Now he just laughing to himself, right? So at lunchtime, he make his way upstairs and he sit kind of diagonally from her. And he just watching her, watching her eat her food. She killing the sandwich too, y'all. <sighs> he... He go up to her. He like, hey, uh, uh, can I? Uh, my bad from earlier. You know, I thought that. You know, uh, uh, we got off on the wrong foot, and, and I and I do apologize. But you think I can have a little bit of your sandwich? She said, no, that that's okay. And and I kind of feel like you know that we should just remain professional and you know just not talk unless it's work related. He like, all right, all right, whatever. So then he walk off. We gonna fast forward, y'all. We're going to fast forward to the end of the day of the work day. 
So he get off. Well, he get off at 4, 4 p.m. She get off at 5. He's waiting for her to get off of work. Now, typically what this woman does when she get off of work is a gas station that's right across from the business. And she'd go over there and get her something. And then she'd get on the bus. <sighs> this man, you know, hence the title right here. Sent hence the thumbnail. This creep right here. I don't know what possessed this man to do this. I don't, I, I, I just, I don't know the reasoning, but this man was so fixated on this woman that he waited for this woman to leave her job. And when she went into the gas station, I guess all, all sense, all humanity left this man's mind. She went back to a back cooler to grab her a Pepsi, right? When she went to this back cooler, there's a bathroom that's right there. The woman's bathroom and the man's bathroom. When she got to open that cooler to grab a Pepsi, why he snatched her. He snatched her into the bathroom. And well, I'm going to spare y'all the details of what happened. Y'all know exactly what happened. The crazy thing about this, he didn't even care. He did not care at all. This woman was screaming. She was hollering. He, the store clerk got the banging on the door because you have to lock the door from the inside. The store clerk was banging on the door. There was other people banging on the door. Let her out. Leave her alone. Right? Oh, when the police showed up and they got that door open, they beat the brakes off of Gennardo. Beat the brakes off of him. Now he going back to the penitentiary. Gennardo for his vicious crime and violated his parole. Yeah, he got a good smooth 45 piece. 45 years. Ladies, ladies, I need to talk to y'all right quick. There's sick men in this world that feel like women is just an object to be played with, an object to for them to serve their nasty diabolical needs. If you if you in the workplace, and, and I know sometimes you have to put a smile on, and you can't help how you look. And you can't help who is attracted to you. But you got to be firm from, from, from the get-go. Because a lot of these cats, especially these dudes that have been locked up and been out of touch of reality for a long time, they'll take a smile and and take that and turn that into you said that you want to be with them. I can go on and on with the story, but I'm not because it's five o'clock in the morning. I got to get back in the bed because I got to drive to Ohio in about four hours. So, um, ladies, be safe out there. And if you ever run across a Gennardo, don't smile back at him. I'm out. I need for y'all to answer me a question right quick. D when should you allow your child or your teenager to spend a night over friends' houses? Let me know in the comment section. Me, I'm going to go with maybe 14, 15, 16 because I got boys. If I had a girl... Nah, that's out. She ain't. She can't spend a night. That's out. But let me know. Mine's is 14, 15, 16. Because I got boys. Let me know in the comment section. So, you got this cat. This white cat. Older cat. Right? He is the typical cat that, you know, stand with mama. He about 34, 35 years old. He stay in the basement. And all he do is, you know, eat pizza rolls, drink Mountain Dew, and play video games. 
And well, when it's nighttime, he liked to put on videos. And when I say videos, y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't say because I don't want this video to get flagged. But he watches intimacy videos if y'all catch my drift. So he has a sister that's 14 years old and she in the ninth grade. And, you know, she's a popular girl at school. A lot of girls gravitate to her. She real positive. She real cool. So one of her friends end up spending a night with her. Now, do stay in the basement. His, his whole domain is the basement. And so you got the basement, you got the middle floor, you know, where the living room nap, the kitchen, you know, the front door, back door, that type of setup. And then you got the upstairs. Now, listen, y'all, he has no business going upstairs at all. He got a bathroom downstairs. He, um, if he have to, if he have, to, let's just say if he didn't want to use the bathroom downstairs in the basement, he can go up to the first floor and use the bathroom there. He has absolutely no reason to be upstairs. Okay. So, on the level, the floor level where his sister and his mama room is at, it's the second level. It's three bedrooms up there. You got the mama bedroom, his sister bedroom, and a guest room, okay, in the bathroom. So, first, the first incident happened where he supposedly, supposedly have to use the bathroom while this girl was in the shower. So, he goes in there talk about oh i just gotta grab something now he then pulled the shower back he ain't look at her or anything this is what the alleged complaint says so but he still went in there made the girl uncomfortable so when the girl get out she go to her friend like hey um your brother i was in the shower he came in there talking about he was looking for some tissue or something so the sister already knowing how her brother get down it's like, listen, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell my mom. And, and so the sister's like, you, you know, you, 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 your brother is kind of creepy. I didn't, I didn't appreciate that. She said, yeah, I, I know, but he's harmless. He's harmless, right? <sighs> I wish I can tell y'all that this story has a happy ending. I wish I can tell y'all that he is harmless, but no, nah, he ain't, y'all. This story from here on out is about to get darker and darker and more twisted and more sadistic and more scarier as they progress now remember what i told y'all this girl was in the shower when he walked in there right when he got the toilet tissue he took something with him now i don't i can't be graphic but let's i'm just going to say he took her undergarments that she already wore he that type that like to sniff stuff. So he took that. This is the key part of this whole story. I need for y'all to hold on to that. He took her underwear. Okay. We're going to fast forward to two months later because we're going to get to the casino of this story. Two months later, she done had many, many different friends spend a night with her. Sometimes groups and all that. And all these girls would take a shower there, okay? And I'm going to spare y'all the suspense. No, he did not have no camera. But every time one of them girls would go get in the shower, he would find his way upstairs in that bathroom to grab something out of that bathroom. But guess what he was doing, y'all? Well, we going to... I'm about to tell y'all in a minute. So, a couple months pass, and he got this, well, this, I guess he met some woman off of Tinder, and his mama told him, like, yo, you can't have nobody, you can't have company, and if you do have company, you know, y'all got to be upstairs. This is what she's telling her grown son that's 30-something years old. And I mean, but he got to respect her rules, right? Because he under her roof. So he meet this girl off of Tinder and, you know, him and a chick in the living room, they talking, relaxing. And now there's an, a, another girl that's spending the night with the friend or whatever. But, you know, he see when she come in, she go upstairs with his sister and they talk, whatever they doing. So dude tell her like his date, like, hey, um, 
around my mama she go to bed usually around midnight so what you're gonna do is you know, you're gonna leave out and then like around 11 30 you're gonna leave out and then i'm gonna go outside and talk to you and then when my mama go to bed i'm gonna sneak you in the basement so she like okay i mean and come on y'all dude is 30 years old and she about 28 29 so she looking like okay that's weird i mean we're not teenagers but okay whatever let me know what y'all would have did you women out there what what y'all would have did if a dude invited you to his mama house and the way it's looking he got to play them teenager games where the when the mama go to sleep you can get snuck in the house let me know what y'all would have did what y'all would have left or y'all would have did what's about to happen so like clockwork 11 45 come he say hey mom I'm about to let um my company out she's like all right i'm about to go to bed he let her out they they talk for about five minutes so he tell her look i'm about to come back in the, i'm about to go in the house and i'm gonna leave the door open i'm gonna go talk to my mama make sure she's in the bed and then you just come on in and go to the basement so she like all right all right whatever so he go in the house and he go upstairs now, at this time, y'all, did, did his sister, okay, I, I got to describe how this upstairs is. So, when you get upstairs to the right immediately, it's a bathroom with the shower. Go down a little bit more, the mama room right there, and then diagonally to the, on the left side, it's the, um, his sister room. So, his mama and his mama and his sister room is diagonally right across from each other right so he go upstairs and now his sister door is kind of cracked open it's cracked open a little bit now he's talking to his mom like hey mom okay my company gone I'm finna go downstairs and go to bed and she said all right um just make sure you turn off everything that cut the kitchen light off and stuff like that he said okay so he closed his mama door i don't know exactly what the sister and her friend was doing but whatever they was doing he i don't uh, how can i put this he would okay you remember i told y'all the door was cracked i don't know what they was reading a book together whatever it was the his sister had her back her back was towards the door sitting down and the friend was sitting in front of her looking like towards the door if that make any sense so if she look up she would see him so he just standing there like like a creep just just looking at her right and i guess they read or whatever and she just happening to look up and she's like oh my god your brother right there and when when, he, when she said that the sister turned around was like what are you doing and he had, he just took off running took off running down the hallway down the stairs so so he go downstairs and he go to his room about three minutes ago by the sister is it the, the sister that's woken the mama up and told her like hey um uh, br my brother is being creepy he you know he would set it at the door and you know he he need to stop that or whatever so the mama like, okay, I'm going I'm to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. All right, y'all. This is where it's going to get real crazy. So he down there with this chick, the 28, 29 year old. She all hugged up on him. And she basically like, you know, I just want to do it. And y'all know what I mean when, when I say do it. She like, Let, let's just do it. Let's just, let's just do it why they start to try to start and he can't get up he can't get up and she like dude like what's the problem he like man i can can i turn something on and she like i guess i mean if that's what you went to he put on one of them videos y'all know what i'm talking about now i can't tell a man how to program i can't but the type of video that he put on, 
it's one of them type of videos that if if the police found out that you put that type of video on, oh, you going to jail, buddy. Yeah. So the video that he put on, let's just say the women where well, the girls was not of age of the type of videos he was watching and getting turned on and trying to get down with the girl. And the lady was like, uh, uh-uh, I'm about to do this with you. You are sick. And he like, well, what you mean? You. <sighs> so for him to get aroused, he got to watch. Y'all know what I'm saying. I'm trying to stay in a community guideline. I'm trying to stay in the community guidelines. So I can't say, but y'all, y'all, y'all get the point. Y'all get exactly what I'm saying. So he like, because she like, I'm out of here. I'm out. So he like, wait, wait, be quiet, be quiet. I don't want to get in trouble. I want to get in trouble with my mom. So she like, you know what? I don't know what you got going on, but I'm out of here. You are disgusting. You are, you're just ill. You're nasty. So he like, oh, 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 well, don't don't tell nobody. Please don't tell nobody. So she like, listen, you don't got to worry about me. I don't, I ain't never going, I'm gone. So he take her out. He lead her upstairs and she leave out the back door. This is where the story take another crazy turn, y'all. So now it's like four o'clock in the morning. Why this dude slither up the stairs? He like army style crawling through the hallway and he get to his sister bedroom door. Why he creep it open? He like open it up a little bit and he slithers in the room. He sees the girl, the friend's cell phone and take the cell phone, right? She got an iPhone, so you can only you can unlock her, the phone with, with the face, right? Why this dude take the iPhone, and creep up on her and unlock it, right? He take her phone. Now he got access to her social, her Facebook, her Instagram, her Snapchat. And this is what this creep does. He add himself and accept himself to her. Now, days ago by when he would start writing her, telling her, oh, she now she don't know this him. Tell her, talking about, yeah, he her age. He posing as a teenager. <sighs> I told y'all this story get crazy. This is a crazy story. So he posing as a teenage boy. Ta- telling her everything she want to hear, right? And then when he finally try to meet up with her, he finally meet. He finally, she agrees to meet up with him, right? But she thinking it's somebody. She thinking it's somebody her age. And this is why I tell you, parents out there, y'all need to be involved in your teenagers' lives, man. Look, go through them cell phones, go through them tablets, because y'all don't know. Who these kids be out here meeting grown ups? Y'all just don't know these predators. She meet up with this dude at the McDonald's, right? She thinking she about to meet a 14, 15 year old dude. He shows up. She's sitting at the table. He shows up. She recognizes him. When she when he come through, she they like, oh, that's that's my friend, brother. But nah, he be lying straight to her, and he was like, hey. You 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 know I like you. She like, um, what are you doing here? He like, that that was me. I, I was writing you. That that was me that was writing you. She like, what do you mean you was writing me? You're not blah 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 blah. He like, yeah, I, I am. I just knew that if 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 I would have came out as myself, you, you probably wouldn't like me. She like, ew, get away from me, you weirdo. Get away from me, you creep. And he's like, What are you what you I'm not no weirdo, I'm not no creep. Other people start looking. Uh, this uh, this other gentleman come around and he like, hey, is he bothered? She's like, yeah, this guy's a creep. He he's trying to talk to me. Like, ew, get away from me. You are super grown. Don't ever contact me no more. The the, the dude that came over there like, hey, dude, it's time for you to go, man. You need to go. So he like, man, listen, listen, listen. Man, it's not like that. I, I'm just I, this is my sister's friend right here, and I'm just trying to talk to her. I'm gonna leave it. I'm going to leave the story right there because this story actually get even darker and I'm trying to, you know, abide by the guidelines of YouTube and not get too graphic. But I'm just going to put it this way. Long story short, 
dude end up getting 10 years in a penitentiary for, well, how can I say this? Aggravated, aggravated stalking. And um, he was sending pictures to this girl that he had no business sending to her. If y'all y'all know what I mean of himself, and well, her parents pressed them charges, and he got them charges. So, and y'all let me know how y'all feel about this video right here. And yes, the dude in the thumbnail, that's him. That's him. With that, y'all, share this video and hit that like button for me. With that, I'm out. So it was me, Al, Jay, Nick, this Mexican cat, and two white cats. We was in a six-man cell. I call it hell in a cell. Why I call it hell in a cell? Because when you stuff six cats in one cell, come on, man. It's crazy. Now, these cells, it got... Two bump bags, so it only supposed to hold four people, but they give you these things that they call a boat where you can lay down in and, I don't know, lay down on the floor in, so they call it the boat. Hold on, y'all, I got a cough, excuse me. <clears throat> so, you get this guard, he come down, he talking about, hey, we got one, we got one, we got another one, got another one. So I look at Jay Nick, I'm like, what do you mean we got another one? We got one. He like, oh, well, so if you are accused of touching a woman or a child, you know, that's what they do. They let everybody know, like, you know, somebody finna come up in here. They got some bad charges. And I was like, oh, that's, that's wild. He like, yeah, I know. So about 10 minutes to go by. And they would bring a TV, like they'd bring like three TVs on a cart. Y'all remember back like in elementary and middle school, maybe even high school, where they had them big old box TVs and they'd have it on the um on the cart. So that's what they had. So they had three of those. Hold, hold on, y'all. This is a side story. So I remember when I was going to Northwestern, right? I had a homeboy named Deontay Jackson, man. This dude Man, me and him was just, we, we was just bad. So it was this science teacher, the science teacher by the name of Mr. Paso, right? And everybody always got over on him, like always was messing with him. So one day, um, we knew, I'm going gonna, gonna to say on Thursday, we knew Friday that we was going to be watching a movie. So my homeboy, Deontay Jackson, he came here with a porno, right? So with Mr. Paso, <laughs> so when Mr. Paso came through with the with the TV stand and everything, Deontay waited for the perfect moment and took out the science video and put it in the porno, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so when he put it, he put it in. And everybody started coming in the classroom. Mr. Paso was like, all right, y'all, y'all gonna watch this movie. So <laughs> Mr. Paso sat down and first play on the VCR and a porno star playing it. Everybody got to wilding out. And Mr. Paso jumped up so fast, cut on the light, he cut off the thing. He looked right at me and Deontay. He didn't know who did it, but he just looked right at us. <laughs> hey, we used to dog Mr. Paso out. Hey, let me know in the comment section. Have y'all ever, y'all know when y'all get substitute teachers and y'all just dog them out? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going out memory lane. But it is what it is. Y'all hit that like button. So let's get back to the prison story. So <clears throat> they bring these TVs on a cart and they pushing it down on the tier. So it's like three or four of them. So we watching it and they all got it on this news channel. And it's a breaking news, blah, 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 blah. I've been apprehended, this, that, this, and that. So you get this cat that was going around looking at people's windows and exposing himself, and he done tried to grab a couple of kids. So we all seeing this, and they got the dude face, I mean, he gets his face blasted all over the television. So we see exactly who it is, right? Why about, I'm gonna say about 20 minutes later, 
we get new inmates coming through. It's about 20 of them. And then in them 20 of them cats that came in, he come through. So I'm looking, I'm like, hey, that's that, that's that dude. That, that's dude that was on TV. So they put him like two cells down from us. And all I hear is, oh, oh man, hey, man, that dude can't come in here, man. Oh, no, no, don't put that dude up in here, right? And the guard like, hey, he got to go somewhere, so this is where he going. And everybody up on the bars hollering and screaming and all that, right? So they finally put him in there, and it just get quiet down there. So I'm hearing other cats up on the bars like, hey, man, hey, you did that? Is that, that, that's you that was on the television? And I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that to you. All this and all that, right? So I'm thinking like, why they didn't put this dude in a solitary confinement? I don't even know if Oakland County even got a solitary confinement. They got to. They got to have a place where they put, you know, high risk inmates or whatever. But anyway, so I'm like, man, that is wild. We just seen dude on the TV and he up in here two cells down from us. So I'm talking to Jay Nick. I'm like, hey, what do you think gonna happen to do when he get when he sent when he gets sent to prison? And one of the white caps, I guess he been up north for already, he was like, man, I'm gonna tell you exactly what they gonna do to him, man. They gone when he get up there, they gonna be bidding on him. Like, you know how they came through here talking about his charges, or whatever, letting us know. It's gonna be some guards up north that's gonna let people know, like, hey, so and so on his way up here and so you gotta you're gonna have cats that mingle and tingle with the same sex up there and you know, they gonna be like betting on him, like, yo, that's me, that that's mine right there. And, you know, whoever end up taking ownership of them, they gonna get like a mop, you know, like the, the mop, the mop head. They gonna like get a bucket with Jolly Ranchers in it and dip it, dip the uh, mop head in it and let it dry out and then put on top of this head and, you know, put lipstick on them with the Jolly Rancher um, colors or whatever. And they gonna be up there effing them and passing him around, pimping them out. I said, dang, that's a cold piece, ain't it? He like, yeah, but I mean, hey, this will happen to cats that, you know, go up north with bad charges. So anyway, we gonna fast forward to later on that night. Now he ended up getting a tour with somebody in his cell. I don't know who it was. I don't know what it was about. All I know is they end up switching him out for a cat that was right next door to us. So this is how I know what I heard, okay? So they end up switching these two cats out and he end up being in the cell right next door to us. Now remember y'all, this is a six man cell. You got two bunk bags and you got two boats. And I told y'all the boats is like this little, y'all remember them little, them little blue pools back in the day, them little blue pools? It was like that, them plastic blue pools the circular blue blue pools. So just imagine that being squared. So um you got two of them on the floor and two bump bags. So I don't know where he was at in this position, but well where, where he was sleeping at, but I know he was next door. So next thing you know, it was about maybe about two o'clock in the morning. Now in prison or the county jail, you really don't get no sleep unless you're in a single man cell. But well, I was at, I could sleep because, you know, my homeboy Al was in here. I knew Jay Nick from the streets. The two white, the two white cats, they was cool. They wasn't on no BS. And the Mexican dude, he would sleep all day long. <clears throat> so I ain't have to worry about him. But you know what? To come to think about it, I should have been worried about the Mexican dude, right? Because what if he was in there on some serial killer type stuff, like sleep all day? or we think he sleep all day, we irritate him, and he get his revenge at night. Mm, that's a good story to tell. But anyway, so all I know is, first I heard like a faint, you know when you sleep and you hear like muffling noise or like you sleep, but you ain't all the way sleep, so you can hear stuff, but you kind of in the daze. So I hear like some moaning noises. I'm like, man, what the? 
the heck? So I fully wake up and I'm just laying there. <clears throat> and I'm like, man, what the? Then I hear it again. Then I hear it loud. I'm like, oh, hell. I said, hey, man, what y'all doing? So it got quiet. And so Al woke up. He like, man, what's going on? I said, man, they, man, they down there having sex or something, man. So Al got up on the bar and was like, hey, man, y'all cut that post out, man. Cut that post out, man. So other cats start waking up like, man, what's going on? So they say, you know, I guess whoever was messing around, I guess they felt like, man, whatever, forget it. We already we already got it. Forget it. Let's just go all the way out with it. So they start messing around again. They got the moaning louder. I'm like, hey, man, cut that punch out, man. So now everybody up on the bars, hollering and hooting, like, hey, damn, damn, man, hey, get these up out of here, man. These in here having sex, man. Get these out of here, man. Call them all type of homophobic slurs and all that, right? So I guess they, I guess the dude that was in there for bad charges that we all found out what he did due to the depths and putting that on the TV. He was in there getting, how can I put this, blowed out by this so-called thug dude. And when I say so-called thug dude, y'all know the type. <laughs> y'all know the type, man. And, you know, it's, it's funny because I know somebody that just got released, man, that just got released. And he around here with his chest out. He around here that, that... <laughs> I'm laughing, y'all, because some of my partners have told me about him. And when I seen him a couple of days back, I was like, oh, that's dude right there. <laughs> dude, you was a whole punk. But anyway, out here beating his chest, chest all out. See, let me, hold on, I got to get, I got to get y'all another sidebar. But this real talk right here. You ladies out there. I need for y'all to understand something. I know, I know sometimes y'all big get lonely and some of y'all women just want a man. But some of these cats, now I'm not body shaming at all, okay? But some women on the heavier side that be having low self-esteem and living like in low income places, when, when these dudes that come from prison be all ripped up, chest all chiseled, right? Arms looking right. And they giving you so much attention, they using you, okay? They, it, nigga, cats out here don't want to be homeless. A lot of these dudes don't got nowhere to go, so they figure, let me push up on this chick right here. I know she ain't talking to nobody. I know ain't nobody checking for her, so I'm going to push up on her and all this and that, so I'm going to have a place to lay my head at. But wait until springtime come. He's going to be driving your car. You, you're going to spend all your income taxes on him, right? You're going <clears> to <throat> gonna be out there in the club, mess with other chicks, and you're just going to be dealing with it until you finally put him out. But he he ain't, he ain't tripping because he got what he want. He's just going to move on to the next chick. But the reason why I bring that up, because it is income tax sees the time real soon so you women out there y'all better be careful and, and hey i can't tell another man how to program so and y'all gonna do what y'all gonna do anyway but let's get back to the story so the deputy come through there and he like i guess they done stopped by the time the two deputies got through there and they like man what is going on why is y'all making all this dang noise we're like hey man they ain't there having sex man they're like who who did he have sex now the deputies already know who who it could be potentially be. They know it gotta be dude in here getting violated or whatever. So they get to they get to the cell and they like, what y'all up here doing? Ain't nobody saying nothing, right? So they flash and they light. They like, hey, whatever y'all in here doing, y'all need to break that up and don't be in here acting all. You said the gay word. Don't be in here acting all gay and all this and that, right? So. Ain't, ain't nothing come about that. So everybody like, man, you ain't going to get that dude up out of here? He like, what dude? He was like, man, hey, man, I ain't sleeping around nobody that's out here, you know, doing stuff like that. 
So the deputy like, man, shut up, man. Y'all ain't even in the same cell with this dude. Y'all don't even know what's really going on. Some of y'all, half of y'all motherfuckers up in here gay anyway. So I don't know why y'all in here tripping. So everybody just really got the hollering and who and talking crazy, right? So the deputy so they're like, look, y'all better shut the F up and take y'all to bed. Y'all, shoot, y'all in my house. Y'all my kids. And he walked out with the other dip. <sighs> I'm going to tell y'all something. I, for the sake of time, I got to fast forward real fast. He was getting into it well. Cats was basically passing him around from cell to cell. He would get into it with somebody on purpose, on purpose for commissary. He would pick a fight with somebody to get into somebody else's cell. So they basically was passing him around for commissary under the cover of getting into it with him so he could end up in somebody else's cell. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to be real. For the charges that dude got, I'm not going to say he deserve it because I honestly believe that, you know, when a man lay down with a man, matter of fact, not even that. I, I believe that taking somebody, um, taking somebody in a way that you don't want to be taken by by force is it that's just not right period all around the board but in prison it's like a dog eat dog world man things that don't make sense out here in the real world make perfect sense there you know but actually now that i come to think about it the world is getting really weird Matter of fact, not getting, it is weird now. So I guess <laughs> both worlds is kind of fusing together. But anyway, I don't know what happened to do um, with his extended state being going up north. But I'm pretty sure if he was in there getting, you know, turning tricks or getting violated up in there in the county, well, I can only imagine. Well, I don't want to imagine what he was going through up in there. But, hey, it is what it is. Hey, listen, y'all. Let me know in the comment section if y'all like the faceless videos or y'all can't wait to see my beautiful face. And with that, y'all, Dante love y'all. Y'all stay safe. And with that, y'all, I'm out. All right, y'all, before we even start, this story i need for y'all to answer this in the comment section right now if a man and a woman that's married if the woman won't uh want a abortion does the husband have a say so i'm gonna say that again when a man and a woman that is married together right that's in a marriage if the woman won't a abortion and a man don't want a abortion what do you do is my my body my choice or she got to respect her husband i want to know in the comment section now we about to get into this dark story you got this cat named james and you got this woman named tiffany they've been married for two years james and tiffany are like yin and yang they done been sweethearts um high school sweethearts They've been college sweethearts. They done got married. They've been together for two years of marriage, okay? They whole plan was that when they turn 30 years old, that's when they're going to start having kids. Cool, right? So they 28 years old at this time that we're talking. Now, she ended up getting pregnant, you know, because they they been together, and she ended up getting pregnant, and she come to him and like, hey, James, I'm pregnant. And he like, oh, good, I'm happy, I'm happy, cool. She like, but, you know, we already discussed it that, you know, we ain't going to have no kids until we 30. And he like, well, I mean, you know, things happen. So she like, I, I get that, but I don't want kids. And he like, listen, man, we said this when we was like 23, 24 years old, man. We 28 years old, man. Let's Let's just... Let's just have this baby. And she like, nah, I don't really want to mess up my body. 
And he like, what you mean you don't want to mess up your body? And she like, I, I don't want to mess my body up. So he like, hold on, we, we, we really need to talk. So he like, listen, you know I love you and I'll do anything for you. But at the same time, it's like all you do is just sit in front of this camera and take Instagram pictures and Facebook pictures and you know what I'm saying? You're not, you don't really do anything for, for you to be saying like, you don't want to mess your body up. So she like, yeah, but I mean, I, I just don't want kids so I'm 30. So he like, man, I don't know, man. I, I, I want a kid, you know, I'm working and you know, my mama help us. I mean, we good financially. So it's like, I mean, what's the problem? So she like, man, I, I just don't want no kids. So he like, all right, man. I, all right, so just do what you're going to do. And she like, what, you ain't going to go to the clinic with me? And she, he like, no, I'm not going to the clinic with you. You No, because I want the baby. So she like, all right, whatever. So a couple days go by, and she called one of her girlfriends up, and they go to the clinic, and they get rid of the baby. Now, they was, di so James and Tiffany was kind of distant to each other. You know, James would sleep on the couch. She would be in the bedroom. Um, usually, they say, I love you and good morning, and kiss each other in the morning, but, you know, that stopped happening. So this would go on for about two to three months. You know, when they become intimate, you know, he'd be on top, you know, pounding her out and, He'll look at her face and get turned off because she looking off to the side, like, in space. And so he like, man, all right, yeah, well, I'm done. I'm done. So she be like, what? And he like, nothing, man. So it's just a lot of attitudes getting thrown back and forth. So one day he come to her. He like, listen, I understand I wasn't there when you got rid of the baby. But you got to understand this, too. I really wanted that baby, too. So she like, yeah, I get that, but you know, we we just need to get past this. So he like, all right, man, let's let, let's just go on a vacation, or whatever. So she's like, all right, cool. So they end up going to Jamaica, and they having a good time, and they rekindled they love back. So they good. Now we are gonna fast forward to thirty years old, like clockwork. They end up having a baby. Okay, cool. Now she. I'm, I have to describe her body. She was like kind of petite and, you know, she was she was slim thick. Now, this baby, and I'm going to say she weighed maybe about 140, 145. Now, this baby that she been carrying, I gave her this big baby weight. Now, this chick done blew up to about 200 pounds, y'all. But she wasn't fat. She was just like super thick, if you know what I'm saying? So she didn't look bad at all. So after the pregnancy, we're going to fast forward. We're just going to fast forward. So after the pregnancy, you know, he he like, all right, baby, um, you know, you want to have another kid like in a year or two or whatever? Because they wanted a boy and a girl and they just had a boy. And she like, no, nah, I don't I don't think I want any more kids. You know, this pregnancy was hard on me and. I just don't, I, I don't, I don't know. It's too soon. So this is like four months, like baby four months. So he like, all right, whatever. So, okay, cool. So a year go by and then another year go by and he like, okay, you want to try to make another baby? And she like, no, nah, I, I really don't want to. Plus, you know, I just want to work on my body or whatever. I want to get back down to a decent weight. So he like, all right, wh wh whatever, man. So she ended up getting a BBL. You know, she went over there and got a butt, a Brazilian butt lift. She got her breasts done and um, some other things happening. So I guess she got her body right and tight. So he like, okay. And, and he paid for it too. So he like, okay, my girl look good, blah, 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 blah. She got her confidence back and all this and that. So he um basically when i say and i'm i'm not saying this out of no lust but for the sake of the story you know she was bad she was cold and he couldn't stay off of her you know so 
he ended up getting her pregnant again. Now, she found out she was pregnant, but when she found out, y'all, she was five months pregnant, and she did not know she was pregnant until she went in because she was still having her menstrual cycle and everything. So when she stopped having it, she felt she had like this stomach cramp that just never went away. She went to the doctors and found out she was five months pregnant. She was like, oh, oh, heads no. Oh, heads no. This is why I tell y'all at the beginning, when I told y'all at the beginning, let me know. Do y'all believe that when a, when a husband and wife is married, right, do she get all the say so about an abortion because this is where it's about to go. So she like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not about to have another baby. Uh uh-uh, uh, I just got my body done and and this and that. Uh uh-uh, uh, I am not about to. I'm getting rid of this baby. So she end up calling one of her friends, one of her you know female friends, like telling her the situation instead of telling her husband. And and she like. Man, I, I, I got to get rid of this baby. She like, well, it's five months. You can't, you have to go somewhere. You know, we had to go to another state and get it done. She like, well, I don't want to tell my husband. And so she like, well, okay. All right, well, let's, <clears throat> let's do it then. <clears throat> so they end up going to a state where you can get rid of the baby at a late stage of the pregnancy. And she ended up getting rid of the baby. Now, after, after... And I know y'all going to be like, well, Dante, how, why did, you know, he didn't know that she was going out of town? No, she told him that she needed to get away with her friend. And that ain't, that's not, not normal for her her friends, you know, to go on get away on girls trips and stuff like that. So he thinking they just going on a girls trip but when she really went to go get that abortion. So, you know, when she come back. She all laid up in the bed. She all tired. You know, she ain't really want to deal with the baby. And he like, you, you all right, man? So he he thinking like she was cheating on him because she ain't want to she ain't want him to touch her and and this and that. And he like, man, what's up? Like, and I don't really know y'all what happens when a woman get an abortion, but I do believe that women cannot be intimate. For a couple of days or a couple of weeks or something. I'm not sure. Y'all let me know in the comment section. But she just wasn't having it. And he thinking like, man, if you ain't screwing me, then you screwing somebody else and this and that. So she ended up like, I'm going to say about a month later, some bills come to the house, some medical bills. And a follow-up something came to the house from wherever clinic she was at. Talking about we got after services for counseling for women that, you know, that got this procedure done. So that got sent to the house. So he looking at it. He like, man, what the heck is this? So he he, he come up to her. He like, hey, baby, what's, what's this? So she like, I don't know. He like, I mean, according to this letter, you, you, you got abortions? And she was like, no. He was like, well, why would they be sending you? Hold up. These dates, he said, Tiffany, did you go to so and so and got an abortion behind my back? She was like, you know what? I I didn't want to mess my body up. I didn't want to mess my body up. He like, yo, so you mean to tell me that you aborted my baby without my consent? And why would you do that? Because I didn't want to mess my body up. I already gave you a baby. So they get to arguing and the arguing. He he just blanked out and you know he bawled his fist up and he punched her in the face. And this is his first time ever hitting this woman. Ever. So he hit her and she fell to the floor. And he and she like, why did you hit me? Why did you hit me? He like, man, I ain't trying to hear that, man. You wanna abort my baby? You wanna abort my baby? And you just because you want to keep your dang body in shape, man. No, F that man. You treacherous. You treacherous. Why would you abort my baby for? So she was like, I told you I didn't want to mess my body up and all this. And he was like, man, F your body. I I could just pay for you to get another one, man. You ain't have to do that, man. I can't trust you. I, I can't trust you. So they just arguing back and forth. The baby get to crying in the background. And he she get up and like, I'm going to get my baby. I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. He like, 
No, you ain't going. You ain't taking my baby. You ain't taking my baby nowhere. So they arguing some more, and you know the police get called. The, the police get called. They show up, and she telling him he hit me and this and that. But they don't take him to jail. They just say, okay, can you go somewhere to cool off and this and that? He like, yeah, I'm gonna go get a hotel or whatever. So that's that's that. Now. This is where I need y'all help in the comment section. Do y'all think that the wife was foul for getting an abortion behind her husband back? Or y'all believe that it's my body, my choice? Let me know in the comment section. My opinion, I believe when you are married, it's 50 50. Y'all got to sit down and y'all got to talk about it. You know, some people don't believe that. Some people believe that women. Bodies is their choice, what they do. But, hey, that's why I need for y'all to let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about that. So, long story short, y'all, they, the, they end up getting a divorce and they move on. About two, three years later, she ended up getting pregnant by some dude and, well, hey, she got two baby daddies. Um... Let me know how y'all feel about this video. If you like this type of content, man, hit that like button and share the video. And with that, y'all, I'm out. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So Al called me over there. He like, hey, Dante, I need for you to come to my crib right quick because something might happen. I'm like, what's going on? He like, man, just come on. I said, do I need to grab her? You know what? He like, man, yeah, yeah, just, just, just bring it just in case. I said, all right. So, you know, I go grab her, you know what? And I throw on a vest. I jump in the car and I get over there. Now, when I get over there, the door kind of cracked and I hear him and his girl arguing. So I push the door open some. I'm like, Al. And he like, hey, hold on, hold, hold on, wait, wait, wait one second. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right. So I see a car drive by and I'm like, hold on, let me see. Cause this car, it done drove like past twice already and it slowed down. So I went in my shirt with my waistband, and, you know, I was gripping the hammer. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, if that window rolled down, I'm, I'm just going to have to let these things fly. But. I thought about it. I was like, well, maybe it might be somebody just looking for an address. And, you know, they might ask me, like, hey, do such and such stay here or whatever. But either way, I was ready for whatever. So I'm like, hey, what's up, man? So him and this girl arguing about something. And I'm, I'm not really trying to hear what it really is, but I'm kind of nosy, too. So he like, hey, um, come in, come in, come in. So I sit down on the couch and then he come out all sweating. I'm like, man, what's going on? She come out the room. She like, man, Dante, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Was you and Al at the casino messing with some girls? I'm like, nah, I wasn't that no. And Al looked at me. Now, I didn't know, unbeknownst to me, Al told her that me and her went, well, me and him went to the casino. I guess he was out there being foul, but you know, and, and let me, let me, let me stop right here, right quick. A side note. Um, when, if you in a relationship, right. And, and I don't promote fornication. I don't promote cheating or none of that. But if you is living in that type of lifestyle, let your homeboy know or your homegirl know ahead of time what's going on. Because I done walked in into the lion's den. He done told this girl that me and him went to the casino, you know, just to, just to gamble and chill. I don't even know. I don't know what's going on. So I was about to say, like, nah, we ain't go to no casino to meet no girls. Or I was just going to completely be like, we ain't go to no casino. And that right there would have blew the whole spot up. Now, he better thank God I was looking at him when he was giving me that look like, no, we, we, we was there type stuff. So I was like, no, we wasn't in there talking to no girls, man. We were just, just rolling dice and playing blackjack. 
And she was like, no, nah, no, nah, I know you lying for him. You lying for him. Why he wasn't answering his phone? I'm like, we was gambling. I mean, I don't answer my phone when I'm gambling unless it's an emergency or something. So she was like, well, anyway, my brother about to come over here. He about to be Al A. Now, you already know how, how me and Al was getting down. You know, that was my dude. So I'm just sitting on the couch and I'm like, Ah, uh, man, y'all done caught me over here in this sticky situation. So, like, three minutes later, here come her brother banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. So I open the door, and he kind of, like, trying to push up on me to get past me. Like, man, man, watch out. Where L at? Where L at? So I'm like, hey, hold on, partner. So I, like, kind of shoved him a little bit. And he was like, man, Dante, man, watch out, man. Watch out, man. You ain't got nothing to do with this. He put his hands on my sister. He put his, he put his hands on my sister. So then Al come out the room, and he like, man, what's up? What's up? So they both get into their fighting stance. Dante is right in the middle of them. Now, I know her brother, and, you know, Al is my dude. But, you know, I'm not about to let them fight because if they fight, if Al is winning the fight, I'm just that's just what it's gonna be. But if Al start losing the fight, then I gotta get in it, right? So hence the title, Dante standing on business. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that in the comment section. If your friend is fighting and he's winning, you know, you just let him rock out. But if your friends start losing, do you jump in? Y'all talk to me in the comments section. And by the way, y'all hit that like button, okay? Because we standing on business today. So, you know, they, they squaring up. I'm in between them. She like, yeah, yeah, my brother going to beat your way and this and that. And they squaring up. And, you know, I got the pistol right there, you know, in my in my pants right there. And I'm like, pushing these two cats back and they really try to get at each other so i done muscle the brother out of the house and he like trying to buck up on me like man watch out Dante. i swear to god i'm gonna I'm do this i'm gonna I'm hit you dog i'm gonna hit you so when he noticed i had that thing on me he kind of backed up a little bit like man bro so you so you so you gonna shoot me bro you gonna not nah, listen y'all i did not brandish the weapon or nothing but as i was pushing him my shirt was lifting up a little bit and he seen that thing so he was kind of like bagging up now like man you gonna shoot me bro you gonna shoot me bro then tell tell al to come out here and shoot the one with me tell him to come out and shoot the one with me i'm like man y'all need to chill so she like, no, he want to cheat on me and all this and that. He want to put his hands on me. So I'm like, Al, man, tell me you ain't hit this girl. He was like, no, man, she slapped. As soon as I came in the door, so Al came outside. He like, as soon as I came through the door, she just started slapping me, hit me. Of course, I'm going to grab her and restrain her. But she kept hitting me. So I might have, you know, slapped her or something. But I, it wasn't like I was in here beating her. Hey, so her, the brother was like, Oh, so she was hitting you first? He was like, yeah, bro. You know, I, ain't, I don't be hitting your sister, man. She was just hitting me, don't you? Don't be acting like you ain't never hit your bra before, man. He like, man, dog. So did, did, well, so he, I ain't going to say the girl name. So he like, so did he hit you? Like, what did he hit you? Yeah, he hit me. But well, I mean, but was he hitting you? No, he just, you know, he just grabbed me and he might. I, but anyway, you need to be this A. So... I think, dude, the brother better judgment, you know, took a hold of him because, come on, y'all, y'all know how it is when when couples fight. You know, it don't, it don't be nothing real, especially us dudes. Y'all know if we out there living foul or, or living bold, you know, then the girl catches in the act or whatever, you know, we got to take that, you know. Um, but my whole thing is, yes, never put your hands on a woman. Never do that. At best, and especially when you know you wrong and she done caught you. Take that whipping. But at best, you can grab her and restrain her from hitting you, but never boil your fist up and hit that woman. Like I said, especially if you know dang well you in the wrong. All right, let me know if y'all agree with that or not. So anyway, you know, now we all civilized. We just talking and whatever. So he like, all right, man, I'm I'm gonna leave it alone, but just don't touch my sister no more. So I'm walking him back to his car, and he like, yeah, my bad, D. You know it, it ain't nothing. I said we good, we good. You know we just 
you know, it is what it is. We, you done been through it. I've been through it. You know, it, it ain't nothing. I'm like, I'm not going to let Al touch your sister, man. That ain't, you know, I don't, I ain't even cut like that. So he like, all right, man. So we dapped it up and he left. So after that, um, I go back in the house, they back arguing again. So I'm just sitting on the couch and I cut the game on. I was playing 2K13. And um they in the room again. And then I just started hearing like like stuff being moved. They was in like tussling it again. So I said, you know what? That ain't my business, but I'm not gonna let it get out of hand, right? So they're in there tussling. I'm hearing um the bed moving. I'm hearing some glass breaks. So then I get up and I go to the door. They both got each other in a headlock. He grabbing her hair and she like trying to choke him. And I'm like, man, what the heck? So I take the, the strap out and I put it on the couch behind me. And I go in there and I get in between them and I break them up. So when I when I like get her from him and I like picked her picked her up off her feet to walk her to the living room. She just go ballistic on me. I'm talking about she scratching at me, screaming at me. I don't ball it up. I say, yep, I'm getting out of here. I'm gone. So I'm trying to, I grab the strap and I hear him and run out the door. So then I'm sitting outside and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to go, man. They, they, they wilding out. Next thing you, I know, I hear, Psh! why this girl done picked up a pot and th i don't know was he standing by the living room window but or whatever but she threw this pot and it bust the living room window now let me um paint the scene of how this apartment is now we on the first floor and it's a one bedroom so when you come in you got a closet directly in front of you where you where you hang up like your coat and put your shoes right there. Then directly to the left, you got the living room, right? Um, and then in the, in the living room, it's like, um, uh, connected to the kitchen right here to the right. And then you come back over to the left. It's a little hallway to the right is the bathroom. And then when you come out of the bathroom to the left again, you go straight and that's their bedroom. So it's a one bedroom apartment it's not that small it's not that big it's maybe about 500 square feet 600 square feet at best give or take like a hotel room it's kind of like a, a big hotel room kind of so it's, it's not that much room so when she throws this i guess she tried to hit him with it and he dug it and move and it come out the um the window i'm like yeah it's time to go but i don't want this boy to end up you know, end up beating the crap out this girl. So I come back in and they like, I'm just going to say he got her pet down on the couch. So I said, you know what? This is not going to be good. So I hurried, like my car was maybe about, uh, maybe 15 feet away from the apartment. So I hurry up and go to my car and I put the strap in the car because I don't want it to, or, you know, mistakenly go off. So I put the strap in the car and I run back in there. At this point, now he's, I'm going to say, he putting hands on her at this time. So I grab him, I, I like grab him and muscle him off of her. And I guess she was, I'm going to say, out of breath, you know. And she was getting her breath back when I grabbed him off of her. And I muscled him out the dang house, right? Why in the midst of me muscling him out the house, this girl done grabbed a skillet. And she's trying to hit him, but she like, F it. Dante in the way, so he going to get it too. Why this girl clocked me in the back of my head, right? I guess she was standing on business, right? So when she hit me, it's like y'all know when you hear like it's a it's called like zero noise when your when your ear pop or something and you like everything goes silent but you hear like that ringtone noise. That's what I heard and I felt lightheaded in the mud. So I'm like, hold up, did this girl just knock me out? Cause I thought she punched me in the back of the head, but she did. She hit me with this damn skillet. So I'm like, what the heck? 
<laughs> so then she swung it again and I felt like this whoosh noise. So I hurry up and lean to the left and I let him go. So she, she hit him with the skillet. Now he, he got his elbows up trying to duck these, um, skillet punches or whatever. Uh, listen, y'all, the reason why I'm telling y'all this story is because this actually happened on Christmas Eve a couple years back. And I was just thinking about it. Um, I was thinking about T.I.'s son, King, when he was talking about standing on business. And I guess the reason why, <laughs> the reason why I'm telling y'all this story is because you cats out there <laughs> that be cheating on your woman, and your woman is one of them type of women that like to fight, hey, can't get mad at a man because she's standing on business, right? So, and I know, I know y'all, I'm sorry that y'all can't see my face, but I'm on vacation and I'm not in my studio. But when I get back, I will be back in the studio. Y'all will be able to see me. I have to give y'all these crazy stories because, you know, that I, I don't take a day off even when I'm on vacation. So I got to give y'all these crazy stories. All right. So happy holidays. Y'all be safe. I'll be back after, after Christmas. I'll be back in the studio so y'all can see my beautiful face. And with that, y'all, hit that like button, share this video, and I'm out. We go again happy holidays again to everybody let's get straight to this story now it was this cat named antoine y'all know i usually don't cuss but this was a bitch ass nigga right so let me tell y'all about antoine so y'all remember when i tell when i told y'all in prior stories that be careful what you do out here in the streets because it can catch up with you when you in prison. Well, this is one of them stories. Now, we got to go all the way back. When I say all the way back, I mean all the way back. Now, I was 16 years old. And I met this girl. Now, I ain't going to say her name. Because, you know, I don't put women out there like that. But I was 16 and she was 19. Now, I was at the basketball court playing basketball basketball with my shirt off you know i had a little six pack back then you know doing my thing now i ain't gonna say i was the best because i wasn't but i was decent so we running a full a full press court right so it's five on five and i noticed this dark-skinned chick you know she she was cold i noticed her you know as i'm running up and down the court and i noticed she looking at me so I'm like, all right, bet. So, you know, after the game, I push up on her and I'm like, oh, what's up with you? And she was like, boy, you too young. I'm like, man, what you mean I'm too young? She was like, I'm 19. How old is you? I said, man, I'm 17. Knowing I was 16, she was like, yeah, you still a baby. Hey, let me ask you all a question for the fellas out there. Have a woman or girl ever said that to you before? Even though she like maybe one or two years older, you talking about you still a baby? Man, let me know in the comment section because I hey Dante don't play that. So I told her like I said, well I seen you over there looking, you know, at me while I was hooping, and she was like, yeah, and 
And I was like, man, let's stop playing games, man. She was like, no, nah, you you a baby and all this and that. And I was like, well, well I ain't going to say that, y'all, because, you know, this, you, this YouTube and, you know, people been reporting my videos, so I ain't even going to go there. But I told her some things, and she got to smiling. And she was like, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. So I'm like, all right. So I said, where you from? And she was like, I stay over there on Edmund Street. I said, hold up. I stay on Edmund Street. I said, what part you stay on? And she was like, over there on, off of Industrial. I said, oh, you stay, you actually stay a couple blocks away from me. I said, let me walk you home. And she was like, all right, bet. So um, we just kicking it. We walking down the street, you know, um, just talking. I don't even know what we was talking about. But long story short, we end up getting um, to my house. And I'm like, yeah, I stay right here. She and she was like, well, I want some water. And I was like, all right, hold on. So nobody was at my house. So I went in the house, and she was standing on the porch. And then I, I was like, man, you know what? Let me see. I said, you want to come in? She was like, for what? I said, I mean, you want some water, right? She was like, yeah, but we ain't effing. I said, man, I ain't, man, I ain't thinking about that, even though I was. So she come in the house, and then she was like, you got a wa any water bottles? I was like, yeah, I got a water bottle. So I gave it to her. Now, this is where this story turns crazy. And don't worry, y'all. We going to get to the prison story. Chill out. Matter of fact, y'all hit that like button and stop playing. So I give her the water bottle, and... um. When I give it to her, she started drinking it. And then she set it down. And then I said, you ready? She was like, yeah. So we got to walking towards the door. She was like, somebody here? I was like, nah. So when I said no, I, I, no cap, she grabbed me by the shoulders, turned me around, and we got to kissing. Now, I'm not going to tell y'all what happened after that. Y'all can use y'all imagination. Well, we, end up, we end up kissing, and we end up, Let's put it this way. I went all the way, right? So we ended up doing something right there in the living room. So then after we got done, you know, I walked her home. Now, every day from that day on, me and her was like messing around like every day, either at her house or at my house or at my homeboy Al house, right? Every day for like two weeks straight. And... So I'm going to fast forward two weeks later. Now I'm back on the court. You know, me and my homeboys, we went in that full, that full press court, right? Five on five. And this dude named Antoine, he come up there. Now, unbeknownst to me, Antoine and his girl is sisters and brothers, right? And me and Antoine is the same age. He's 16, just like me. So he on the opposite team and we, we hooping. I'm talking about we hooping, right? And um, she come up there and, you know, I, I don't see the connection at all. But every time I go up for a layup, he keep following me. So I'm like, man, what's up with this dude, man? So then he filed me for the last time and I like pushed him real hard. Like I, I went up with a beautiful layup and he like filed the heck out of me. So when he did that, man, I pushed him hard and I threw the ball at him. I tried to take his head off y'all with that ball. And he was like, what's up? What's up? What's up? But then when he noticed like, yo, you in the wrong hood, man. You know, this is all Dante people. He noticed like the energy done changed of cats trying to get at him. And so his sister got in the middle of it like, uh-uh, y'all better not try to jump my brother. Uh-uh, don't try to jump my brother. Now, when she said this, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, dang. I'm like, this your brother? She's like, yeah, this my brother. Don't, don't, y'all better not try to jump him. So now, I was like, I kind of stood back, but my homeboys was chill, still trying to get at him. Now, when they was, now, when they was trying to get at him, they was like, like throwing punches towards them. And then they just said, forget it. They just jumped them. So you got like six dudes on this dude. They stumping them out. And she basically like laid on them after like 10 seconds. Like, y'all stop hitting my brother. Stop hitting my brother. Right. So I eventually was like, all right, y'all chill out. Chill, chill. Right. So 
They done whooped him out. Okay, so now let's fast forward. Let's see. 16, 10, 25. I got locked up when I was 24. So 10, eight years later. We're going to fast forward eight years later. So here I go again on the yard playing basketball. And remember, y'all, just eight years later. Hooping, right? Now, I'm new to this joint. I maybe I maybe been here at this facility maybe uh maybe four months, maybe about four months, right? And I'm out there doing my thing. I'm out there hooping. And this this cocky, swole black dude, you know, he come on the court because we was doing a pickup every time we was doing um like a rotation game because everybody wanted to hoop. So if you lose, you just get off the court and the next team get on. So we 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 killing cats. We killing these dudes. So I see him and he got his team of five. They right there and they not the team next, but they the team next after next. So we whooped the other team out. Now it's daytime, right? Now, dude look familiar to me, but not all the way. It's like, I, I'm like, I wonder do I know him from Detroit or do I know him from, from Flint? Like, where do I know this dude from? Or maybe I seen him in, in Atlanta or something. I don't know, but dude look familiar. So we get to hooping. Every time I go up, bow, he'll foul me. And I'm like, all right, all right, okay, yeah, this prison, you know, we, you know, you, you better be used to be able to bump. You better be used to be able to bump. So next thing you know, every time I go up, here he come following me. And I'm like, man, what's up with this dude, man? So he, he, he go to, he go up for a layup and I bridge him. So y'all like, Dante, what is bridging? So when, when somebody go up for a layup, you kind of, bend over like bend your back over and catch them and they you they get messed up he like he kind of somersaulted in the air and he fell on his back and he jumped up and he was like he was like man what the f your problem is man what's your problem and then i'm i'm like i said n word you keep following me i ain't gonna let you keep following me and he was like man oh oh you think s sweet you think s sweet yeah I, you, I, you, yeah, I know you um was telling everybody that you F my sister and all this and that. Now I'm like, huh? Like, what is this dude saying? What are you talking about? So he's like, yeah, yeah, you thought I forgot. You thought I forgot. You you was going around telling people you F my sister. Hold on, hold, 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 hold on, y'all. Hold on, audience. First of all, Dante was never, and I repeat, never that type of dude if i ever messed around with a chick i never told nobody except maybe my homeboy al that's it i wasn't the type of dude that was going around kissing and telling because my philosophy was this if you if a girl give you some right and especially she older than you and don't want nobody to know if she give you some and you go out there telling everybody then she ain't gonna give you no more you know what i'm saying so that was my whole philosophy and then I mean, then even outside of that, I was just not that type of dude. You know, what I do is what I do. I ain't got to tell everybody, but, you know, I would tell Al because that was my dude. So I'm thinking why he said, yeah, you told my sister I ain't forgot none of that and this and that. And I'm thinking like, man, what is this dude talking about? I'm like, I'm like, you know me or something? He like, yeah, yeah, what one you stand on at me? I'm like, yeah, he like. Yeah, N word. Yeah, N yeah. I'm saying, you know, I gotta bleep out the custom words, y'all know, cause YouTube be trying to silence me. They already blackballing me, so y'all hit that like button. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I stayed on at me. He was like, yeah, yeah, I ain't forget about that and how you and your homeboys jumped me. I'm like, oh, oh, this. I said, Twan. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now at this time, he trying to buck up on me, so. I'm, it's all registering to me like, hold on. This, first of all, I, I ain't saying this to him because I ain't explaining nothing. But I'm thinking to myself like, I didn't jump this dude. I don't want to got my dudes up off this dude, right? And um, 
I'm thinking like, yo, what the heck? So after that, he like, he like, yeah, man, run, run a fade, run a fade with me, run a fade with me. So my cats was like, man, get out of here, man. You, you trying to fight D over a B over a B you trying to fight D over a B. He like, Hey, Hey, bro, don't call my sister. No B don't call my sister. No B bro. And my homie, my, y'all already know how Al is. Al like, man, I ain't trying to hear none of that. He just took off on him. So when he took off, I had to take off. And the other three cats that was with me took off on him. Now, we we whooping them. And the guards, we see them coming. So we disperse real quick. So now, we getting chased all through the yard and all this and that. And it was a big yard. So it, it went down. We was playing basically Tom and Jerry for the next two minutes until he racked. He racked back that nine lethal shotgun to have them blocks in it. So, hey, we got down, cuffed up, got up out of there, right? So about a week after that, we back on the block. Well, I'm on the block, I should say. Tell me why they put me in this dude block, right? I don't know nobody in this block at all. It's him and about four dudes just with him, right? So they see me come in. I don't even see these cats. They see me come in. When I come in, I go to my cell. It wasn't nothing but maybe five minutes later. So I'm in there unpacking my stuff, and I'm the only cat in the cell. I ain't got no cell, mate. I see this black dude, this black short, ugly dude walk past, and he, he peek his head in. And then I'm like, can I help you? He like, hey, uh, your name Dante? I was like, yeah, why, what's up? He said, oh, okay, okay. So I'm like, oh, man. So I'm instantly looking around the cell to see what can I break off right quick. Because if, if he on some BS, I'm just going to have to make an example. And this 2 to 10 that I'm about to serve, about to turn to 10 to 20, right? So he, I, I can't find nothing. They say, you know, here come Anton, right? He come in and there's like four cats behind him, and he, they like y'all know how you be put, how you had your hand open, and you boil your fist up and like punching your, your fist. He like, yeah, yeah, bruh, yeah. So at that time, y'all, I ain't had nothing but my laundry bag, right, with my commissary and my items. So I hear you up and wrap that thing around my my fist, and we got to going. I ain't gonna lie, y'all, they got me. They got me. Now, listen, everybody that know me, they already know what my prison record is. Matter of fact, in the comment section, if y'all been following me, y'all know what my prison record is. But I did not get, I, it wasn't, this wasn't a one-on-one -on -one fight, y'all. I got jumped. So that don't count. So it is what it is. But anyway, y'all, happy holidays. Make sure y'all hit that like button, share the video, and um, y'all have a good Happy holidays. And with that, I'm out. Happy holidays, everybody. I got another crazy prison story for y'all. And no, Chris Brown don't have nothing to do with this prison story. However, the main character of this story look just like Chris Brown. I know y'all miss seeing my beautiful face, but I'm on vacation. I'm not at my studio, so this is the only way I can tell y'all these stories. So with that, let's get to it. Oh, 
shit. Here we go again. So we got this dude named CB, which we're going to call Chris Brown because he really kind of looked like him. You got this dude named Tree. So I told y'all about Tree already. Tree was this tall white dude that was a, um, let me say, um, he was a prior drug addict. Y'all know the type that been off of drugs for maybe four or five months. But you can just tell when you look at him like, yeah, he, he was a drug addict. But, you know, Tree was a compulsive gambler and a compulsive liar, too. So one day he go to CB, which we're going to call Chris Brown. He he like, hey, bro, hey, you think I can get a bag of chips? Now, CB, that's all he did was eat chips all day, all day long. When it was commerce every day, store day, that's all he would get was chips. So, treat like, hey, bro, uh, you think I can get me a, uh, you can hold me down to um, store day with a bag of chips? He like, yeah, bro, but you know I need three back. He like, man, come on, CB, don't, come on, man, let me just give you two back, you know, one for two. He like, nah, bro, nah, I, I, I need mine. He like, all right, all right, man, all right, all right. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what. How about if I let you in on this spread that I'm about to do? Because I really don't need the tips. I really don't need them. But, you know, I just want a little extra crunch to it. So, but uh, if I let you in on the spread, you, you we could do the one for two. He like, no, I'm good. I'm good. He like, all right, man, let, 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 let me just get the chips, man. I'll give you three back. He like, now, me, when I was running a store or somebody asked me for something, I do one for two, but if I don't like you, yeah, I'm hitting you with one for three. So he gave him a bag of chips, y'all. Now, about, let's say, about two hours go by, and Tree come over there, and he like, hey, here, um, I, I don't need the chips. I don't need the chips. So he kind of tossed them on um Chris Brown's bed. And he like, he looking at the bag, and he like, Dante, here, look at these chips. Do something, seem off. So he hand me the chips, and I'm looking, I'm like, it ain't no air in it. Now, we all know that when you buy a bag of chips, 50% of the bag, wait, I can't even say 50% since inflation, 70% of the bag is full of air, right? This chip bag that he gave me, it was no air in it. So I'm like, huh, that's kind of odd, but it wasn't open though. So I'm like, well, did he poke a hole like in it and let the air out? Like I'm, I'm looking at this bag. I know that there's no air in it. And it's like, huh? So he like, you, you something wrong with, so I'm like, yeah, something is wrong with it. So as I'm really looking at like the top of it, it's, it, it looked like it has been open. But it was sealed back. But as I'm investigating it more, it's like it's glued back. Like glue. You can like see glue. And I said, yeah, man, he opened his bag. He glued it back up. You can see it right here. So I'm showing him. He said, hey, man, Tree. Tree, come here, man. Come here. Tree come over. He like, what, what, what's up? What's going on? He like, bruh, man. Why you why you open this bag of chips? He was like, what you mean? I didn't open up that bag of chips. He like, bro, man, look at this, man. You got glue all on this thing right here. And he like, man, that's how you gave it. That's like, he like, bro, man, stop playing, man. That's, if, if this is a joke, just say that, man. Stop, you know, you ain't got to do all that. Now, Tree, like, man, hey, man, uh, man, hey, like I said, you, you calling me a liar or something? You calling me a liar? Listen, y'all. Tree is one of them type of dudes that if he feel like he in the corner, like his back against the wall, and he know he dead wrong, he want to get loud, he want to clap his hands, and y'all know that jazz. So he like, man, bro, I, I told you, I, I, I'm i giving you, I gave you back the bag of chips the same way you gave me. So I, I don't know what happened. I, uh, and, 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 and I don't appreciate you calling me no lie neither. So... CB like, man, Dante, hand me a bag of chips. So I get him one of my bag of chips. And he's like, dude, I gave you chips that was just like this. 
It was air in it. It was nothing wrong with it. You could compare, the, and the heat started going to other cats. Like, hey, let me see a bag of chips. Let me see a bag. See a bag of chips. Now, Tree standing there with his arm folded. So he he like, look at these bag of chips, and this is how I gave it to you. Why, I mean, look at this. I mean, that's just be real, man. You opened it up. You used some of the chips. You tried to beat me out of a bag of chips, so you didn't have to pay me, man. So I mean, just just be real. He like, man, bro, man, I, man, I got, man, hey, man, I'm, I'm gonna get mad. I'm gonna get mad. So this white dude named Castle, I told y'all about Castle already. Now Castle, maybe a week ago, ended up getting Tree in crazy debt. Now I told y'all Tree was always gambling. He always was gambling. He was a compulsive gambler and he was always losing. And the prior week ago, Castle beat him out of all his commissary and all his trades for a week, right? And when Dante was giving him his boiled egg, I gave, I was giving Tree my boiled eggs off of my breakfast tray because, you know, I don't want to see nobody starve. Castle approached me, was like, man, no, D, let that N-word starve. Let that N-word starve. You said, wait, 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 hold up, Dante. So Castle is a white dude and he's saying the N-word. Listen, in Columbus, Ohio, all right there's a lot of white dudes and that's how they program that's how they program they the white cats can say the n-word or well let me put more emphasis on that some white cats can say the n-word now when i it was shocking to me when i first got up in there and i heard white cats saying the n-word and i'm not seeing no black dude say nothing about it and i'm thinking like okay i guess this just they culture right funny story i actually seen two white cats arguing and one white dude was like man shut up white boy i'll beat your white a i'll beat your white a and he's like dude you're white too and he was like man no but you white white you white white hey have, let me let me ask y'all a question in the comment section number one where's y'all from and have y'all ever heard like two white cats arguing or two white girls arguing and they like shut up white boy or shut up white girl and they white too let me know in the comment section have y'all ever seen that or witnessed that and let me know where y'all from right so he, he he like castle like hey man you need to pipe down and he he like man no man no he over here trying to accuse me of you know i i didn't not now now just a few minutes ago tree was over there barking now when castle done stepped in now he explained it himself and i took a little bit of that bass out of his voice so he like no nah, man castle look man he he talking about i um opened a bag of chips and took some out and sealed it back up so castle like man let, let me see the bag let me see the bag so cb which is chris brown and he gave him a bag and he looking at it, he said Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You, man, stop playing, man. You man, get that man his stuff, man. He like, what, what, man? What, what's me his stuff? He like, come on, man. We we can clearly see you open the bag up, man. Ain't even no air in his bag. Look at all this glue right here, man. So, Castle opened the bag, like like open it, open it. You can see the glue just peel. We like, come on, man. Stop playing, man. Get that man his stuff. He like, man, bro, man. I'm I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, I. Uh, I, I ain't do that, man. That's how he gave it to me. So Castle like, man, you going to keep lying, huh? You just going to keep lying. So he like, man, I, I, I ain't saying that I, I, I ain't lying, but that's how he gave it to me. So Castle look at CB, which is Chris Brown, was like, hey, man, look, give me a couple bags of chips and I'll beat this dude A for you. So he like, man. Man, I, man, I, I ain't trying to fight, man. I ain't trying to fight you, bro. I ain't trying to fight you. So he like, he like, no, nah, man, because I'm tired of you lying, man. You, you just a, you just a weird dude, man. You just a weird dude, man. You West Side dudes is weird in the mug, man. Why you, why would you open up that bag of chips and try to lie about it, man? So he like, man, I ain't lying, bro. So Castle like, hey, man, give me a couple bags of chips so I can beat this dude up. So CB was like. Man, nah, I, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. He was like, you know what, man, whatever. So then, um, Castle ended up grabbing Tree and like, like, grabbing by his collar and was like muscling him. Now everybody looking like, oh, dang, hey, look at Castle over there. 
putting hands on tree. So we all looking, and he like, man, let me go, bro. Let me go. Let me go. He was like, no, nah, man, I don't like you, man. I don't like you, man. Why you Why you trying to beat the homie out on some chips? He like, man, man, no, I wasn't, man. Castle, I swear to God, man. I swear to God. He like, man, stop swearing to God, man. Stop, stop taking the Lord's name in vain. He like, man, I'm for real, Castle, man. Let me go, bro. Let me go. Let me tell y'all something. See, he had all that smoke for CB, right? Because he was smaller than him. But when Castle came over there and literally put hands on him, he wanted to talk it out. He wanted to cop, please. And, oh, man, it, it wasn't even like that. So now, you know, Castle, like, shaking him up like a rag doll. Like, man, go over there and apologize to that man. Apologize to him. So at this point, he got treat like, in like a like a, like a, a halfway head like and he hole in his hair. Tree had long hair too, so he got his hair like in a bun and he like like rotating his like how can I put it? He like moving his head direct. Castle fist is basically rotating tree head right like a bobblehead type thing and he's like man tell him you sorry tell him you sorry for lying he like man bro i'm sorry bro no my bad man that that was on me bro my my bad man i, I shouldn't ever did that so castle was like all right all right so then he let him go so then tree walked off and castle was like yeah man that that i don't like that dude man i don't like that dude. i want to get that dude up out of here so cb was like yeah, bro, you, you you ain't have to do that to him, man. It, it, it's all good. He like, no, nah, man, I just don't like that dude, man. I promise I don't like these West Side dudes, man. These these drug out of these dope fiends, man. They be always doing stuff, making the rest of us white boys look bad in here, man. I'm tired of these dudes, man. So they see, you know, Tree is over there on the door. Now, everybody know in Jackson Pike, <coughs> if, you, if you trying to get out the pod, what you do, you go over there to the door and you get the banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. They call it the tap out. So um, tree tapping out. He banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Kicking on the door. Boom, boom, boom. Guard comes to the door. Man, what's going on, man? Hey, I fear for my life, man. I got to get out of here, man. The guard like, oh, I mean, what's going on? I mean, did somebody threaten you? Man, I don't want to be no snitch. I don't. Now, everybody watch because when you when somebody tap out, everybody going to see who tapped out. And everybody just watching. He's like, no, man, I don't want to snitch, man. I don't want to snitch. He's like, well, if you ain't going to give me no name and telling me exactly what's going on, I ain't letting you out. So the guard about to close the door. He's like, no, man, come on, man. Open the door. Open the door. So he kind of rushed the guard. Now, if you hit the guard, you gone. You about to go You about to go to the hole. So instead of him, you know, ratting Castle out and telling what was going on, you know, I guess he took that assault charge on the guard. And I'm pretty sure if they whooped Tree out. So, rather Castle putting it, putting hands and feet on him, I guess he said he ready to get beat by the guards. So, yeah. Oh, happy holidays, y'all. Um, I will be coming back um, and giving y'all the regular videos real soon. It's just I'm out of town and I'm not in my studio, so I have to give y'all this non-visual story. But, you know, again, y'all, let me know where y'all are from in the, com in the comment sections. And um, happy holidays. And with that, y'all, I'm out.
here we go again. All right, y'all. Happy holidays to everybody out there. And I hope everybody having a good day. All right, we're going to do another non-visual story, but it's still going to be great. Also, Chingy do not have nothing to do with this video. I repeat, Chingy do not have nothing to do with this video. All right, so let's get to it. So I had a homeboy named Ace. And he like, yo, Dante, have you ever heard of Backpage? I'm like, Backpage, what's that? He said, well, basically, you can call this number and uh, you can get chicks to come to your crib. And I'm like, what's that, like some prostitution type thing? He said, nah, no, nah, it's like, you know, well, basically, it's this website that you go to. And you call, you know, you look at different girls and, you know, you call them and then, you know, they come over and then, y'all know, we do what we do. I'm like, man, that sounds like some prostitution thing. He's like, man, not really. I mean, I mean, yeah, they they want some money, but I mean, you we can give them something else. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real with y'all. Dante ain't never, ever paid for nothing like that. I don't involve myself with that. I'm not the type. I feel like if I got to pay for it, I don't want it. So he like, man, big man D. So, all right, look, I got already like dealt with like two girls already. I'm like, okay. I mean, like what happened? He like, shoot, they came over, you know, one girl now due to YouTube laws and regulations. I can't say what he said, but let's just say. He had a real good time, according to him, with these two girls. So I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm straight. That that ain't for me. So he like, man, man, dude, I'm telling you, man, it's you should check it out. I'm like, nah, that ain't my style. I'm 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 good. So and I know how y'all people be thinking out there, trying to throw a jacket on me. I know y'all be like, oh, I can see it now. Y'all gonna be like, oh. Yeah, man, Dante, no, he called that number. No, I didn't. Sorry. So let's get back to the story. So he like, all right, man. So I was like, all right, man, I'm out. So at this time, y'all, this happened in Flint, Michigan. But I lived in Pontiac, and I was at his house at this time. So I left, and I got on the expressway, and I went back home. So he called me like two hours later. He like, hey, man, they over here, man. They doing this. They doing that, man. Man, you should come over, man. Come back. I said, man, dude, I'm at home. I'm chilling. So he tell one of the girls to get on the phone. And she like, hey, um, yeah, you should come and party and all this and that. And I'm like, oh, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. She's like, man, stop acting like a punk. You should come back. And all this now, like, nah, I'm straight. I'm good. Right, so then he get on the phone, and he like, man, I'm finna call my, oh, I was about to say my, my other homeboy, now he, he gonna be mad when he hit this video, but I'm not gonna say his name, but he know who he is, and if he listening, he know exactly what I'm talking about, right, but I ain't gonna put him out there like that, so he say he gonna call our other homeboy so he can get in on the action, so we get off the phone, he called my other homeboy, and my other homeboy, he down with it. So he goes over there. Now, this is where this story get real tricky. Now, my homeboy said when he got over there, when he walked in the door, when they seen him and he seen them, he pulled my homeboy Ace to the side and was like, yo, I need to talk to you. Now, my homeboy Ace, he was all coked up, right? So he really wasn't paying attention to what my homeboy was telling him. And what my homeboy was telling him was like, hey, hey, man, them dudes, them ain't girls. And he like, man, what you mean? And man, get out of here. Stop hating, man. This uh, this part, this one of the, um, how can I put it? One of the um, so-called girls, I guess, went down on him. So he already done did what he been doing with them. So he like, man, get out of here, man. You hate it. And my homeboy like, man, I'm telling you, trust me. I know th them dudes, right? So my homeboy leave and he called me. And he like, man, D, and, hey, um, you know what Ace over there doing? I said, yeah, man, he called me. And I'm like, man, what's up with that back page stuff? Like, what is that? He was like, man, forget all that, man. He got some dudes over there 
and they and it's really gay guys. They like transsexuals or something. I said, what? He like, yeah. I said, wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. So you telling me that this back page thing is for gay people or something? He like, nah, nah, nah. It ain't for gay people. It's, it's like all type of people on there. It's basically like what prostitutes be on. You know, you call them. I said, oh, so it is like a prostitution thing. He said, yeah, they just... You know, they got their profile and all this and that on there. You go on there and you call the you call their number and y'all meet up or they meet with you somewhere and y'all do what y'all do. I said, so so he called some gay people over there? He said, No, I, I don't think he know that they like these are dudes. And I said, That's crazy. That's crazy. He like, yeah. I said, Did you tell him? He said, Yeah, I just tried to tell him, but he all coked up and he ain't trying to hear it. I said, hey, well, hey, it is what it is at that point, right? So he like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go tell him one more time. Like, hey, man, these these dudes or whatever, right? So I said, all right. So he go back in there and I'm listening. He like, hey, bro, I need to talk to you. Why one of the, um, the, uh, one of the gay guys like, hey, don't I know you? And, but he said it in a girl voice. He was like, don't, don't, hey, don't I know you or something? And he was like, nah, you don't know me. And he like, I do know you. Ain't you blah, 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 blah. Now, I know that my homeboy used that alias name. Like, he used it that whatever the name that the gay guy said was the name that my homeboy alias name is, where he tell people his name is, Right. And when he said that, the phone hurried up and went dead. So my homeboy hung the phone up. Now, that got me thinking, like, hold up. Why did he hang the phone up like that? If he, oh, I wondered it. Yeah, he must have messed around with him. And he thought he, he, he caught him off guard. That's why he hung the phone up on me. So I'm like, oh, man. I, 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 almost, I almost said my homeboy name, too. And I know he be listening, too. Well, I almost said his name, but I said, oh, no, man, I know he ain't. So I call back. I'm calling back. I'm just constantly calling back. I'm like, nah, he got to, you got to explain yourself. So then he called me back like 20 minutes later. I said, hey, man, so let me get this straight. He said, no, D, listen, no, it ain't even like that. Eh? I said, well, what is like then? He like, man, listen, so I end up calling, you know, these chicks or whatever that I thought was chicks and you know they came over and you know I was high and I was smoking a little weed and my cousin he was messing around with them first and you know I was just chilling on the couch and when they when they came in there to, to talk to me you know I was hugged up that's that's the only thing me and one of them did we were just hugged up I was on the couch and I was just hugged up and I was playing 2k and I said, okay. I said, so what happened? He said, nothing happened. You know, we were just hooked up on the couch and then they left. And then um, they ended up getting it. They ended up getting it to it with his girl coming. I guess they, when they was leaving out, his girl was coming up the stairs of, of the apartment. And they, she was like, where y'all come from? And they get to argue and he had to go up there and break the fight up. That's where he realized that these are two dudes. And he said, like, that's why the dude, I guess the gay guy recognized him. And was like, hey, ain't you so and so? And he was like, yeah, but. And I said, well, why you hang the phone up? He said, I ain't hang the phone up. The phone just, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know. So I was like, all right, man, whatever. So now keep that in mind. Now, maybe two days later, my homeboy Ace called me. And he was like, yeah, D, man, I got to tell you something. I'm like, what, what, what's going on? He like, man, I, I I think one of them chicks gave me something. I was like, why? What, what's going on? He said, man, I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, I'm just not feeling right. Can you take me to the clinic? Remember, y'all, I stay way in Pontiac, man. So I'm like, all right, man, here I come. So I get in the car and I get down there and I pick him up. We going to the clinic. I said, so what happened? He said, man, I was, I was just high and. You know, I I messed around with both of them. You know, we had like a threesome or something. All I'm thinking in my head, like, man, I hope, like, dude, like, you don't even. I'm like, I, I, so I'm like, hey, um, you know, 
I almost said my homeboy name, but I was like, you know, uh, I was told that there was dudes. He was like, man, what's the name said that too, man? But he, he, you know, he always trying to be funny, man. And I was like, nah, man, I'm dead serious. I, 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 I really, you need to really like figure that out and investigate that. Long story short, y'all, they said that. So I guess when the doctors asked him, like, was he sexually active and all that stuff, and he told them, you know, that he had threesome with, you know, two women, and, you know, he explained to that he met them off back page. So they said, well, it's too early to detect anything, so we're just going to give you, like, a shot for chlamydia or gondoree or something like that. So he get that going or whatever. So we, we, um, we get back in the car, and... He like, man, there could be no dudes. I said, man, I'm finna call him. I'm finna call um, our mutual homeboy. So I call him, and he like, what's up? I said, hey, man, tell tell Ace what you told me. He was like, oh, about um, them, them, them gay dudes? I said, yeah. He, he was like, yeah, man, them dudes. And so them two got the lightweight argument back and forth like, man, quit playing, man, because I'm saying that, man. I ain't gay, I ain't gay, and all this and that, right? So they, he said, so they just going back and forth or whatever. So they ain't getting, they ain't getting nowhere. So I'm like, all right. So he like, man, them one of them dudes, man. I, I'm telling you, they ain't them dudes. I drop him off. I go to my mama house. I'm chilling on the couch, y'all. It's like nine o'clock at night. These two individuals on back page is getting around, right? Why? Ace called me around like 9.30. Like, man, D, D, man, hey, man, it is, they, they dudes, man. Man, my cousin over here, and they, they over here, man, we about to beat they ASS. We about to beat they ASS, man. These some dudes. These some niggas, man. Oh, man, these are dudes. So I'm like, what? what, what, What's going on? Yeah, man, we got them in the house over here. Man, these dudes, man. Let me tell y'all something. I guess, I, I'm saying I guess because I wasn't there. I just heard what was going on. And what was what was told to me is, you know, I guess um, his cousin or him, I'm guessing him or his cousin caught them over again to have a good time. And somebody blasting them out like somebody, a third person came out of nowhere and told like, yeah, these is dudes or something like that. So when that happened, I guess the altercation happened and they found out that these so-called girls was actually dude and they got to fighting and it just went down. And, you know, my homeboy called me and was like, yeah, these dudes and all this and that. And it, it just went left. So the whole point of telling y'all this story is that, hey, you cats out there that be out here playing these military mind games, and that goes on both sides of the field. If you a cat out there and you ain't married or you is married and you out here trying to sneak off and be with prostitutes and getting on these websites trying to solicit um, sexual activities and all that, y'all better be careful. Be very careful because you might end up like my homeboy Ace out there playing military mind games with military minded people. Now, like I said, um, whatever a man do in his bedroom, that's what he do in his bedroom. I can't tell a man what to do in his bedroom. I don't want to know what's going on in your bedroom. Like I tell you, I can never tell a man how to program. And I would never tell somebody what to do with what they do. Y'all remember what Dwight Howard said? Dwight Howard said, what I do with my wood is what I do with it. It ain't nobody business. And I, hey, it ain't nobody business. But my point of telling y'all this story is, hey, y'all better chill out. Keep it at home. Um, start doing right. Stop fornicating. And with that, y'all, happy holidays. I got some more crazy stories that's dropping. I'm going live this Wednesday at 6 p.m. All right. And with that, I'm out. Next thing you know, we see her running back coming our way and he on her tail 
And when you catch up to it, he grabbed her by the back of her collar and get them. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Before we start this video, I want to ask everybody in the comment section a question. And this is particularly for the men, but women, you can answer this too. If a man see another man beating the dog crap out of his girlfriend or wife, should another man intervene? This is what this whole story is all about. Now, back in what, 2007 or 2008, this when I was in Atlanta, right? So me and my brother, we sitting on the porch and this big dude come running down the street. So we see him running down the street and then we see his girl running after him. So we like, okay, you know, that ain't unusual in Atlanta. It's always crazy stuff going on in Atlanta. Next thing you know, we see her running back coming our way and he on her tail. And when he catch up to it, he grab her by the back of her collar and get the bam, bam, bam. I'm talking about strong on punching her completely out, okay? He done knocked her to the ground and everything. So me, being who I am, I get up and I'm like, come on, bro, let's go. And as I'm going to the right to get off the porch, my brother, which, which was the stepper that I told y'all about, he grabbed me and he was like, bro, leave that alone i'm like what you mean leave that alone he like bro what if he pull out a gun and pop you then i'm gonna have to pop him right and then i was like man man we can take this dude man i ain't even trying to hear that he was like dude you got a son don't go down there and i thought about it like you know what what if i do go down there and i try to intervene and then he take my life. And then now my son out here by himself. So that's the reason why I want to ask y'all that question in the beginning. Because when I went to Columbus, Ohio, I met this woman, um, this Spanish lady. I got a job at um, a company called GC Services. And what they do there, they are the people that call you for the student loans. So I know all the tricks and trades about um, student loan debt and, and how they play that military mind game, y'all. But anyway, so I meet this woman and we in the break room and you know, we just chopping it up, kicking it. And she was like telling me like her whole life story. Like, you know, so we sitting there and she was like, where you from? I was like, it really kind of depends. I'm from all over. She was like, you ain't from Ohio, are you? I'm like, no. Nah. She was like, so where you from? I'm like, I mean, Michigan, Georgia. Um, that's really, yeah, I've been back and forth to both places. So she was like, oh, okay. And you know, you got like a country, you know, slang. I'm like, I mean, so my cousins down south, they got it way worse. So, you know, I'm telling her about me. And then I asked, I said, like, you got a boyfriend? She was like, no, I ain't got a boyfriend. I had a husband. I said, what happened? Y'all got a divorce or something? Then she got like, oh, teary eye. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe, I done, maybe he done hurt her so bad or something. This is all I'm thinking because he got quiet for a minute. So she was like, no, nah, no. Nah. When we first got here to Columbus, you know, it was going down James Street. And um, this white guy was beating the crap out of his girl. And, you know, my husband did a U-turn in the street, got out the car, got to tussling with the man, and he ended up, you know, shoot my husband, and he died right there on the scene. Not only that, not only when he got shot, the woman that was getting whipped out by her boyfriend or whoever he was to her, ended up like trying to fight with her, with, with the lady, with the wife, and then they both jump in the car and they get up out of there. So she was like, yeah, you know, my husband, he, he lost his life trying to defend this lady. And she was trying to fight me after my husband got shot. And I was like, dang. Now, the reason why I'm telling y'all this story is because this is something really critical, really critical. 
I was watching um, Cam Newt, Cam Newton show a couple days ago, and he had Charleston White on there, and Charleston White was saying like, um, "Yeah, man, if I seen a man whooping this female or whatever, I'm minding my business." And Cam Newton was like, "No, I'ma do something," and this and that, and you know, both of them had valid points, but. Now that I think about it, it was another situation, man. This is why I need this is why I need to get the feel of the audience for y'all to let me know how y'all feel about this because I got stories on top of stories of men interfering with other men's situations and the woman began beat and abused and all this and that, but she ended up going back with the man. I can give y'all another story from one of my cousins. So my female cousin, her baby daddy always whipping her out, whipping her tail. And what me and my brothers and her brothers would do every time we see them, we get on them. Not get on them, you know, with with guns and stuff, but you know, putting hands on them. Till one day, I'm over there spending the night. We we in the projects. I'm spending the night over there. I guess she went to the club, me and him down there playing mad. She went to the club, she came back around three o'clock in the morning. When she came in, I was already kind of sleepy, so I just went upstairs because you know, I figured they probably wanted some alone time. So I go upstairs and I'm trying to go to sleep and I am arguing. So I'm like, oh man, here we go again. So it's like I hear him arguing, but he not really trying to get real extra loud because he know I'm upstairs, but it done got to a point where I heard boom. So I instantly jump up and I like kick the stairs because they had a, a townhouse, like the first level and the second level and I'm upstairs. So I hear this loud boom noise. So I get up out the bed and I draw down the stairs and I see her getting up slowly and he looked at me, he got big deer eyes, like, oh shoot. So I'm just standing there seeing what's about to happen next. And she was like, oh, 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 you gonna, you gonna slam me? You gonna slam me? Dante beat his A, beat his A. And I'm just sitting now at this point, y'all, I'm just sitting on the stairs because I know he had to slam her, but all I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, she done been with this dude for two years. And they they all, it, what what would she do if I wasn't here? So I'm just saying, I'm like, all right. I said, all right, bro, um, chill out. Go upstairs and go sleep. But he was like, no, man, forget that, man. I know she F somebody. She F somebody while she was at the club, man. I can tell, man, because I, I, it's the smell that she be having, bro. It's the smell that she be having when we be having sex, bro. And no, I ain't going for that. I ain't going for that. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real, y'all. When it, this is why I say people got to stay out of people's business. And I know we got females in our family and men supposed to protect these women. But women, y'all make it hard for us. Especially if you out there doing dirt. Especially like, come on, man. So she like, yeah, I did. I did. That's why your D small and all this and that. And he like, what? What? And all I know is his hand went up like this. And before, I, I, I don't know how I got down there so quick, but his hand went up like this and come down and I grabbed him like this. Now, dude was a little bit taller than me and a little bit bigger than me, right? So when I grabbed him like this, he kind of like shoved me off, like kind of slinged me that way. So then I'm like, oh, hold on, dude just threw me off my balance. So I end up grabbing him this way and I'm holding him and he now he holding me. So we both gripped. And she like punching him in the back of his head. She done punched me a couple times. I'm like, yo, chill. So man, him basically tug, tussling like this. So he like, man, Dante, let me go. Let me go, bro. Let me go, bro. And, and I, I, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. The way I was feeling, I'm like, yo, he, and, 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 and please don't crucify me in the comment section. I'm just a human. I'm only human, but I feel what dude's saying. Because it's like if 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 I had a girl and she went out to the club and she got some heavy D from a cat, and I know when we mess around, it's a certain smell she give off, and I smell that strongly. Nah, I man, you can't tell me nothing. I mean, I ain't gonna put my hands on her. 
But at the same time, you know, we gonna have an issue. And you know, I always, and, and, and here's a disclaimer, y'all. Y'all know how Dante give it up. But at the same time, I tell men all the time, if you feel like you gotta put your hands on a woman, get out of there, get out of there. But if you can't get out of there for whatever situation, whatever the circumstance is, Dante say, at best, you can grab a woman and restrain her. Never ball your fist up, never open your hand. You can grab a woman and restrain her if she's trying to attack you, okay? Let me know how y'all how y'all feel about that in the comment section. So as me and him tussling, I'm thinking to my I really don't even want to do nothing to him because I can beat this dude one on one. But we we over here tussling at this point. But I'm I'm really thinking to myself like, dang, what, what am I even doing? I if, even back then when I was that age, what was I like? Twenty at this time, and I'm thinking to myself like. If one of my chicks, because I was a player back then, if one of my chicks would have did that to me, like, <laughs> dog, Dante, you better get out my face with that. Oh, don't chill out. But, I mean, I'm in a tough bind, y'all, because my cousin, my female cousin is in the wrong all the way. And, dude, it, I, I would have snapped too, probably. So, I'm really not trying to throw punches with this dude. But at the same time, I don't want him kick, kicking my cousin tail. So I basically like switch my brain from being offensive and trying to like could probably go there with dude. So I'm like, you know what? No, let me just get him out the house and we go walk and go talk. So I'm like, come on, bro, let's just go outside. So my demeanor, my whole tone changed. It went from me being aggressive to, to understand. And I'm like, all right, bro. All right, bro. Come, come on. I, I get it. I get it, bro. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. So I'm kind of. And I done let this hand go and I'm pushing her back because she said he's trying to pop off on him. So I'm pushing her back. So I'm kind of muscling him outside the door. So we get out there and he like, man, bro, man, I swear to God, man, I'm tired of this beat, man. I'm tired of this beat, man. She always cheating on me, bro. Man, how you, how, and he doing this. How, how would you feel, bro, if your beat was cheating on you? How would you feel if your was cheating on you, bro? And I, he like, man, I'm just sick of this, man. I swear to God, man, I, man. So I'm trying to calm him down. We, we just walking and talking, right? So um, after that, he calmed down. We go back to the house. He sleep on the couch. I go back upstairs. She upstairs, passed out drunk, right? Um, The next morning, they downstairs. I, I overslept, whatever. They downstairs. And like nothing happened at all. But when I woke up, Dante was sore. I'm talking about, I felt like with all this shifting and moving and tussling with dude, yo, I felt like I just got hit by a Mack truck. I, I woke up sore. And I was just thinking to myself, when I got downstairs and seeing them all lovey-dovey and all that, I'm thinking like, why did I even, why did I even go through all that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm sweating and carpet burning, joints all hurting, just for them to be. I don't know, y'all. I just let me know how y'all feel about that. Let me know how y'all feel about this whole video because I really want to know. Because at best, it, it's like it's hard for me because I'm. I just don't like seeing anybody get pummeled, okay? But it's it's one of them things that even if you wanna choose your battle to break up a fight, you just never know what could happen, man. It's it's like, oh, uh, I don't know. Even to this day, man, it, it's like, will Dante break up a fight when a man putting his hands on a woman? Probably, but the way I go about it will probably be like, I might have my hands open like this and be like, come on, bro. Like, you know, probably grabbing at the dude and saying words like, come on, bro, don't, don't do this. You don't want to go to jail. Um, um, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I don't know. Cause I, I don't want the guy to feel like I'm, I'm invading this space or I'm trying to punk him or trying to cause any 
physical harm to him. I mean, at best, I mean, I want this, this to stop, but at the same time, I don't want to come off as a threat. I want to come and like, listen to me, bro. Stop doing this. Um, you don't want to go to jail. This is not right because I'm going to tell y'all something else. I'm going to, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to give y'all a different story at a later time. There was a woman. I seen the video. I can't play it on YouTube because they're going to flag this video. But I seen a video that when I first seen it, my heart went out to the girl. It went out to the girl. Hits the thumbnail. So you got this chick. She at this gas station. And maybe y'all seen the video. But she, she at the gas station. It's like three dudes trying to pull her out of a car. And when they get her out the car, they get to putting hands and feet on her. And then like five more people jump in and like 10. Now you got like a whole mob trying to get at this girl, right? Or they getting at her. So she get in the stove and she like trying to get behind the counter and they just, they be basically beating the brakes off of her. Turns out, now me watching the video, I feel, I thought it was some gang stuff. You know, they just caught a chick from another neighborhood and they said, yo, it is what it is. But turns out she set somebody up and whoever she set up, this was the brother of that person that got set up that lost his life. Now, when it comes to situations like that, Dante is not the judge or the jury, okay? But women, Dante try to go to bat for y'all all the time. But in that case, I can't say nothing about that. I can't. And if y'all disagree with me in the comment section, let me know. Because it is some, it is some, and, and, and I know I've been calling a simp. I've been, people been saying, oh, Dante, you always trying to save an H, Captain Save an H. No, it's not that, man. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. But women, y'all got to do better out here. Dante can't keep coming to y'all defense when y'all doing stuff like that. All right. So with that, Dante love y'all. Y'all hit that like button, share this video, and let me know in the comment section how y'all how y'all feel about if a man is putting hands on a woman, should another man intervene? Right or wrong? Let me know in the comment section. And with that, ask Jesus to forgive you for all your sins. And Dante love you. All right, y'all. We got a woman by the name of Water of Elegance. This is her music video called My First Love. So let's check this video out together. And y'all let me know how y'all feel about this video. One, two, three, go. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this music and this music video. And with that, your big partner Dante is out.
what you mean. You got three, you got three minutes to run. So Tavis standing there like, I, I don't know what's going on. So one of the cats bust a shot at his feet, at his foot. Then he took off running through the warehouse. What Tavis did not know, this warehouse was rigged. He wasn't getting out of here alive, y'all. This was like some saw type stuff. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So you got this cat named Tavis. Tavis is one of them type of dudes that is living a alternative lifestyle of living. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So Tavis, he been in all type of different relationships. He just jump in a relationship and jump out. He go to these certain type of clubs to do all type of hookups. So now he like, you know what? I want something special. This is what Tavis saying. So Tavis, he tried to do the dating scene with that alternative lifestyle of living. And it's just not working out for him. So one day he get on the computer and he go to Craigslist. He go to a certain section of Craigslist where it's talking about like platonic relationships or hookups or whatever. So he see this ad and it says, professional in the front, party in the back. We pay $300 for an hour of your time. Now, right there should have been a huge red flag to Tavis. But Tavis like, I just want to party. The problem is, Tavis, you being so goddamn horny, it's about to cost you your existence. Now, before we get into the story, I'm going to tell y'all just like this. Me, Dante, being the enforcer of the body of Christ, even this story had me cringing. All right? I don't think nobody that is living a, a, living a alternative lifestyle of living deserve what Tavis about to receive. Okay? Even me being the enforcer of the body of Christ. And what that means is that I come, I come as the enforcer to enforce the laws and doctrines of the Holy Bible. So if any pastors out there living trifling and living bad and leading the people to destruction and mayhem, Dante is coming to visit visit you and we're going to sit down and we're going to read some Bible scriptures. So that what makes me the enforcer of the body of Christ. Now, let's get back to the story of Tavis. So Tavis, he looks at it and he say, oh, I'm calling. So he get on the phone. He get to calling. No answer. He called again. No answer. That right there should have told you, Tavis, that yo, maybe God is sparing you, showing you grace and mercy by not having these people answer. Hello? Hello? Hey, uh, this Tavis. Oh, okay. Um, what, what's this all about? Well, we're going to give you an address and you come at nine o'clock at night. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll see you there. Okay. Hey, hey, before y'all hang up, um, I'm, I'm ready to get $300. Yeah, sure. You might, you're going to get way more than that. Trust me. When you get here, we're going to have a good time. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -mm. So Tavis, we're going to fast forward all the way to what's nine o'clock. Tavis catch a taxi to this warehouse. It looked like a ran down abandoned warehouse. So when he get out, the taxi cab driver like, are you sure you want to? He like, just wait for a second. Let, let me make sure somebody actually here. So he go, knock on the door, knock on again, and somebody answer the door. Say, just one minute. So then he look back at the taxi cab driver and say, all right, go, go, go. I'm good. So the taxi cab driver drives off. And this is a key, crucial point of this story because the taxi cab driver was the last person to see Tavis alive. So this short European cat that looked at real flamboyant answers the door and say, come on in. So Tavis come in 
And what he see is a thing of nightmares, the things of horror stories, right? When he walk in, he see three big, brawlicky white boys. You know them type that live out in the woods that all they just eat, they eat potatoes and just, I don't know, they were probably eating potatoes and whole chickens all their life. He see three big, burly white cats. And they got the, you know what? And I forgot to tell y'all, and it's not a race thing, but this is a, um, how can I put it? Tavis is African-American. So Tavis thought that he was coming in there to have a good time. Nah, quite the opposite. So as soon as he come in, the European little cat run off and the three white boys got some things pointing at him like yeah 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 we got one we got one Tay was like man what's going on I, I didn't come here for that oh no you came you came to the right place boy you came to the right place <sighs> they told Tavis you got three minutes to run just three minutes. And he like, well, what you mean? You got three, you got three minutes to run. So Tavis standing there like, I, I don't know what's going on. So one of the cats bust a shot at his feet, at his foot. Then he took off running through the warehouse. What Tavis did not know, this warehouse was rigged. He wasn't getting out of here alive, y'all. This was like some saw type stuff. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave a link in the description so y'all can see the news article of this, what happened to Tavis. So now Tavis running through there and they like, here, piggy, 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 here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Tavis is petrified. He's horrified. They end up catching up with Tavis. <sighs> Due to YouTube regulations and privacy act Dante is going to spare y'all the gruesome details of what happened to Tavis but I will say this for the sake of entertainment you know the little funny European white boy he was doing things to Tavis that a man should not do to another man see Tavis was held down and well he was, his body was explored, right? Unwanted explorer. Oh. His body was explored with unwanted exploration. Okay? If that makes sense. Now, after this happened, these other three men, they didn't participate in that heinous act. What they did was far worse, if you can really say something was way far worse than that. They end up, how can I say this without getting flagged? They end up, I'm gonna try to follow. Imagine this is the human body, right? Right here, imagine this is the human body. And this is the head, the legs, the legs, the head, the arms, right? They literally, did that to the head. They also did that to the arms of Tavis. Right? And then they did this to the legs. Right? So Tavis did not have no arms, no legs, and no crown. But that wasn't the only thing they did, y'all. After all that, they grinded Tavis up. Hence the thumbnail. These cats right here, they have been on some Jeffrey Dahmer type stuff, but at a more extreme level. See these cats, they own a restaurant where they was flipping burgers. 
And when I say burgers, sliders. Y'all know the little burgers, the sliders? Well, they was using cats that they would lure into this warehouse on the promise of, of the thought that you were about to have a good time with somebody from that's living an alternative lifestyle of living. And where what you actually get is something that you wasn't trying to order. So how this all came about, well, y'all just gonna have to read the article. But I'm gonna tell y'all this. When y'all eat these burgers, now we all know what hamburger meat look like. We all know what hamburger meat look like. If you looking at, if you about to eat a burger, right? And you looking at that minced meat, when you look at that meat, you should be able to tell where hamburger meat is. But then again, I just thought about something, y'all. When you do grind meat like that in such a way, I guess you really can't tell. Y'all let me know in the comment section, because I could be wrong. I'm going to look it up after we get done with this video. But can you tell beef? from any other an animal when it's grinded up into like um, like hamburger meat? Let me know in the comment section because I really don't know. So y'all let me know. So anyway, what happened is the taxi cab driver. So dude was missing for maybe three weeks and his people got concerned. And so when they pulled the files of the, the, the um, cell tower, they realized that, okay, he caught this taxi cab company and they ran everything back and they seen that, okay, so this was the taxi cab driver that picked him up at this, at this time and dropped him off here. So when they bring the taxi cab driver in for questioning, he like, yeah, I dropped him off here. And they said, did you see anybody? He said, no, but you know, I asked he, I asked him, was he sure about this? And did he want to be here? And I guess when he went to the door and somebody answered the door because he waved me off and told me he was good. So I left. So they gave, so he gave the detectives the address of this place. So you get two cops that go there, right? And when they go there, they can't get in. So they like, huh, that's odd. So they do some investigations and see that nobody owns this building and it's about to be condemned. So one of the cops have this a real gut feeling that something ain't right about this place. Something is evil about this place. Something is spiritually wrong with this place. So he go back to the car and he get a crowbar and he pop the door open and what he sees is a thing of horror a th things that no man should ever witness or woman or child what he see is a lot of red liquid everywhere he also sees certain human body parts that's laid out on this plastic that's looking like somebody about to wrap it up like some lunch meat or something so he go oof, oof, about to throw up and he run back out and get his partner and say yo we gotta we gotta call for backup we gotta call hey who is that why one of the cats that, you know, one of the hunter type dudes, why he upstairs and he yelled down, man, who is that? Police, police. A shootout erupt between the two cops and dude upstairs. Dude upstairs get hit, but he don't die. Long story short, 
when they pull him in for questioning, he tell everything. He tell the whole, they've been doing this for 10 years. The whole point of this story is for you cats out there that's living a alternative living lifestyle. Be careful. Be very careful. Because when you go out there seeking abominational things and wicked things, you see, God give us all grace and mercy. But when you intentionally turn your back on God and keep pushing away the warning signs, the warning signs that you should not do this, this could happen to you. Hey, y'all, I need for y'all to go check out Hood Adventures. That's Hood Adventures. He go around different cities and different states showcasing what goes on in people's hoods. So y'all go check him out. Y'all, if y'all looking to get y'all personal credit fixed, make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only do she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. If you got your license suspended and you facing wage garnishments and you got bad credit, some lawsuits, make sure you contact Brian at 313-492-9097. That's 313-492-9097. Y'all, we got a good brother out here by the name of Paris. He got an organization called Father Type. His mission statement is Father's Type is a mindset. It is a way for the youth to have core principles like values and morals that they believe are very important to help them guide and cultivate young men into becoming the best version of themselves by the way of a Father Type mindset. Be sure to contact Father Type if you want to become a sponsor or a mentee for troubled youth. Y'all remember I told y'all dude was so out of it when he ran out the house? Here's the killer part. When he was sitting on the couch thinking about the magnitude of what he did, he left the gun on the couch. We go again. It's not polite to ask your cellmate what they are in there for, but for the sake of knowing, I have to know what you went here for. Because number one, Dante personally cannot sell with no chomo, and I cannot sell with a man that violated a woman, and this is his charges. So I asked him, I'm like, hey, bro. What you in here for, man? I be hearing you up there whimpering and, man, what, what's up with you? He said, man, bro, I'm going to be real with you, bro. So, you know Christmas just passed, right? I said, yeah. He said, man, this is my third year. It's my third year being in here. And, then, and the reason why I get emotional around Christmas is because that's when I did the crime. I said, what, what you do? He like, man, bro, so I just lost my job two weeks before. I got three kids, I got a wife, and I just, you know, I just had it up to here, man. I was just stressed out. We was three months behind on bills, you know, the rent was due. And I'm like, man, I I just been messing up all, all year long, I've been messing up. And I'm gonna be real with you, man. I could have been putting money to the side, but I was going to strip clubs too. And, you know, spending my money on chicks. I said, okay, you know, we all, we all have our vices. He like, yeah, but I should have known better, man. The money I was making, I was doing truck driving and I, I just didn't do right by the money. And well, on Christmas Eve, across the street from us, you know, I seen the dad come in the house, you know, back and forth with all these bags of Christmas toys and stuff. And, you know, I, I was just, I don't even know where it came from, where the start came from, but as I'm watching him go for it, go from his truck 
back to his house. I'm like, man, I I know he got it. I know he got it. So I said, so what happened? He like, so I went to my room and I grabbed the you know what. And I sat there in my doorway and just kept watching him, watching him. This is my neighbor right across the street. So I put on my coat and I went and knocked on the door because he was done putting, you know, the stuff in the house, but he was in the house, so I knocked on the door. So he comes to the door and say, who is it? You know, I say my name and he like, oh, so he opened the door because I'm his neighbor. When he opened the door, I upped the cannon on him. And he like, oh, bro, what, what, what's going on? What, 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 what's, what's happening? What, why are you doing this? And he said like, he kind of zoned out and he just like, was it was an out of body, out of mind, like an out of body experience. And he said it felt like so surreal. But what made it so surreal and him being out of his body at this moment in time, he said all he heard was his neighbor saying, bro, what are you doing? Don't, don't do this, man. Why are you doing this? And he heard, boom, the gun went off. He said when the gun went off, he came out of it and was like, oh, I just, oh, man. So he's like, oh, so dude, Back and back into the house. So he just looked to his left and looked to his right and he barged in. And he like, bro, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but, but where the money at? Where the money at? So he first came over there, y'all, to just take the gifts. I don't know what his intentions, his true intentions was to do to this man, but let me finish the story. So Dude, like, oh man, bro, please, man, call the police, call the police, man, call the ambulance, man. And he like, no, bro, I, I need some money, man. I need some money. I need some money. He like, bro, man, come on, man. This, I, I ain't gonna tell him you did this, man. Just, just come on, bro. Just call the call. I need help, man. I feel like I'm gonna die, man. So, dude got the pistol to his head, like this, like, man. I, you know, he wigging out. He like, what did I just do? So he like, oh man. Oh, bro, man, I don't, he like, bro, please, man, just call the, call the ambulance, man. I don't want to die this way. Come on, bro. He like, no, I'm sorry, man. Well, where's the money at? So now he going through his pockets. He find his wallet. He find a couple of dollars, man. He said, man, this all you got. This all you got. He left, man. Come on, man. That's all I got, man. Matter of fact, look, look over there in the drawer, man. I got a couple hundred dollars right there in the drawer. Just go take it, man. Just call the police, man. He go over there. He get the money put in his pocket. He like, bro, I, I gotta do this. I I, I can't go to jail, bro. Uh, uh, my family, my family. He like, dude, what about my family? What about my family, man? I got a family too, bro. He like, no, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So now he sit on the couch and he looking at dude that's bleed out. Dude is gone. He out of there. Sitting on the couch, and he like, man, what did I just do? What did over some money, over some Christmas toys? Man, I, I threw my life away. I threw my life away. So he said he snapped out of it. He said he ran out the house, and he went back to his house. He said. He jumped in the shower and he got to crying. Yeah, the grown man was crying. So he said he get in the shower and his mind is just racing a billion miles per hour. And all he thinking, please, please God, I hope nobody heard that shot. I, heard, I, I hope that they didn't hear them gunshots. So he's sitting there and he's sitting there Boom, 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 boom. Y'all already know what time it is. Blah, 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 blah. Where you at? I'm, I'm up here. Uh, I'm just getting out the shower. They come upstairs and they grab him straight out of the bathroom. No clothes on at all. 
You see, dude didn't pass away yet. He played possum when dude emptied the clip on him. So when dude left out the house, he, he got up and he got on the phone, he called 911. Y'all remember I told y'all dude was so out of it when he ran out the house? Here's the killer part. When he was sitting on the couch, thinking about the magnitude of what he did, he left the gun on the couch. So not only you just put five pieces of steel, of hot steel into this man, your neighbor, but you left the gun on the couch. Got him dead to rights. Got him dead to rights. So all this happened in a matter of maybe 20 minutes, give or take. We gonna fast forward to sentencing day. While he was in the county jail, facing what he have done, you know, cats like me, you know, I just met him. But other cats like me that been down before, he discussing this case with cats and they like, yo, right now it's just a temp. It's an attempt. But you better hope and pray to whatever God, to whatever God that you serve, that that man don't die or them charges going to be elevated to first degree. Mm -hmm. Premeditated. Boy, you'll plea out and get the first degree. Guess what, y'all? He succumbed to his injuries. He passed away. Too many vital organs were struck. He bled out. The doctors couldn't do nothing. They had they put him inside of an induced coma. So when he got that call from his lawyer, that visit, hey man, dude didn't make it. We gonna have to, we gonna have to take this plea. What's the plea? Well, plea to this, this, and that. Right here, they gonna throw the gun out. They gonna throw this out. <sighs> what, what, what comes with this? Um, you don't have to do about 40, 40 what? You, you, you don't have to do 40 years, bro. Or you're going to get life without parole. Which one you want? It ain't nothing you can do. Listen, that, I mean, they, they got the gun. Your fingerprints on it. They got the wit. They, they got the 911 call. They got you. You, you just got to take the plea. All right. All right, can I make a call, call my wife? Yeah, yeah, sure, hold on, here you go. Hey, baby, listen, I'm I'm not, it, it ain't looking good. I gotta take this plea. I, I, I know, baby, I know, I know, I, I know. Can, can you put me on speakerphone with the kids by you? Okay, hey, kids, I, this your dad, I, I love y'all. I, I I love y'all so much. I I I love y'all so much, and I I'm, I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, baby, I love you. I love you so much. Okay, talk to you later, babe. Get the lawyer back the phone. Put his head down on the desk and get the sobbing. The lawyer reach over on him, say, "It'll be all right." It'll be all right. See, the lawyer, he already know that it's not going to be all right. He been in this predicament many, many, many times. Prosecutor, when the lawyer came to him, said, yeah, he going to take the deal. The lawyer said, piece of cake. Say nothing. Another one. So now... He at the top bunk, I'm at the bottom bunk. We in the cell together. So 
So I'm like, yeah, man, hey, that's a cold, it's a cold pill to swallow, man. It's cold. So he said, man, Dante, can I ask you a question, bro? I said, what's up? He's like, man, do you think I'm going to go to hell for what I did? I said, well, it goes like this. If a man is starving and his family is starving and he go out to a grocery store and he go steal some hamburger meat and some chicken and he bring it back to his home to feed his family, then no, I don't think you in violation of the hellfire. But if a man that, if a man go out there because his intentions is to go steal some hamburger meat and chicken just to get some money and go buy some, you know, some cannabis or go, go out there and try to spend it on prostitutes and stuff. And when the store clerk try to stop that person from stealing and he end up shooting them, then you are in danger of the hellfire. So the thing that you did, you seen that you was in a situation that you put yourself in for not doing right by the money that you was making. So if you don't ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, to forgive you for that act that you did, then yeah, you are in danger of the hellfire. And you got to look at the magnitude of what you did. This was Christmas time, brother. When family's supposed to come together, you took a father away from his kids. You took a husband away, away from his wife. This dude got a mama, a daddy, siblings, nephews, nieces, cousins, friends, people that love him. And because what you did, what you did, he gone. And you left a hole, a big hole in that community, in that environment. And that family. Even your neighbors don't got a peace of mind because it's like, who's next? If this happened to him and he don't even do nothing, he don't bother nobody to just go to work and be with his wife and kids. And our neighbor across the street, which is you. A man is either going to build or destroy in this life. Either you're going to create or you're going to destroy. I know it's hard out here, y'all. Oh, I know. I know it is hard out here. However, God give us all trials and tribulations and tests and things that we must go through. We have to go through the Go through the struggle. I always quote this. And y'all know I quote this. Is the Bible says that. My people are destroyed. Due to lack of knowledge. That means. If you in poverty. If you living in a bad financial. <laughs> lifestyle. And you want to get out. There are resources out here. You don't have to go to college. Dante got a GED. I got a GED. And I'm doing okay. I didn't say I'm living good or great. But I'm living okay. Because I got education and educated myself on how to fix my credit. I know and I know y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all look at me now and say, oh, he got it. But no, no, I didn't always have it and barely got it now. 
I had to educate myself to get out of my situation. And one of the things was knowing how to leverage credit. I want y'all at the end of this video, at the end of this video, and it's coming up real soon. Don't click off. I need y'all to really, really watch the promos that's at the end of this video. Because somebody out there, somebody out there might need to hear this. Click the links in the description. Get the free books. Get the free books that's in my description. Contact these people. Because this is your way out of poverty. And if you're not even living in poverty and you just got some money, and you like, well, okay, I got some money, but I don't want to mess it up. What should I do? Contact these people, y'all. <sighs> if you want to continue to support the Dante Show Network, number one, I need for y'all to hit that like button. YouTube is playing military mind games and they slowing down my channel all the way down. For whatever reason. I know the reason. And for the people that know me and been rocking with me for the longest, y'all know too. Whenever I start mentioning Jesus, y'all know what time it is. But if you like these stories and want to support the Dante Show Network, y'all know where the cash app is at. We're not going to play the military mind games like y'all don't see it. And if you ain't got cash app, throw something in that PayPal. But I know it's hard out here, and, and I get it. But at least, at minimum, hit that like button and share the video. And with that, y'all, Dante love y'all. From here on out, I'm giving y'all top-tier, top-notch stories. You better learn something. And with that, I'm out. Y'all, we got a good brother out here by the name of Paris. He got an organization called Father Type. His mission statement is Father's Type is a mindset. It is a way for the youth to have core principles like values and morals that they believe are very important to help them guide and cultivate young men into becoming the best version of themselves by the way of a Father Type mindset. Be sure to contact Father Type if you want to become a sponsor or a mentee for troubled youth. Y'all, if y'all looking to get your personal credit fix, make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only does she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. If you got your license suspended and you facing wage garnishments and you got bad credit, some lawsuits, make sure you contact Brian at 313-492-9097. That's 313-492-9097. Little Ronnie turned his back. He waiting, he waiting. Then, Let's get pistol whipped. Little Ronnie just lost his girl rent money and all her savings. She's like, Ronnie, where are you at? What do you mean you got robbed, Ronnie? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Y'all know when Dante rocking the ball head, the story get real crazy. Oh, shit! Imagine, for you women out there, imagine taking care of a man for 10 years and all this man is doing is playing the video games, right? It's blazing while you go to work and y'all living in a one-bedroom apartment. Thank God y'all ain't got no kids. All the money that you make is going to the bills and to feed his habit. And then one day, he decides
to go into your stash, the money that you've been saving, and he go spend it with his homeboys. He go out there because he got an itch that he needs scratched. He needs some of that cannabis. So he take your money, all the money that you done saved, and guess what? Some of that money you've been saving was the rent money. Emotional damage. This is where this story begins. I want y'all to meet little Ronnie. Little Ronnie was 19 years old and his girlfriend was 20 years old. You see, Lil Ronnie, he was the type of dude that always was making excuses of why he couldn't get a job. Oh, the white man got me down. Oh, the white man, all that white man talk, right? What? While his girlfriend, the 20 year old, she'd go out and you know, clean people houses. She would do DoorDash. She'd do everything she had to do to make ends meet. What Lil Ronnie do, Lil Ronnie would just play the video games all day. One day she goes to work and Lil Ronnie ain't got no more bud. So Lil Ronnie decides to go into her stash and he sees $1,200. So Lil Ronnie and Lil Ronnie thoughts, he say to himself, hmm. A few moments later. I'm gonna get me some bud and then I'm gonna get me some more bud so I can sell it. And I'm gonna sell enough bud so that way when she come back and look at her stash, I will have her replaced and I can start contributing to the household. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh, this, shit. Is where, this is what Lil Ronnie, anyway. So he goes out on the block. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I need some trees. Okay, bet. And I need some extra trees. He like, okay, how much you need? Well, I got a thousand dollars. I'm on two hundred dollars worth, and I need a thousand dollars worth for me to sell. He like, oh, okay, little Ronnie. Okay, little Ronnie. Bet. Hold on, right one moment, okay? Little Ronnie turned his back. He waiting. He waiting. Then, boom! You get pistol whip. Man, get up out of here, man. Oh, man, what the heck going on? Get your butt up out of here, man. I ain't selling you nothing. Get up out of here, fall, pop your ass, right? Lil Ronnie ain't no street dude. Lil Ronnie ain't ain't even from the streets. Lil Ronnie just got robbed. Lil Ronnie just got pistol whipped. Lil Ronnie just lost his girl rent money and all her savings. You what? But one thing I forgot to tell y'all, hence the title, Lil Ronnie has a van, a 98 van, okay? <sighs> so Lil Ronnie like, man, come on, bro. Don't do this to me, bruh. I need that money, man. My girl, man. I don't care about your girl, man. I don't care about you, man. Get up out of here before I do something oh, bad. Shit. Oh, oh, shit. Man, come on, bruh. All right, man, bruh. Come on, man. Come on, bitch. Please, man. Give me something back. Man, get up out of here, Ronnie. Get your butt up out of here before I... Get out of here, Ronnie. All right, all right. All right, man, I'm gone. I'm gone, man. That's, that's foul, man. That's foul, man. All right, man. God dang. So Ronnie get back in his van, he leaves, go back to the house. The girlfriend is calling him. She get off at five o'clock. It's 620. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So he finally answered the phone. She's like, Ronnie, where are you at? Here I come, here, here I come. Are you okay, Ronnie? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta tell you something. Ronnie, what's going on? I, I'll just tell you in person. So Ronnie go get in the van, he go pick her up. She looking out, she like, what happened to you? He like, man, listen, don't be mad, but I took the rent money and your savings and I took, you took what? I, I took the rent money and I took the savings and I, and I tried to go get on, but I got robbed. What do you mean you got robbed, Ronnie? I got robbed. The dude, I, I buy stuff from him. He robbed me and he hit me. No, we finna go get that money. We finna go get it. No, man, he, he gonna kill us, man. He, we can't, that, that money gone. That, that money gone in the wind. Let's just leave it alone. Ronnie, you do know we are living month to month, right? Well, what that mean? What I mean is if we don't have that rent money, we gonna get put out. Oh, Ronnie, you gotta go get a job. 
You gotta go work at McDonald's. You gotta work somewhere, Ronnie. Something gotta give, Ronnie. Oh man. Well, I, I t uh, dang. I, all right, I, I'm gonna get a job. What do y'all think happened? The next following week, Ronnie would drop her off at work as usual and tell her he about to go job hunting. Ronnie would go home, cut the plate, cut the, he had cut the, he cut the Xbox on. Hey, you see, he, Ronnie cut the Xbox on, cut the controller on, who's playing? Dante the Great. That's what Ronnie doing. Ronnie, instead of going out there in the world, oh shit, oh shit. he out here playing Fortnite. He does this day in, day out. When he pick her up, how was the how was the search? Man, you know, the white man got me down. The man, these white people ain't trying to, he ain't going out there looking for no job. So one day he drops her off. She actually took that day off. She wanted to see something because she felt like, nah, Ronnie ain't doing right. So when she in the, when she in the van, she kissed Ronnie and say, Ronnie, try to get a job, man, because I need help. I'm trying to get this money up, but I we, we I don't want to get evicted, man. He like, I got you, baby. So when she get out the car, he pulls off, she jump in another car. They follow him. Ronnie goes back to the house. Her friend like, see, I told you he ain't up to no good. So she said, call him. Ask him where he at. So she called him. Hey, Ronnie, where you at, baby? Oh, man, I'm out here at KFC, man. I'm about to talk to this hiring manager. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. But Ronnie really at home playing Xbox. Y'all, this story about to get real twisted and crazy. So Ronnie like... Yeah, I, I, I'm at home playing. I mean, I'm at KFC, which is, I'm about to do this interview, but I'm gonna call you back. She say, okay, cool. Her friends say, man, go in there and confront him. Throw him out, throw his tail out. She like, nah, nah, don't worry about it. I, just let me out, I, I'm gonna go deal with him. Y'all wanna know what this woman did? She went to the apartment and she sat on the stairs all day, just crying, whimpering in the hallway. Cause she like, man, you about to get evicted. This dude ain't doing nothing. Why, why am I even with this dude? Why? Why am I with this dude? So then she finally knock on the door. He said, who is it? Open the door. Oh, oh, baby, what you doing here? You don't get off till five o'clock. Ronnie, I've been out here for hours, for hours. You ain't been looking for no job, have you? No, baby, I haven't. We're going to fast forward to two weeks later. They get evicted, okay? They, they want a month to month. The landlord have the right to put them out. So they get put out and they living in a van, hence the thumbnail. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, man. I'm, I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna get us. I'm gonna get us out of this predicament, baby. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna get us right. You drop her off at work. Hey, baby, I need some gas money. She give him twenty dollars. This is what Ronnie does. He go to the gas station. He put ten in a tank. Then he turn around and go get him a lottery ticket. He scratching the lottery ticket off. <laughs> oh snap! Guess what, y'all? Ronnie hit the lottery for $100,000. Oh, shit! Oh, yeah. Shit. Ronnie up. He up. Ronnie is up. You want to know what's crazy, y'all? Tell y'all what Ronnie did. This is what Ronnie did. Instead of him doing right by that money, and this is all in one day, he goes to a rim shop and get some 24 inch rims that cost him $12,000 on the van. Oh shit, oh shit. He turns around and go to an audio shop and get a $6,000 beat system in the van. Oh shit, oh shit. And then he go to the mall, spend like two, $3,000 on Jordans and Timberlands. 
He's still living in the van, y'all. Oh shit, oh shit. Then he spent about $5,000 on clothes and 20,000 on jewelry. This is all in one day, y'all. When baby girl get picked up at five o'clock, she like Ronnie. She looking at Ronnie. He got the whole Nike fit on and everything. Got Jordans on. Ronnie iced out. She looking at the room. She like, Ronnie, who you done robbed? Oh, shit. Oh, he like, baby, we on, baby. We on, baby. She like, Ronnie, listen, we need to get a, what, where to get this money from? Oh, I hit the lottery, baby. I hit the, I'm a, let me let y'all know. Ronnie and her are not married. Okay, they just boyfriend and girlfriend. She been taking care of this dude for about nine months now. Okay. He like, yeah, baby, we on, we on. She like, well, we need to get an apartment, Ronnie. He like, you know what? I'm about to take you to your mama house. And you get, you you just get ready. We finna go out. We gonna, I'm gonna take you to your mama house. I'm gonna go shoot some moves and I'll be back. Cool. He takes her, her mama lives three hours away from where they live at. He drops her off. So, little Ronnie, he goes back to the city where he, where, where they was from. But it was living that, I can say. Why Lil Ronnie go back to the same block where he was buying weed and all that stuff from? Pulling up, shining, he got this money in cash, cash money. Lil Ronnie pulled up back to the block, flossing. I'm gonna spare y'all the, the details of what happened. No, I'm not, I'm gonna give y'all the details. Lil Ronnie sees the guy that robbed him the first time and pissed the whipped him. He goes up to him and he say, yeah, man, I'm back, man. Listen, man, I got some money, man. I'm really trying to spend with you, man. Let's put that stuff that happened with us in the past, man. I'm really trying to get on, man. Dude, like, how much you got? He like, man. Bro, I'm trying to spend. I, I'm like, I'm, I got about 30, 40 bands for you. How much you think I could get with that? He said, 30, 40 bands? Shoot, I could get you about 20, 30, 20, 30 pounds. He like, oh, okay, Ben, I'm gonna be the man. I'm gonna be the man. Yeah. He said, come on up in here, homie. They go to oh, a band shit. house. Little Ronnie go up in the house. Dude like, well, where the money at? He like, oh, it's in the van, it's in the van. Naive, stupid. Like, all right. I'ma leave it up to y'all imagination. What happened to Lil Ronnie? I'ma let y'all think. I'ma let y'all fill in the blanks. We just gonna, we just gonna put it like this. Lil Ronnie had his back turned. Say, keep going, just down here. Down here, yeah, just keep going, keep going that way. All right, cool. Came up behind little Ronnie. Man down. Let me tell you cats out there something. You that decides to become a criminal you that decide that don't want to go to school and educate yourself, whether going to high school, finishing high school, finishing college, or getting you a trade or GED, or learning how to do plumbing, drywall, work on cars, get your CDL, drive trucks, whatever it is, crime do not pay at all. If you a dude out there that's not motivated in life, you better find you some motivation because on this earthly playing field, a man's first duty is to work. If you go back to the Adam and Eve story, God said in Genesis that he did not cause it to rain because there was no man to work the land. Let me say that again, just in case if, if, that, if that went over your head, in Genesis, God said that he did not cause it to rain in the Garden of Eden because there was no man to work the land. 
So that right there lets y'all know that the first duty of a man here on this earth is to work. Hey y'all, if y'all looking to get y'all personal credit fix, make sure y'all contact Rose. Her telephone number is 888-557-5778. Not only do she help you improve your credit score, but she also will help you obtain business credit. So y'all make sure y'all contact her. Her information is right here on the screen. All right, y'all, my guy Mike Ecclesi is starting a new podcast called Hood Psychology. Coming soon, y'all. Over there at Hood Psychology, he talking about all kinds of stuff that we as a people face daily, tackling the uncomfortable conversations about religion, politics, relationships, history, and just the day-to-day -day life in general. Mike the Ecclesi will also feature special guests to help him break down these topics. So beat your feet to the page and subscribe now because y'all don't want to miss out or don't be late to hood psychology. If you got your license suspended and you facing wage garnishments and you got bad credit, some lawsuits, make sure you contact Brian at 313-392-9097. That's 313-492-9097.